It's 6 p.m. Shut up. We did it. Okay, pretend no, like you're talking. Left. Pretend like. Pretend like just just bantering. Oh jeez, like, I can't yourself. believe I just got into no, class. Like everything I'm about like, I can't wait. wait. I haven't yeah, done yeah, the ice cream. Man. You guys done the pre I don't know what's going on. Wonderful, My wonderful God, blue color. Delicious. Oh, is that like I work for the PCP? You guys think uh, you, you guys think that a school based around a plan? I work for the PCP. If you fuck with me, you'll never work in this industry again. That doesn't mean anything about it. Whatever happens, it's not like I'm working for my own. I wouldn't even know. Hello, everyone. Literally stealing. Oh wait, the teacher's here. Wait, wait, shush, wait. Oh, it's the teacher. Who's this guy? It's Mister. Honestly, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Shit. Marry me, please. Marry me. <laughs> you just want that green Professor card. Professor, you know, you Don, want that green card. Mr. Is Mr. Don here, is so Mr. Don is so sexy man. this morning, isn't he? Nice Don Deshawn. How are y'all oh, yeah. doing? Yeah. Let's go. Doing good. Uh, good. Doing good. Oh, Pretty good. Oh, Sean, be like me when yes. I have my period. Oh, I'm sleepy. I don't is the do folder? Just have, just have breakfast. That's bro. quite yeah. the folder. I drew this myself with a sharpie. It looks, looks nice. Looks good. This contains notes. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> what, what was the point of the folder? <laughs> it, cool. it holds the paper, bro. Okay. <laughs> what first the fuck, Rio? What the fuck, literally? <laughs> Slifer slackers, you Slifer slackers, it's time for class. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's time for class. Woo! Here. I'm slacking. Oh, I'm slacking. Thank you, Shinny. Here at Pap U. That is where you are right now. This is a required course by mm -hmm. me, okay? I took out a big loan for this class, so it better be worth it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, remember, I sold my house usual, for this house, okay? This is an interactive lecture. If you have mm -hmm. questions, raise your hand or say raises paw if you don't have a video, okay? <laughs> raises paw. No, you said it. Now you have to yeah. ask a question. My question is, uh, why would you? Why would you make that the thing? <laughs> why? That's great. Because that's our bit. Look at Shinny trying to be it's philosophical. Yeah, what the bit. fuck? Because we have a dog in the classroom, Shinny, and that dog is you. No. I am Sly for Sean. Today I am joined by Eliazar. Woo! <laughs> fuck the busy bee. Jelly Beaner. Uh, 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 Jews. Yes! <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Jew word. Epstein Kajoro. didn't juke himself. Bitterthorn. Sell all your XRP. It's doomed. <laughs> He's right. He's right. Fuck, bro. Garden house. C2O. Good day, mate. <laughs> good day, mate. <laughs> Lovely I already introduced get... <laughs> myself, obviously. Rito. Torpedo. I'm tasting a flavor equally balanced as all flavors god you're so smart Rita. god marry me thanos <laughs> best villain ever no need bruh <laughs> so is jaden yuki the gayest man alive Sean? i want to know oh, no. we'll god. get to it we'll get to it we'll get to it we'll get shinny saba let's go let's fucking and go last but certainly not least Simon. Mm -hmm. Well, I personally think one, that a dual monster cool is argue. the much more enriching and interesting course, but uh, you know, I I'm willing to sit through. Die. You are, <laughs> you are banned. You are banned, Simon. <laughs> I'm sorry, Simon. I'm, I'm sorry. You banned. Oh, oh, I think I hit you. Oh, you whoop What the fuck, Sean? Literally, like literally. Sorry, Shane. That was an accident. <laughs> We're back on track. Yeah. Classic. Holy what shit. Fuck? Great bit. Okay. To keep everyone <laughs> engaged. To keep I'm everyone hurt. engaged. I don't even look like something. Here's the bit. Whenever I say get uh fuck. Game Rape. on, we break out into the English opening of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. The okay? whole thing. But I didn't know it. Oh, hell yeah. Which, oh, no. But I didn't know it. Oh, no. <laughs> Which I forgot to post in the chat beforehand, <laughs> but that is okay. I got you. I got are you. you. Are you, you saying that everyone just have on. it memorized? You gotta play your cards right. Can we just say that? Yes, I am, Tall, because people, there's sort of a Mandela effect with the opening, right? People often confuse the word in the chorus 
Game on, get your game on. Come on, yeah. Better play your cards right. Some people say battle. I thought oh. it was gotta play your cards right. Yeah, I thought it was gotta. Yeah, I thought it was gotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so people. <laughs> fucking... <laughs> so it's like, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. People, Fuck people you. fuck it up because it's like a like a high tempo song or whatever. I don't know. I don't do music. That's not my thing. I don't do rap like those musicians nowadays. So yeah. I'm on the fringe of acceptable in Korean. Why did this take all? so long? <laughs> That's the question. Why right? did this take so long? I have been planning this for so long. You you guys for years. You I would say like know. yeah yeah so, longer than you've known us, right? It's about the same. So I started in May, I believe, is the month I started okay. this. <laughs> so Fingers. inside of May. Fingers in Korean. Obviously, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, it took Who so hasn't long. been at this point? Because oh, I, know. I wasn't oh, gonna no, say no, no, it, no, no, but no. you said it. Okay. <laughs> We're reaching some spicy territory, if you know what I mean. Let, let, let's yeah, calm, let's calm down. Let's calm down. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay, I'll put my carry away. I'll put my carry away. Too much so, spice. So, so why did this take so long, right? Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh GX is a 180 episode anime. If you're watching the sub, Early. that is oh, why that nice. took so long. Of course. This is a lecture on just the anime specifically, not about the manga. No, don't even worry about it. It's the same characters, but it's a completely different story. It's oh. a mess. Don't even what? worry okay. about it. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. Is Jake and Gaia okay. in the anime or in the manga? Probably both, but... <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good to know. So Sean, raise his paw. Raise his paw, Sean. Yes, Eliezer, thank you. Well, this... You get a, the opposite of, de, of, de, of a demerit, because you a gold said star. it. You said the thing. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Will this anime make me more afraid than I already am of Japanese people? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if you look closely at the board, which I posted an image of, and it probably will be the first link in the description, just so you guys can see it better. That's why I did that. There's a yeah. lot of interesting things here upon closer analysis. Obviously, uh, Flame Wingman here takes up a lot of the room. I spent a lot yeah. of time on him. Huh. Okay, Certainly. As, you, as you can see, white whiteboard art is not easy, especially because uh, they fucking like colors blend in and shit. It's kind of rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stop me. Very interesting. Yes. First, before I even like dive in. We're just gonna go over like the bare bones kitty pool. Like, what is the lore behind just Yu-Gi-Oh itself Please. and its origins? Please. Okay. I know nothing. First, Yu-Gi-Oh was created by a man called of Kazuki course. Takahashi. His name is on every single card. Okay. Hold that thought. I will show you guys an I'm example. Holding, I'm holding it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. This, this might be a little rough to see, but if you notice this card right here. Yeah. It, Power I, bonds. I don't think you guys will be able to see it on the cam, but in the bottom right of every card is his name. Power bond. Oh, yeah. You could win a you could win a tournament with a card like that. I don't want to think about. I don't want to talk about that. Oh yes, I could. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so. Let's just get straight into this. Before mm. I do, I need to t take a sip of water, okay? Mm. Yo, yes, water chads, water chads. <laughs> Yo, water chads. You're very thirsty, per professor What drinking water is about? He's got the oh, big yeah. sip. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of this shit. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Mr. Takahashi here. He, funnily enough, didn't want to be a manga man when he was in school, but only started late into high school, really drawing. And eventually he winds up creating kind of what we know as more common Yu-Gi-Oh now. But there is more of a story to it. Yu-Gi-Oh itself was supposed to be a one-shot episodic series of, you know, Yu-Gi going through just games. Nothing like, you know, specific the or anything. The king of all games. And that, yes, that is true. And we'll get to that as well. It uh, started. Uh, racist pole. Yes, Sito. 
Wasn't that like literally season zero where he like did yes. a bunch of games and killed people? Uh huh. Yes, I believe so. <laughs> Excuse me, I am no expert. I recall because season zero was my favorite. If, yeah, if you need season one lore, hit me up. If you need season zero lore, hit Zito up. It was great. DM is not my expertise, obviously. So, sure, um, sure. you know, if any if any of you experts in the crowd today would like to chime in at any point, it's all good. So, the first one in his, you know, episodic one-shot was Magic and Wizards. And this is specifically what we got to know, you know, later became Yu-Gi-Oh, essentially. So the thing was, was that, you know, Weekly Shonen Jump received so many fan letters about that, like, that specific episode of the one-shot that Takahashi decided to extend the manga himself. Let's go. So that's what we know as the modern, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, so to speak. Takahashi himself went through many trials and tribulations in order to finally come up with Yu-Gi-Oh, it almost took him four years, for uh, roughly four years, for him to finally like make that breakthrough, so to speak, as he had tons of like other little battle stuff that like never took off, essentially, and he kept getting rejected by publishers. So, funnily enough, though, Mr. Takahashi, it's pretty obvious, and you guys will see later on. There is a heavy bias for, you know, the first series, essentially, of Yugi, and, you know, for Yugi, Kaiba, Pegasus, etc., etc. They, they really like the, you know, nostalgia, basically. They nostalgia bait a lot. You know, they add cards for those, you know, sets all the time. You know, the Blue Eyes and Dark Magician. Fucking and that's what Takahashi likes. Yeah, Ta Takahashi is definitely an, uh, an old, good, new, bad guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I already don't like him. Be. <laughs> <laughs> so, funnily enough, Takahashi, th this quirky guy, right? He says, you know, when coming up with all the Yu-Gi-Oh series, oh, GX will be the last one. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are <laughs> at Yu-Gi-Oh 7s. Yep. Which is yep. really Bad. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Yes. From what year is Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, uh, Racer's Paw. From what year is Yu-Gi-Oh Jix? I will get there. Don't worry about yeah. it. Okay. It's a mystery. <laughs> so we're we're still we're still in the the inklings up here. Just Takahashi. The lore. origins. Yeah, you know it, it's important to talk about these beginning guys. You know. So, Takahashi himself. He can animate and draw, and he's been involved with a lot of the movies, but most notably, Dark Side of Dimensions, which we watched in this Discord. So Yo! That was, that was the best one. Also, another cool little tr trivia factoid is, you know, obviously he draws most of the main sort of cast, but he also gets involved with the monsters sometimes. So... The E-Heroes are an archetype personally created by Takahashi himself. That's an important thing to know. So, Takahashi considers himself to be a procrastinator, which I find pretty <laughs> interesting. <laughs> One of us. Also, some more cool little factoids. He has done art exchanges with fellow big artist people, comic people. He exchanged art with the creator of Hellboy and Bo 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 Bo. Yo. Bo 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 Bo. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of like a really sort of shallow dive into like Takahashi lore and sort of his like coming up, essentially. Right. Coming. Do not come. So, Do not the come. other thing I'd like to get into before we get into that. <laughs> is uh <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh itself right Yu-Gi-Oh itself uh, what does it mean what does Yu -Gi -Oh it mean Yu-Gi-Oh literally translates rough, roughly to king of games so what do you know Yo! but as you can see Everything on the board sense. here I did spell it out but it is a pain in the ass right I think we would all agree 
that two hyphens in a word is a pain in the ass and Correct. capitalizing every other letter mm. is as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So fuck that yes. bullshit. I like spelling it out as one word. It just makes I, more yeah. sense for like mm. searching Base. it and ev everything else. Just makes more sense. But because Base. I I expect people to, you know, you know, lore fags to complain, I spelled it <laughs> how it normally <laughs> is. Yeah. Right. Yu-Gi-Oh itself is very popular. It is a big media franchise, so to speak. How popular, you may wonder. It is considered one of the highest grossing media franchises of all time, hovering around the top 20, just behind One Piece and ahead of Yo. Call of Duty, of all things. Oh. Yo. Oh, what? Can you yeah. say the N-word in Yu-Gi-Oh? <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Defin <laughs> definitely in Duel Monsters. How about that? Certain. <laughs> <laughs> if your heart so, wishes it. Yeah, the estimation is roughly 20 billion for the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh franchise. N-words? <laughs> yes, N-words. <laughs> okay. It's one page down, boys. Wow, only nice. 13 more to go. 500 more to go. Like 12. But yes. Like <laughs> so this is my last sort of pre-GX section, really. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, but what is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, right? It's like I said before. However, technically, its name is Yu-Gi-Oh! Dual Monsters GX, right? And obviously, it's more commonly known as just Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And it is a 180 yes. episode anime that is a sequel spin-off series. And it's anime original, by the way. There is no, you know, like I said before, no manga. the manga, there is a manga, but it is completely different. Just forget yeah, about it for now. We're not talking really about the manga. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah, this is a sequel spin-off to the original DM. Raise his paw. Yes, no need, bruh. Uh, as, as, as a, as a Yu-Gi-Oh lore fag who has also watched every series and did read the GX manga. Jesus, what's in... wrong with you? <laughs> yes, oh I am the anti Sean. Yeah. Uh, it's basically just the shonen, the even more shonen retarded version of Yu-Gi-Oh GX itself. Yeah, that's, like, nothing that's special apt. happens in it. Okay, yeah. but is Judai still gay? It's debatable. Actually, no. What? No, yeah, uh, but... his mentor oh, is okay, a guy. Okay. So, I mean... <laughs> oh, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Yes, I see. Well, no, like, the bit... Well, like, the bit is, is, like... I don't know. It's really strange. He looks a lot like him. He has brown hair. He wears the slifer jacket. And it's so fucking... It doesn't make any sense. We're not talking they about it. They are different people, just to be clear. Yeah, yeah. This, is, anyway. a different, different... this is a different guy. It's just he looks very similar. And Jaden, like, took his deck and, like, did all... Oh, he took his deck. He took his oh, deck. <laughs> okay, he yeah. is yeah. good. Oh, yeah. no. Fuck the manga. Yes, Sito. What's the GX stand for? Great question. <laughs> GX <laughs> is Generation Next. Right? That is like the full <laughs> thing. So, of course, it's, it's shortened to Gen X and then GX, really, essentially. Oh, it's fucking Gen X. Uh, uh, disgusting. Oh, Jelly, wait wait till you hear the main character's name. Just oh, God. Just wait. So, yeah. Um, the dub aired from October 6th. No, wait. I'm sorry. The sub aired from October 6th, 2004 to March 26th, 2008. The dub aired the following year, October 10th, 2005 to August 23rd 2008 with as you can see right there season four never got dubbed lads oh uh. no yeah so that fucking blows um season I mean, four was we good we can do it can, yeah i was about to say can we dub it ourselves and yes, yes there, let us dub it. <laughs> there's very interesting stuff and appropriate stuff later that we'll get to down there. 
But yeah, season four was never dubbed. That fucking sucks. And the reasoning for this was they were finishing GX. And what's funny, too, is they didn't even finish season three, technically. Because they didn't dub the last episode, which sucked. Oh. What? So wow. So what? we we. I think I think I get into this later later in here, but we'll we'll get back to that. GX like got stopped because the next series was already ready to go. They were just already ready, so they said, "Fuck the old shit, new shit." Yu-Gi-Oh! Five Yu -Gi -Oh! Ds. Space motorcycles. Five Ds. It is, five Ds. It is good. It might Dual be the cars. It might be the next lecture topic. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. So, mm. It is very good. It's very awesome. So yeah, like I said, 5Ds was ready to go, so they said, fuck GX. Fuck that shit. Get out of here. No season 4 dub for you. Now, Sad. you guys might be wondering, what is the point of this? There's a lot yes. of GX videos on YouTube. You know, <laughs> however, none of them are this, like, long... Base. Like, long, yeah, base is one thing. And yes, none, this is very based. Are this you know long, very long form stuff? You know they're all forty minutes or less. You know like really kind of condensed, and they they don't really get that through line. You know of kind of like encompassing like all the themes and messages throughout the show and like comparing them and stuff. You know it's very like shallow, at least on YouTube. Racist Paul Professor, would you yes. say that they don't have a soul? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, this kind of format is really useful to explain things like this. A 180 episode anime, pretty fucking long, right? So, yeah, I think that this will be useful. Just like... And also, later on, I'll make some adjustments. But I, I keep talking about the doc, right? I think I'm going to publish that later, publicly, in this video. When I release it, I believe. And that way yeah. you guys can see everything, right? Because I'm going to go through this. I have bullet points. I have stuff on the board. I'm not going to hit everything. There's just no way, right? It's a 180 episode anime. That's kind of insane, right? So, with all that said, let's kind of, let's get into GX a little more, a little deeper. Let's go! Like I said, this is a rundown of this Keep in mind, original anime, and why it's kind of based and underrated, and it's sort of like a second child, you know, so to speak. Child. In that, you know, it's the main, <laughs> it's the second <laughs> main Yu-Gi-Oh! series <laughs> that, you know, got forgotten, right? It kind of got forgotten. It got left behind, you know? Um... You know, Just maybe like they, me. they stop paying the child support or something. I, I don't think. Uh, you know. Sean, stop it. Sean, you're making me cry. <laughs> Sorry, Eliezer. You're reminding me of my own dad. No one wants that. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very easy. You can have them if you want, Jelly. You can pick them up from school. It's very easy to make the comparisons here. Because, you know, it is literally the second series, right? And so yeah. a lot of people it's real, yeah. typically kind of brush it under the rug. You know, a lot of people either have the rose-colored glasses or they just like the newer shit for whatever reason, right? It kind of is what it is. But, you know, GX is good, in my opinion. So we'll get into that, obviously. Now, the final thing before we get started up here. Sub versus dub. It's a very, mm. it's a very interesting question, mm. but if you would like mm. to turn your attention to the top right of the board, I made some comparisons of more, you know, notable dub versus sub kind of memes, basically. So in the sub, of course, because remember, this was dubbed by four kids, ladies and gentlemen. God, Lecture mm, continuity. Damn. Everything is linked. Okay. So now, <laughs> Jesus, man. Now that Jelly is, uh, taking shit. Yeah. As usual. Like I was saying before, sub versus dub, right? There, there's a lot of interesting comparisons here. Hmm. So, in the sub, we have alcohol. In the dub, we oh. get hot sauce, lads. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. How does oh, that even work? Yeah. <laughs> Raise his paw. Raise his paw. <laughs> yes, no need, bro. Uh, in the, uh, and I'm not kidding you, in the Arabic sub, he's drinking olive oil. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's retarded. <laughs> I know. This? It's, it's amazing. It's great. It's hilarious. So, in the sub, we have death, dying, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. In the dub, huh. we have sent to the shadow realm or sent mm -hmm. to the stars later on. Oh. Huh. Like Mufasa. Yes. Yeah, become one of the clowns. So, in the sub, the sub itself, it's actually kind of based, surprisingly. It, it, it is. Huh. But the thing about the dub is that it is so cringe that it yeah. transcends huh. its cringiness mm. into being based. Okay. That's what I love. Yes. Yes, and I agree with that. That's it's one of those want. mediums. It is a four kids dub, right? So that that's sort of what you get, you know, what you expect. Oh, uh, raises paw. Yes, Kajoro. How do, how does it compare to the incredible uh, Canadian voice actor filled uh, Bakugan dub? Similar. Similar. <laughs> I uh, yeah. Ooh. I mean, the, the the comparisons are pretty obvious, you know, they, they censor a lot of shit. Like, we watched that one time, there was a Bakugan with a spiked tail, right? I think it was, um, Hyd oh, yeah, Hydronoid. He literally stabs Reaper in the fucking sub. In the dub, it's just completely removed. The whole scene. <laughs> he just, like, slaps him or something with his tail. Or, like, <laughs> Bakugan lecture, Just let maybe? them commit murder. Let the Bakugans yes. commit murder. Yes. Yes. Just like Yugi in season zero of Yu-Gi-Oh. We will get to Just those things later too. Yes. Bakugan livestone murder. Murder. That's what I mean by that. Yeah. So, the final kind of like big meme too. In the sub, we get a satellite capable of blowing up the earth. Versus in the dub, a satellite which will brainwash the earth instead. Ah, yes. So... Oh. Yeah, that that. What's he gonna brainwash them to do, though? We'll find out around here. You're about to summon it. Mm. <laughs> I yeah, I guess Dude. I should have uh, gone over the board really. So, it it's broken down into each season. One, I noticed. Two, three, four, and then post really. And here's another important thing to note, which I totally forgot to mention. Double quotes. Children's card game anime, double quotes. We will mm -hmm. refer to this frequently. Children. And then <laughs> above it, I put a small thing that says Kappa, because, um, reasons. Yeah. Uh, raise uh. paw. Yes, Simon. Our, uh, the fun, uh, fun Yu-Gi-Oh! translation dub to sub thing, uh, in, in a similar vein, in, uh, in Duel Monsters, the original series, uh, Maximilian Pegasus is in the sub frequently drinks wine. But in the dub, it is uh, the finest of fruit juices. I just thought it's a... Oh, yes. <laughs> the Perfect. finest of fruit juices. That is just, just like our... Super fine. Uh, alcohol. No yeah, more white wine sauce. spritzers before Precisely, bed. precisely. <laughs> yes, it is precisely like that. I wonder who drinks water, you know? Bruh. Huge oh, gulp. Imagine. Is that, is that your character bit now? Drinking water? <sighs> <laughs> I mean, it's good I for you. <laughs> I don't know if it's more of a character bit as 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 much of a fucking and bit, but uh, it's a lifestyle, you know, okay? It's a lifestyle. Need those here. We don't need any of those. C -c 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 cut oh, that! So. Remember to cut that. <laughs> nah, f fuck no need, bro. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> he's not gonna cut it. He's not. What's so, the next bullet point on the this. list, Professor so, okay, Sean? Okay, okay, settle down, settle down, everybody. This settle is down. Fucking classroom, after all. So sub versus dub, it's an interesting sort of debacle really of what you should choose and the main case really is uh in my second uh no in my third one here rather sorry is uh you know the sub itself is actually kind of based on its own uh you know it has decent voice acting and you know it's the original story really as it is presented you know there's no s american censoring and, and none of that stuff right and then of course, but the dub is still awesome. It's still fucking hilarious, right? So, you know, oh, yeah. you can kind of make a case to watch either or. 
And, you know, if you're, if you're really desperate, if you're, you know, really utilitarian, the dub episodes are obviously shorter. So if you want to just blaze through it, uh, you know, have a good time with some friends, watch the dub. It's, it's cringe levels transcend into a whole new dimension of actually being kind of good and based and funny. So that's my recommendation. Brain. Representation. Does. Yes. We'll get to that down here in the middle. <laughs> so let's just fucking get into it, guys. Season one. Let's go. Let's so, fucking go. For every season, I have an alliterative headline for each season, basically. Mm. So season one, the headline I put is Slifer Slacker Start Strong. Mm, mm -hmm. Season one, it's it's pretty chill, you know. It's pretty. It's got heroics. It's got the good stuff, you know. Fighting the bad guys, fighting the darkness guys, you know, all that good stuff. Saving the world. Fighting the black guys, yeah. From you know big bad, you know big bad cards, greedy people, <laughs> etc. Starting off, of course, our protagonist is Jaden Yuki or Yuki Judai. Unfortunately, <laughs> Jelly is not with us, so that bit just totally went right out the window. But you know, no, I'm here. I'm here. I'm pooping, but I'm here. Okay, Jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Jelly is uh -oh. reaching to us from beyond the toilet. Yeah, yeah, Jew uh... joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jew in the sub, but Jaden in the dub. Jayden. So a couple of things to note about Jaden before we get into anything. Interesting little. Quirky facts and trivia, right? Jaden's, you know, his hair is a little, mo a little more normal. Surprisingly, I know for for Yu-Gi-Oh characters, he actually sort of has normal-ish <laughs> yeah. hair for protagonists. It's actually insane, right? And it's you know, brown. And yes, it is brown. His care, and you know, his attitude, right? His kind of carefree attitude is, you know, meant to contrast Yugi's. That's what Takahashi, you know, stated when he was creating Jaden, was that it's sort of meant to contrast to Yugi. And uh, some other little quirky facts. You know, Jaden, his main thing is fusion, right? Fusing monsters. As we see right here with the glorious Flame Wingman, who is, you know, uses Burstinatrix and Avion together to make Flame Wingman. But I have something interesting for you guys. I've done a little something special for this lecture. Oh. And I need to go get it. So I will be right back. What? Uh. Bye. Uh. Banter away. Banter away. What do you guys, what do you guys, what do you guys uh. think it'll be? Huh? What do you guys think it'll be? Is he, he's going to put on like a Flame Huge Wingman cosplay, black I think. Huge black cosplay, I think. Red cock. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say this is it's gonna like turn into like a sexy cam number. video. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my money's it's on like some sort of naked. cosplay outfit, something. Sean is going to pull out his life life a slacker jacket. Yeah. Yeah. It's gotta be something big though, right? Or something. It's got, the, I guess um, some, maybe something it's got an arm cannon do. that looks just like the fucking uh, Christian hand. He's gonna bring out his dual disc and send us all to the Shadow Realm. Yo, it's gonna be dual disc. All right, I'm done pooping. Nice, bro. I nice. I just, I just want Flame Wayne Man oh, to, to crush me with his giant thighs. Uh, what? yes, Why yes, are you we know. Gay. Why are you gay? <laughs> Why are you? Why gay? are you gay? Why are you now, gay? I'm interested in the uh, in the implications of uh, 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 Wingman, the fucking bird guy. What's his name? Just Wingman. Uh, uh, Flame, Flame Wingman. Man. No, 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 just the bird one. The Neo Spatial dude? Oh, wait, oh, okay. Avion. The Animorph? I, I'm, <laughs> no, shut up. I figured it out, I figured it out. I'm interested in the implications of Avion, who is a man, and Persinatrix, who is a woman, fusing together to be flame wing. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm well, obviously, the, the man was the more powerful well, he had part more of that fusion, <laughs> so it prevailed. I mean, well, Avion, yeah. is better, Avion, I think, is better than Persinatrix. I don't, I don't actually remember. I actually, um, I just can't wait to hear about how Jaden, like, jacks off to his cards, you know, how he, like, starts dating. Is that real? The first I have a little something made. special for you all. Well, is... Don't spoil it. Oh. 
Oh my Yo! god! Yo! I called it! Yes! Yo! He is about to send us to the shadow realm. You are I'm ready. We're not gonna survive this lecture. We're not making it out. How many kidneys so cool. did that cost you? So this I mean. right here is a dual disc, ladies and gentlemen. But you'll notice there's I'm something seeing. a little different. It's red, it's not gray. That means it's from season four. And these guys are kind of rare. You know, it was an item that I was looking for. And I have some special things in my hand as well. Uh, <laughs> However, I special cards. Yo, hand. yo. We're going to leave them here for later. Whoa. Face down. Face down. Oh, no. If they will, Face if they will stay. What do we do when Sean summons them? If they will stay. They will stay. We die. Do you have like rubber bands to maybe keep them there? Fuck. Okay. No, <laughs> not I'm not okay. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna hold your arm like this so it's facing forward. Do you so have? You off. could get like rubber bands to keep them in place. So I could, I could do a little, little something like this too. Just hold it. Uh. Yeah. Hold it steady here. <laughs> you you no. kind of look like a DJ. Uh, Sean, we need the wacky hand movements. God damn it. Here's one hand. So I have. Five monsters. Well, maybe monsters. They could be anything. Face down. <laughs> and I also have some spell cards. Maybe, maybe traps, maybe monsters in my hand, too. Fuck. I need another hand. <laughs> Sean, just Make put it away. Okay. Just put it away, Sean. <laughs> put, put, your, put, your, put your knights on the dual disc. Yeah, yeah just put it away attack. until we need it again. Well, see the thing, the, the the bit here is that it's gonna be used over the over the course of the whole thing. So we left off kind of talking about Jaden, right? So the thing about Jaden is, you know, his thing is fusion, flaming man, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He uses more fusion monsters than anyone in the series, right? And anyone in the franchise, actually, excuse me. And if I'm not mistaken, he he had something like thirty. Six fusions throughout the series, which is like way over the deck limit, by the way. Just so we're clear, um, don't know how that works. <laughs> so, what else about Jaden though? Because he he's a little he's a little un he's a little unique, right? In the fact that opposed to Yugi and every other protagonist, his I believe surname starts with U. Well, you know, all the other ones, it's like the other way around. He's sort of a unique mm. case in that regard. And he's also the only one whose name they just outright changed from the sub to the dub, right? So, Judai versus Jaden, right? Two completely different names. And that's not the case with the other protagonists. Gee, I wonder who could be behind that. I wonder too, <laughs> Jelly. I wonder too. <laughs> <laughs> and another little quirky fact here. There's, you know, seven <clears throat> protagonists now. There's seven protagonists. Jaden, his color palette is the only one that doesn't use any blue. Think about that for a second. Ooh. That's interesting. Hmm. Oh, red pill. So yeah, he's... <laughs> Fuck. yeah, very, very red pill, very base. I'm, I'm actually gonna take this off. This is too the the, the bit. Cold the, the, <laughs> bit Cold the bit was too much when one card falls out, right? <laughs> so I had to find batteries for this. That was kind of a pain, uh, so it could glow. <laughs> also, you know, we got field spell slot. That's pretty sick. That's really all there is for for the dual disc. Obviously, it holds your cards right here. Oh, and the life point meter does work, by the way. Yo, that's sick. That's pretty based. Yeah, after I added in lay batteries, everything kind of worked. Put battery in machine, machine go burr. I know, crazy idea, right? But uh, yeah, this thing's a little tight, because obviously it's for f***ing kids. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Card game. Anime and toys, etc. Fuck! <laughs> it's actually ridiculous. Okay. There we go. <laughs> that's 
the rare no need for a laugh right there. That's staying in. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Okay, let me let me collect my bearings here. We gotta whips out the wrong card. <laughs> wouldn't that wouldn't that be cut funny? cut? Okay, where I left off, right? Jaden, no blue. Fuck blue. He's red pilled. He's a red pilled Mig Tau, ladies and gentlemen. Just like the jacket I am wearing right now. Let's go. Fuck Let's go. go. Okay, Jaden is also unique for this reason. The results of his final duel are technically unknown. As with every other protagonist, you know, their duel result is known, so to speak. He is also unique in the case that his final duel is not against a rival or partner. We'll get to that way later. That is the end of the show, obviously. But of course, you wouldn't know that because there was never a season four dub! Ah! <laughs> Jaden is also one of the most winning protagonists. Jaden bros stay winning. He only lost in a real, real, that's the key word there, on-screen duel three times in his entire series runtime. And Where's I believe, yes, no need, bro. What a fucking Mary Sue. No. <laughs> Fuck you. Die. No. <laughs> no. So it all it all gets explained. Way way down here, we get our we get our our juicy bits. Season one, like I said though, very sort of idealistic, kind of generic, like save the world kind of you know, ABC XYZ kind of plot. And, you know, it's very lighthearted with its tone. And it has some, like, interesting themes, but, like, nothing too crazy, right? Like, it's pretty standard. It's pretty bare bones. But what makes season one good, at least in my opinion, is how it contrasts to everything that happens down here. And it's really, like, kind of eye-opening how far you've come, you know, once you get down into season three and season four. So it's a great start to the show. It sort of continues a new narrative in the same universe, you know, that we are familiar with. GX takes place 10 years after DM, or Duel Monsters. And of course, episode one, Jaden is on his way to the Duel Academy entrance exams. Of course, he bumps into Yugi. He just happens to. And that's where Yugi... Yo, that's my guy! That's my dude! That's the guy. Huh? Yugi gives him the winged Karibo card. Jaden's... Because it looks like his hair, right? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. The winged no, Karibo card. Because it's a shit card. card and you want to get rid of it. It's bad. <laughs> winged yeah, Karibo raises card, raises those is cards. great. He is great. He is awesome. Fuck you, Shinny. What, what's up, Nonian? Uh, I, I swear, guys, this card won't literally turn out to be the most powerful fucking monster in all of existence. I don't well. believe you. Wing Karibo is God. Facts. Hashtag facts. Wing Karibo. I mean, yeah, it's a funny meme, but it's not really accurate. It's just like Wing Karibo sort of represents Jaden's rock, right? He's sort of, you know, talk. A. <laughs> Yes, Jelly. Uh, you know, a monster that's kind of special, right? It's got a very good, unique effect. And, you know, it was given to him by the first, you know, king of games, really. And, you know, that card sort of holds a special place in his heart. And sometimes it often gets, you know, forgotten, really, for, like, the symbols of his deck, so to speak. So, like, Flame Wingman. In season one, that's basically like his symbol, his ace, his main. It's his dark magician. Yeah, it's his dark magician, etc. However, there, there's some some you know shenanigans happens later, but I'll, I guess I'll just mention this now: is that another unique thing about Jaden compared to every other protagonist is that his real ace monster gets introduced in the second season, not the first season. Right. Whoa! You know, the first few episodes of GX, you know, they're really lighthearted. They get us to root for Jaden, right? Because it seems like 
the odds are really stacked against him, so to speak. In the what are you going to do? And his back yes. is Buck against, back the, wall. against the wall. Back yeah, i got to give it his all. And gonna... Jaden is, you know, late for the exam. And he's like the last one to show up. But in the dub and the sub, it's a little weird with how the translations are. But in the sub, at least, it's because there was like a train delay or something, you know, something out of his control, right? That he couldn't even control. So the headmaster of Dual Academy, who we only see the back of, I believe, uh, calls the professor who is, you know, monitoring the exams to, you know, let the kid in, you know, he got, he got cucked by, you know, circumstances he couldn't control, right? And what's unique here is, you know, it is Professor Velian Crowler. Yeah. Now this is oh, the. Oh fuck, Crowler. Hold that thought. But uh, <laughs> Professor Crowler. They're they're sort of like, I think Okama. I think is kind of the you know. Trans, you mean? <laughs> yes, Rita. <laughs> Listen, he's not Bon Bon Clay. Let's Yo, just say trans that. trans representation. Very That's similar sick. to Bon Clay. Very similar to Bon Clay. Except Actually. he's not good. <laughs> As good as Bon Clay, at least. We'll 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 see about that. So, I, yes, Rito, Rito, come on, you you went ah, you you got it, you gotta go. Well, I mean, so so like Okama is like a that's like a like a Japanese like slang term for like trans people. Like I mean, it, what 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 would be referred to as tran a, a tranny? What someone would call a tranny, you would also call like. Hmm. Oh, come yeah. on. Okay, well, I mean, the, like, the point not the, not is... The, not the most, like, politically that, correct term. Sure. But. It is a fem... It's not a slur, but it's not, like, super nice, you know? It's not polite. Okay. Well, like, One Piece One Piece has, like, the island of the Okamas. Yeah. I don't think it, uh, I don't think there's, like, a big, yeah. like, like... There's not, like, a culture around, like, the term being offensive in Japan. I okay, well, well I mean, let's just uh, simplify... Uh, tune Trans. in next year for the right. Okama lecture. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so Crowley. When we dress up as Bon Clay when we give it. Yes, bon Clay and Crowley, you. respectively. All right. Settle down. You know, oh, it's a. Shut ah! You know, it's yeah. a fucking man dressed as a woman, you know, like essentially, or womanly, or whatever. Eee! Crowler, you know, Crowler has purple lipstick. You know, Wait. that's how it is. And Crowler. <laughs> In the dub is voiced by Sean Schemmel, who, yeah. if you're not aware, is Goku. Is... So it's very, com it's very. No. Funny. <laughs> real? What the? I yeah. didn't notice. That's real. And 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 oh. Mr. Mr. Schemmel, you know he he's also the he's a very you know, recurring you know kind of character in that he voices a bunch of different people in the show, and it's very funny. Well, that's because Funimation only has like ten people that work for them. And I mean, it, like, every the dubbing it was place ever time, has though. only like ten so. people. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they're, it's all the same crowd. They, let's it, yeah, yeah. Let's not kid ourselves. I know yeah. what you mean. So, yeah, Crowler, voiced by Sean Schemmel, pretty funny. So, the Crowler decides because of this fucking slacker, bro. This is the last kid to show up to the exam. Like, what the fuck was he doing, right? He decides to go duel him himself, personally, wow. with his own wow. deck. What a mean, Bruh. what a mean guy. But Jaden wins. Jaden wins because he he pulls out a nasty comeback combo using Flame Wing Man and Skyscraper. Skyscraper, of course, giving a hero one thousand extra attack points when attacking if their attack points are lower. And as you guys may or may not know, Fling Wingman's superpower, as it is commonly referred to, is dealing the attack points of the destroyed monster as damage. And obviously that's a very good ability that, you know, lets Jaden have comebacks very often. And, you know, Ancient Gear Golem is the monster that he was facing on that turn. And he has 3,000 attack points. So dealing 3,000 damage when the life points are only 4,000, by the way, is a fucking lot of damage. Okay. That's a lot of damage. And that's why Flame Wingman is fucking OP, boys. Yeah. Look at him. There he oh, is. Oh, shit. Is that holographic? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. The background is. Yes, the background is. 
So episode one is great because it introduces us to a plethora of like all the main characters basically. And it does a really good job of sort of showing their tropes, so to speak. Because this show kind of, in a funny way, it's sort of like deconstructs the sort of like common, like sort of shown in archetypes really later on and in the beginning. And it's, it's good, it's good. And you know, we see Bastion, Cyrus, Chaz, Zane, Alexis. We see all the main like heavy hitters in the first episode, which is pretty fucking awesome. God, it is fucking One, hot. One, two, three, sink. sink. God damn it, Shinny. Oh. <laughs> what? Fuck. I'm I, this I, off for now. The blazer is cool, but it's too fucking hot, everybody. I like the I like the stylish turtleneck though. It's a good. Yeah, this, this is a uh, under, undershirt. Really? Okay. So let, let's focus on the board here, right? Because there's, there's, you know, good, funny, important things on here. So I already sort of commented on Jaden's unique designs. So we can just skip right over that. Here's a confusing thing that people all, like often don't really understand. Dorm does not equal year. You know, dorm is like. It's just as you go, it's just a thing that sort of happens or doesn't, you know? So dorm does not equal year. You can have third year Slifer Reds, as we'll see later on. So Is it's it like, dorm it's like... Is like your, like, where you live, like your fraternity? Raises paw. It's, yeah. It's, it's like Harry Potter. Simon raised paw, so I call I raised Simon. my paw. So, yeah, isn't it like the dorms are... You, you get sorted into dorms based off your skill level? Partially true. So, Partially true. So yeah, so three dorms, Slifer Red, Raw Yellow, Obelisk Blue. Pretty obvious. So the the shitters go to Slifer. <laughs> just because. <laughs> Pe people who did you know, pretty good get into Raw. People who did good and or have connections and or went to like a private school go to Obelisk. Um... That's basically nice. the bit. So, so obelisk people already sort of have this like, you know, nature sort of air of like, you know, our you know inherent position or whatever. We just get to be better than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. We're like um, Alexis Rodenstein. Dorm doesn't equal year. <laughs> so obviously, I've kind of already talked about homage to D DM as well. Everything else kind of comes later. Really, so we'll skip kind of what's there for now and just kind of fast forward. So, you know, one through four episode, episodes one through four really are like kind of establishing, you know, the plot, like not the plot, establishing like the cast. You know, like we get to know some of the characters, we get to see Jaden duel. You know, we get to see him have these sort of you know epic comebacks. Uh, you know, episode two, he duels Chaz because Chaz is, is feeling really like jealous and like oh this kid's getting all this attention for beating crowler this this professor at our school like there's no way it must have been a fluke it must have been luck right but here's the thing they duel at night in uh, in the duel arena when they're not supposed to and they also make it an mm. anti-duel as well mm. for flame wingman obviously so wow that's interesting to know however the duel does not conclude, but we'll get back to that later. Much later, too, by the way. Uh -huh. But yeah, real plot doesn't really start until episode five. We get shown that there is an abandoned dorm on the island, Ooh. and we'll be there frequently, let's just say. But we also get told that Alexis's brother is missing. And he went missing at the abandoned dorm. And Jaden duels a guy in there and fucks him up. And uh, sends him to the Shadow Realm, but he doesn't really realize that at first. So, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> he fucking just kills a guy and doesn't even know it. Yes, Shinny. Oops. So, the next kind of, like, big thing for GX is episode 8, where we kind of get, like the power like the idea of the power scale because this is kind of like a shonen right so 
We see Jaden lose finally, because up until now, you know, he's only one really. And he loses to Zane, Cyrus's older brother. So I guess what I forgot to mention back in episode one is that Jaden kind of hits it off with Cy as, you know, kind of making friends with him. And they're both behind Bastion, and they're all sort of like talking and shit. Bastion's like, I'm the number one, you know, I'm the smart, nerdy guy who has all the strats and does all the math, and I have a bunch of decks. We should find that out later on, but... Yeah, so, you know, it's like I said before, you know, we see everyone's kind of characters introduced, and, you know, they kind of get involved with one another. And that loss to Zane is, like, really important, you know? And that's where we see, you know, like, the first, like, good usage, really, of Power Bond, right? And, you know, <laughs> how it just fucks shit up. Because even the, the, despite <laughs> Jaden, Fusion summoning a Mudball Man with 3,000 defense, a Power Bonded Cyber End Dragon can literally OTK over that. So, you know, <laughs> with its piercing damage, it would deal 5,000, and he would instantly win. But, obviously, they flesh out the duel a little more than that, but essentially, that's basically what happens. Um, you know, Zane attacks over that and wins. Raises paw. Yes, Kudro. You could say uh, winning a, a, a match like that with Cyber Dragons and Power Bonds a bit anticlimactic. Uh... Uh, ha, he, ho, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Hey, hey, can we, can we oh, move oh, on to the oh. next topic? Can we move on Batman to the next topic, please? over there is okay. Yu-Gi-Oh. Can we please move on to the next topic? So, <laughs> the next interesting thing of note is that Bastion duels Chaz. And Bastion beats the fuck out of him. And this is where we get that iconic scene of, of, of Bastion ripping open his raw yellow jacket to reveal six deaths, <laughs> like, on his chest. Wow. <laughs> it, it, it's such a great scene. It's such a fucking meme. He kills himself. A good duelist always has a spare deck, or a few of them. After all, you saw all of my different formulas. Well, they were for all my different dueling decks. And each one of them is as powerful as the next. It's a great time. And, yeah, so he, he beats Chaz, and Chaz goes missing, interestingly. That's uh, after episode 12. The next thing of note is episodes 18 and 19, where Jaden duels Dimitri, the copycat duelist of Duel Academy, where he happens to steal a replica of Yugi's deck, which was on tour huh? there at the time. And Jaden manages to win this, by the way, which is awesome. Wow. And the following kind of arc really is a little confusing, so I have to clarify some things. There's, you know, there's more dual schools, right? It's a world of dueling, where dueling, like, is everything, that kind of thing. So, essentially, there's an academy called North Academy, which is different from stuff we find out later, but specifically, it's just North Academy. And... They have a sort of like, you know, ritual sort of duel. Duel Academy versus North Academy. And they have to choose representatives. North Academy happens to be choosing a first year. Remember, dorm doesn't equal year. So yeah. it's the student's first year there. And they happen to choose a first year representative. So Duel Academy feels similarly. The match is, of course, Bastion versus Jaden. Finally. We get the sort of carefree, you know, heroic kind of good guy versus like the super smart, brainy, do all the calculations guy. And that's pretty sick because Bastion decides to play a trap to seal Jaden from using polymerization, one of his Whoa. key cards to his combos. Oh no, so what does he do? Jaden finds up, you know, winds up finding a way out of that really. And, you know, Jaden still has pretty powerful monsters, too, even without fusion summoning, like Blade Edge, which I believe has 2,600 attack. Even more than Mr. Flame Wingman here. Um, uh, Raises Paw? Yes, Shinny. Uh, is 
is Rita really allowed to uh, vape and drink in class? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rita, you were the first one to receive a demerit, okay? Oh. I'm saying it right now. <laughs> I've been, fuck I've you, been you quiet know. the whole time. <laughs> I've been what the fuck, you know, literally you what the fuck. Here in the yeah, so you can get away with it <laughs> smoking bad. in the back of class. Uh, okay, okay. If this is if still counts as the same demerit, can I get a couple, couple more? No. <laughs> a couple more. <laughs> You're addicted. You're addicted. <laughs> You're a damn addict. <laughs> See, Rita, this uh, is why you have to have a big bottle of fresh, clean water. Cetol is how, no, how do you know this isn't sauce. water with like you don't see any other bottle this is this this is clearly shut like, up shut up settle down close. shut up it's just close. shut up raises paw raises paw raises paw yes simon elements hero blade edge does in fact have 2600 attack points go on okay thank you nice <laughs> you're, you're like the ta you're like the ta you know <laughs> indeed I since, simon is a TA. <laughs> since zach isn't here you that's your role <laughs> yep yep i'm on it <laughs> so the obvious kind of thing happens right Chaz goes missing oh no where does he go so he gets picked Chance. up by North Academy where there we see him sort of go through almost like a redemption arc of where he collects see to enter North Academy you need a full deck 40 cards right and you have to collect every individual card from the harsh icy like terrain around the school in order to get in and R raise his paw yes rita w why are there cards in the harsh terrain this is you -Oh, yo baby <laughs> they put them there <laughs> uh, is this yeah. like easter like yes uh, okay yes all right, but all let's, you. let's continue let's continue though so like so there's a guy waiting outside He's like, oh, I have, I have 39 cards in my deck. I just need one more, but I'm so weak. I'm so weak. And then Chaz is like, the Chad he is, he just walks up with his fucking 40 cards in like a span of like, like a shonen like training montage. He just walks yeah. up there afterwards. He's like, okay, I'll just give you a card. Like, go ahead, bro. I, like, I, Damn. He's, like, he's like, I collected 41. So I'll, I'll just give you one, bro. But That's then, awesome. Chaz sits down next to the little fire that the guy built. And he's like, I only had 40 cards. Uh, and then, uh, but he glances over and he notices a card just sitting there. So he's like, okay, I have 40 cards. Let's go. He duels, gets into North Academy. He goes through a gauntlet of, if, I don't remember if it was, I think it was 50. It might have been 100 <coughs> students. He goes through, there's a, you know, exact ranking system of who you beat and who you lose to is what your rank is so Chaz beats all of these guys with a ragtag deck um, wow he really chazzed it up by the way <laughs> shut up one, <laughs> one one small thing i forgot to mention is that when Chaz went missing he took a boat and then he got found by a submarine and uh there was like a <laughs> kind cool. of masked oh, of course. figure in there where they gave him, I, I believe, the Ojama yellow card. So that's where he picks up the first Ojama. And that's when Chaz can see dual spirits, just like Jaden. So that's how we kind of know, you know, he sort of went through this kind of development, really, as a character. And how, like, Ojama yellow represents, like, his soft, like, softer, nicer side, right? Like, he's not totally obnoxious, that kind of thing. Yeah. So he goes into North Academy, blows the fuck out of everyone, and then he becomes the representative, right, for the duel against Duel Academy. And obviously it's against Jaden, right, because he beat Bastion. So that duel is really interesting because Chaz is getting really pressured by his brothers. His brothers, you know, he's in this group, right, you know, the Princetons, and, um, <laughs> and they want to take over the world. Awesome! Sick, right? So nice. one guy has already taken over the political world. One guy has already taken over the economic world. They're just waiting for, for their last little brother here to take over the dueling world. Right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> the three pillars of the, the earth. Of course, of the course. The competitive children's card game world. And we get, a, we get a pretty emotional scene, really, of Chaz kind of having like a mental breakdown in the bathroom. Or in a bathroom, yeah. And we, we happen to see Jaden kind of glance in and, like, you know, sort of understand 
like that he's under a lot of pressure to sort of win this duel, you know, and and get his name really out there and whatnot. Raise his paw. Yes, Jelly. So Chaz is having a mental fucking breakdown in the bathroom, and we just see Jaden just peering in, just like <laughs> <laughs> just staring at him in the bathroom. I'll I'll I'll, I'll try to throw it on screen. Uh, yeah, I mean that's. I mean I mean he's like at the sink. He's like he's like oh. Uh, I need to win this duel. I can't lose. I can't lose. And you know, Jaden's just like, if, like if this is like the fucking entrance, he he is, he is just standing there. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Listen, Jelly. Maybe that's what Jaden's into. He likes watching people have mental but... breakdowns. Raise his paw. Raise yes, Rita. It, so there's some reason that they can't conquer the dueling world with. The other, you know, the other two large, uh... We'll factions? get there. We'll get there. Okay. So, I I don't know about, like, the, um... Like, the political guy. I don't really know what the fuck is, is his deal. But I'll, I'll get to I'll get back to you on that, on the ep economic guy. For sure. So, the duel happens. Also, like, the most important thing ever. This is where Chaz It Up starts, you know? Yes! Which is, like, yes! the best thing ever. Yes! Ever. Chaz it up! 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 Yes, yes, yes! Okay, good shit. It probably wasn't synced at all, but I'm chazzing! Oh god! Yo, let me taste it, Shinny. Jaden wins in this duel, but but he kind of he kind of encourages Chaz to you know like don't just do whatever your brothers like tell you to do, you know don't. You know, do you really want to like rule the Take world? Take over the world. Or whatever. You know, you you have all these friends in this stadium. You know. <laughs> you know, they're kinda like, you know, on your side. They're they they get the whole two schools to chaz it up. It's fucking awesome. Because yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, they feel Wait, bad for the stuff about the brothers and whatnot. Eliazari. Racist Paul, racist yes. Paul. Does Jaden know that he's trying to conquer the world? I mean, I think it's it's like a figure of speech. It's more the brothers' idea, and they're you know yeah. they're pressuring Chaz to do it. You know. Mm. Yeah. So Jaden wins that. Relatable. Role, but you know, encourages Chaz to like be himself. You know, just do whatever he wants. Past this sort of arc, really, is where the real shit starts. So we get kind of the bigger plot details, right? By the way, did I mention Dual Academy was built by Kaiba Corporation? That's an important thing. No. Oh, of course. Judge Kaiba, oh. hottest character in anything. Kaiba. Seto Kaiba. Ooh, also, Kaiba hot, boy. Hot I man. forgot to mention hot. the ranking of the dorms. Kaiba didn't really, you know, like Slifer, so that's the lowest. Right, he, because that was Yugi's fucking card. Yeah, and, um, and he put Raw in the middle because it was the most desirable. But then he put Obelisk mm. at the top because it was like. His right, because he's and, fucking Seto Kaiba. Yeah, 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 that was hit. Yeah, I fucking oh God, I love him. I love him so much. Yeah, so so past that Chaz arc though is where we get introduced. Uh, I believe in episode fucking I didn't write it down. It's like twenty. It's like thirty, twenty nine or thirty. The Shadow Riders. So Dual Academy was a school that was built on top of some very special cards. That being the sacred beasts, and those are they're kind of like dark, darknessy kind of OP cards. You know, it's Yu-Gi-Oh, right? So they Wait, literally, little... like, like they put the cards on the ground and they built the foundation over it. No, Simon, but also bad, okay, bad for interrupting. <laughs> so no. So yeah, Wrong. The, whole, the whole point of the of building the school for Akaiba was to like, like fucking push that shit under the rug, I guess, or something. I don't know. Kaiba does mysterious and weird things, and he's cool, so. Yes, that's true. Right before the Shadow Rider introduction, uh, they go on a little field trip to an alternate universe, just randomly, because they hike into some ruins where, like, a little thing activates, and they get transported oh. to another dimension, just because. So there they fight the Grave Keepers, where Jaden has to win a duel, cool. where the damage he takes is real. 
And if he doesn't win the duel, no. he and his friends will be mummified. Oh, no. Yo. <laughs> oh, no. I wonder if he oh, happens. No. So, Jaden wins because... <laughs> of course. He's Jaden. Yeah. And uh, for spell. winning the challenge, he gets a unique sort of half of like a medallion, basically, around his neck. We'll get back to that as well. Because literally in like the next episode... He goes against the first of the Shadow Riders, and their goal is to steal the seven Spirit Gate Keys to unlock the three Sacred Beasts. Or in the sub, they're phantasms, you know, demony kind of cards, whatever. So, yeah, so seven like people are given keys. The Shadow Riders are there to fuck them up and take the Wait, keys. Far. Yes, Noni, bro. Okay, so if these cards are so evilly, demony, whatever, and they build this entire, like, elaborate gate school on top of it, why don't they just tear the cards? What do you mean? Like, they, they, want, like, they want them. They want them. They don't, like... I mean, the good guy. Just open oh, it oh. and, like... Yeah. I, open it. It's cardboard. Think... Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! I, yeah, this is one of those Yu-Gi-Oh moments. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Plot hole. Uh oh I, Like, they have the I keys! Think, I uh oh think, I mean, they're special cards, right? So they probably, like, can't just be ripped, you know? Like, and, and Yeah, they're laminated. Probably, you can't just rip that. There's probably <laughs> some reasoning, too, for, like, keeping the, like, shit later on that's, like, the balance of the dimensional barriers or whatever the fuck. And that's that's probably why. But uh, they they are evil, to be clear. They are, like, bad cards that, when released... Uh, I mean, this is a little later, but, you know, they, like, suck up the dual energy out of every card in the over the whole world. <laughs> um, Not the racist, dual energy! Racist poll! Racist poll! Yes, C2. Well, you... Question mark? Don't worry about no, it. No, I'm that's just... Later. That's, that's the beast. That's ah. the sacred beast. They, oh, fuck. They literally... They're, like, their summonings in the duel later suck like they the images so like you have the uh i know this isn't the real thing but you know you have like oh, the ojama the yellow beasts. the ojama yellow disappears like he becomes a skeleton oh, and disappears it's insane yo no. wait no ojama wait, yo. <laughs> no i know it's so sad ojama right? no no ojama yellow was such a good kid but uh, yeah i should i should continue though so uh First Shadow Rider is called Night Shroud. He is a clearly a dude who has a mask that covers like a majority of his face. Jaden goes up against him first and he uses a red eyes deck. Which is interesting. <gasps> Whoa. So Jaden wins. Because it's Jaden. Yeah. The duel concludes, and of course, you know, it's kind of like a Typical sort of tropey thing, you know, the mask falls off. And who is it? It's someone we know, you know? So... Oh my god! 20... What, whatever this is, like, 25 episodes later. It's Alexis's brother who went missing <gasps> all that time ago. Whoa! Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, and that's pretty Alexis, Texas, sick. no. <laughs> that's pretty fucking sick. Yeah, also, he, that's he kinda, cool. he kind of goes into, like, a... Like a coma afterwards or something? It's kind of weird. Raises paw. Yes, Jelly. Who's Alexis? Alexis. A character. The blonde Alexis girl. Ro yeah, ah, yeah. I, I probably should have gone over the characters more. It doesn't matter. So Alexis is like sort of a... She's the long, blonde hair main girl, essentially. Big kinda, titted bitch. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so refer to... Parentheses. Alexis Big Bonkers. Right here. Oh. Mm. <laughs> She's Alexa, Alexis Roadstein. Oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> May oh, no. Cause she's in cause right, she's right, an right, obelisk right, right. blue. So Alexis is pretty awesome though. She's kinda like a she's like a you know, like the popular girl. Like top of her class, kinda little Sundere, you know, it's pretty cute. She's pretty a Stacy. She's a Stacy. She's Rin Tosaka. Yeah, she's like blonde Rin. Um Yeah, let kinda. me just uh take a picture of her and chuck it in the in the chat. But yeah, we see like um cuz uh fucking Night Shroud like captured uh 
Chumley and Cy... I didn't even fucking mention who Chumley was. Oh, <laughs> not God. Chumley, See, this, no! This is spa. Yes, no need, bruh. It, is Chumley a real name? <laughs> <laughs> that's his dub. Yeah, that's from his Street dub, Fighter, yeah. That's his dub name. Yeah. To, to, to clarify, I'll mostly be using dub names, but obviously in Season 4, I have to, like... I, I believe uh, Chumley's uh, uh, actual name is Hayato Maeda. Yes, yes. So Chumley is like a he's like a he's like sloth. Like that's kind of his like archetype, his character archetype, right? He and, and also he is the example. His father's business was apparently an an alcohol business in the sub and a hot sauce business in the dub. Mm. <laughs> and yeah, Ch Chumley is lazy. Yes, Trump Chumley's very lazy and he likes grilled cheese. That's kind of his reoccurring bit. He's like, I could really go for a grilled cheese right now, man. <laughs> wow, what a great <laughs> Bro, I could really go for a grilled <laughs> cheese now, <laughs> bro. So, it's literally so his father's... Garfield. Uh, Eliezer would love it. Like uh, It's lasagna. Uh, it's lasagna, Sean. Riz, yeah, yeah, Riz I know. For... Yes, Riz. So so his, so the the hot sauce business was that was that's like dub hot sauce, so it's like Yeah. What yeah. what is his father? Do you know what his father does in the sub? I, I'm I'm very alcohol. curious. Uh, it's al he, alcohol versus hot sauce. You know. Yeah, well, yeah, but like specifically, you know, is it like a, I you know, brewery, I, I, vineyard, uh, bar, what do we got? Liquor store, like sake. Yeah. Like yeah. Point. I, yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah, that's it's what I wanted to know. It's only relevant for you, like one if, episode. If you, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, okay. it's no big deal. So, um, yeah. Raise this poll. I, I just had this thought. Um, if hot sauce is alcohol, does that mean that in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, people drink straight hot sauce? Like yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes, in the episode, yes. that we should take shots of hot we sauce. Get to, yeah, we'll get oh to my that. God. <laughs> you had a rough night. You you sit by the counter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ran. Oh, oh, no, yeah. So, um... <laughs> Well, we'll actually Knock get to that back. in this season, so so let's continue. Second Shadow Rider is Camula. She is a vampire, literal vampire lady. That ass. So yeah. she's able to summon a castle in the middle of a lake. For just cause. Just cause. She just... What? There she is. She rolls what out her red pop? carpet and shit. Yeah, yes, Kudra. Wait. So there just are vampires now. Yes, but with like an asterisk. Um, Characters in okay. Yu-Gi-Oh have power sometimes. Is it is it, okay? So is it like they're vampires, vampires, or is it like rar? I'm a vampire, kind of. <laughs> rar. Not, it's, it's legit. It's she bites. She bites. Oh, okay. Um, okay yeah. She's a biter. Please, okay. please oh. gaze upon this adult vampire lady. She has green hair. So first, and she can see you. oh okay. First I see, of all, I see who duels her is Crowler. Crowler duels her first, <gasps> in, in kind of what is a more emotional moment of how, you know, Crowler in episode one was like, you know, we're set up to like fucking hate him, right? Because he's like bullying this fucking kid who's like not even in his school, right? He's so, a shitty teacher. But then you know he he steps up to face Camilla, and he's like, you know, I don't I don't want you guys to you know, like, sacrifice yourselves, you know, you, you've taught me so much, like, I'll, I'll take her down, you know, I'm your teacher after all, I'm, I'm your, you know, senior. So that's, like, a pretty touching moment, but Crowler still loses, and Crowler was someone with a key, by the way. One of seven, if you guys remember. So, Camula then takes on Zane, and this is where she cheats bites Cyrus to use as a sacrifice so Zane forfeits the duel that he would have won. Bruh. What? And they lose another key, so that's two of seven. So oh. the last person to take on Camula is Jaden, of course. And what mm. we see is very cool because Jaden whips out a new monster, and it is Shining Flare Wingman against her and uses it to Whoa. beat her. And he is very good and very sick. Yo, he beats the woman? <laughs> he, he like, incinerate. Wait, uh, she... Okay, so he has, like, this cheaty-ass Incinerates them? And, like, it sucks her soul or something. Like, it's like a door. It's like a big Kingdom Hearts door. It's really weird. Game right. on! Get, get your game, game on! Get your 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 game on! 
Oh, that's good. Okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> good. <laughs> that was just as bad this as the great. first one. There was no. Yeah, so I'll, so I'll, I'll just abandon. I'll just abandon this. You know, just delete the server. Delete the lecture. Shut up, no Nibra. Never. And no, maybe okay. after post post lecture, we re we could record a pro and on version of Get Your Game On that we can just insert in here. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> where we left off was yes. roughly episode thirty four. Uh, after Jaden beats Camula, literal vampire lady, by the way. Yeah. Thirty four yeah. is the bath episode. Let's all take a yeah. bath together. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Genders are split. We're just with the boys. With the Yo. boys. No. Boy. No. My son. So. My son. I hate it. The reason. My son. The reason that. Shut up. Sit down. Yeah. Yeah. The reason that 34 is, like, actually an interesting episode is because it is the now second instance where we see Jaden lose on screen. And that's, <gasps> you know, that's another one of those very important things. So the they're, all, they're all in the bath. They get sucked <laughs> down. They get sucked. What? <laughs> they get sucked down into, like a, like, a spirit world where spirits are real. He can touch Wing Karibo. Whoa, that's so cool. He can fuck Wing Karibo. Yes. Out <laughs> yeah. of nowhere comes Kaiba Man, and he duels Jaden and <gasps> beats him. Seto! Seto! Yeah, he does. He's fucking good. And and, and Jaden <laughs> sort of learns like the you know a lesson that like it's okay to lose, bro. Like you don't have to keep beating all these people. Like holy shit, bro. Calm down. Calm down. Whoa, Jamal! Yeah. Don't pull out the knife. Whoa, Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the, the next kind of arc after, like mini arc, I guess, after that is Chaz's brothers are back. They want revenge on <gasps> Chaz for this reason. Oh, my God. I forgot to mention this, but it's okay. But in this episode, his brother, I believe the one who controls the... Ah, fuck. I don't remember if it's which, one, which one it is. Economics? Okay. He pulls him with a certain deck. And that deck is filled with a lot of rare cards that Chaz decided not to use in the Dual Academy versus North Academy duel against Jaden. He opted not to use cards, rare good cards, that his brothers wanted to give him. The whole reason this started, they, they wanted to buy Dual Academy from Kaiba. We literally see them in the Kaiba Corporation office talk to Kaiba. And he sets up a, you know, some rules. The dual academy student cannot use cards with more than I believe it was five hundred attack. <coughs> and I believe that you know that's like a pretty bad stipulation in theory, right? You know, you, you know, you can't, um, yeah, you know, use cards that are powerful. So mm -hmm. Chaz's brother uses this OP rare, you know, good card deck versus Chaz. Who, in an absolute Chad move, undercuts mm -hmm. them by using monsters with only zero attack points, and he blows wow. them the fuck out. And it's Amazing. awesome. Amazing. <laughs> also, Chaz, when building, he he built this deck. He had to build it because his deck contained a lot of his normal one, which is uh, filled with armed dragons. Uh, after. Uh, it's the deck of North Academy, basically, and that's sort of what he, his trademark deck is, is Armed Dragons, which are also uh, level monsters. And all of those cards, can't use them. You know, they're, they're all too powerful. So Chaz has to, like, build a deck, right? And mm -hmm. on the island, there's a well where students just so happen to drop their shitty low attack point cards. So oh. Chaz goes there and fucking builds a deck, and he happens to find the other two Ojamas. Ojama green <gasps> and Ojama black. Yes. Oh, uh, raises paw. Yes, Jelly. So I'm, I'm a little confused as the setup of this. Why are they having a duel with monsters that are only 500 attack or less? What is what is this duel for? Like, what, what are they gaining out of Chaz's this? Chaz's brother is right. dueling Chaz because he bet... So, like, Kaiba bet to him 
that this like the student could still win and like depending on the outcome uh they would buy dual academy off of him Okay. Yeah, Kaibo was like, yeah, my guy's gonna beat you, and even with he's the gonna limitation. be fucking nerfed while yeah. he does it. Even with the limitation. It's God, fucking yeah. badass. It's badass. Because Kaibo's a fucking such a badass. I love him. He's like... Uh, raise his paw. Yes, no need, bro. Has Kaibo ever talked to Shaz? Have, have, they, have they ever had, like, words with each other? Be like, hey, I'm gonna bet my entire fucking school on you. So, here's the deal. Uh, Kaiba just said, oh, fucking choose, choose, choose someone. I don't care. Just choose a representative. And <laughs> because it was Chaz's brother, he chooses Chaz to humiliate in front of the entire school, right? So that's the reasoning and why and whatnot. So Chaz, huh. you know, manages to pull off a quirky comeback with all those cards, you know, all those shitty cards. It's pretty, it's just awesome. After that, though. We go back to Shadow Rider business. Yes! The third Shadow Rider shows up. Out of... So, remember, seven keys, seven Shadow Riders. Okay, that, that's the key to keep in mind here. Key. Yeah. Key <laughs> blade. Okay, so the third Shadow Rider is Tanya, who is this super buff, like, Amazonist... Oh, the buff lady. Yeah, yeah. Amazonist woman. <laughs> and... What's funny is that it's Bastion who she goes against first. And because there's such, like, opposites, right? Bastion is, like, the brainy, nerdy, I'm gonna use my equations to win guy. And then you have <laughs> this Amazonist woman who's, like, this Chad Chadette of, like, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna use my power and spirit and passion to beat you instead. And... You know, that kind of, like, throws him, like, and she also, like, flirts with him, so it just puts Bastion so <laughs> off tilt, and he loses <laughs> the duel and loses another key. Wow. So, if I'm not mistaken, we are three keys down at this point, so yep. Yep. Crowler, Zane, Bastion, all their keys gone. Yeah, this girl's awesome. She's fucking huge. <laughs> huge everything. Everything about her is huge. She's, she's got all these Because of his boner? Yeah, and uh, so so Jaden faces her next, and uh, and Jaden, you know, it's it's just how it is, right? It's like some other character challenges them, and then Jaden shows up to clean up the mess, you know. And uh, you know, he fights up like a passionate duel, you know. What a Janny! Yeah, what, what a Janny! <laughs> he does it for free. <laughs> so and and Jaden wins, <laughs> and like a really quirky thing happens. Uh, Tanya, her original, her form is actually that of a tiger. So then Bastion is uh -oh, like, I was fuck? in love with what? a tiger? Oh my god. Yo, bestiality? Yeah, Bro, yeah. he's a furry! More like it's, base. He's worse than a furry. Very he's a zoo strange. Like a beast. <laughs> Very strange. But. but he's an actual furry, guys. Look at him. Look at him be a furry. Uh, so then we get... his paw? Uh, yeah, no need, bro. Good. Uh, I don't know if you clarified this, but, like, what happens to the losers in these, like, you know, battles against the Shadow Riders? Do they, like, die? Or? Oh, well, no one... Uh, it's complicated. Main people, like, real people don't die in, like, our, like our guys. Like, Bash... Oh, Main fuck, characters I, I, don't die. I forgot to bring this up. When Camula won her duels, she turned the opponents into dolls. So she oh. had a Crowler doll and a Zane doll. But when, but did yeah. Jaden get them back? Okay. Yeah, 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 they, they came back. Um, okay. Yeah, and f for Tanya, she forced the men to work as slaves to build her Colosseum. So that was pretty funny. Hmm. And yeah, so the, f so, you know, we're three Shadow Riders down. Jaden has literally beaten all three of them. Right. Fourth Shadow Rider. It is actually a collective or group of people known as the Dark Scorpions. Now... Oh, they're... like the COD? Yes. Um, Chaz... Yeah, all, the, all Chaz these characters are like based on cards, kind they're... of, right? So there's a funny... I'll get to that. There's a funny like thing mm -hmm. where 
Chaz sort of does this like detective work and kind of narrows it down to like a group of people. And it was literally all of them. They're a group of people wow. and they just are the fourth Shadow Rider. Um, and they're the Dark Scorpions. There's like five of them, right? I think I think so. Yeah, because there's five uh, of those cards. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I've I've found a screenshot of them. It's not the greatest. Yeah, Chaz destroys them with his uh, you know, his newly completed, you know, Ojama deck. I don't remember I think this is the first case also of Ojama Kings summoning, but I could be wrong on that. <coughs> which is the fusion of all three Ojamas. Right. Raises paw. Yes, Jelly. So when when Chad or uh, Jude Judai uh, Jaden comes in and you know uh, does his janitorial work, does he get the keys back? The keys do not come back. Ah. Once, once. So so yeah yeah. Every time someone gets defeated, there's like this cool kind of like jewel looking thing that's like underground, and we see there's like seven slots. And each time someone gets defeated, they, like, glow. And, yeah, you can't get keys back or anything. Oh, it's just like My Little Pony. <laughs> Yo! Is that so? It's a That's cutie so. mark. Yeah. D -d -d Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's moving on. Skip, skip, skip. Okay. Fifth, fifth Shadow Rider, five of seven, is actually someone from the past named... What? Abydos the Third who was an, kind of an under-the-radar pharaoh whose dueling record, he, he went undefeated. That was his record. He never lost. So, obviously, this guy's pretty like, whoa, what the fuck? Jaden's gonna, like... One Racist common... paw? Yeah, yeah, Simon, real quick. How does he get from the past to modern day? <sighs> they <laughs> use a, like, golden arc and just descend from the sky. It's just, I don't know. I don't okay. Don't just, just, no, just, Jesus? Uh, just, just, fa just, just, just like going, ancient Simon. Egypt magic, basically. Oh wait, zombies came up and like forced them to like go to the, the certain area, and then they like descended down. Or I don't know. It was, it was, don't think so about it's it. Just like ancient, about it's it. just like ancient Egypt it. dark magic type stuff. Like don't from even, season this one. Is the guy. Yeah, dark, series dark, one. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. Next, I, next, 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 next. One, one quick thing. It, it has Kajoro's trifecta of like autism oh. lore of like. Yeah. Time travel, <laughs> memory loss, and people are other people or in, in other people. It, it's got the trend. Damn. Yes. Let's Damn. look at everything that makes Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Gi -Oh. I checked yeah. a couple of pictures of him in uh, in, in there. So you can look at it. Pretty base. You can look at his Egyptian face. So when we see, we, we actually get, so, sorry, we get a little bit of backstory, right, on this fifth Shadow Rider who has an undefeated, re you know, record. It turns out it's actually all a big meme. His servants were just letting him win. Because, you know, he's <laughs> like the pharaoh or something. So, wow. Jaden sh shits on him, right? Jaden just shits on him. <laughs> <laughs> Five Shadow Riders down. Sixth Shadow Rider. We... Remember Titan from, like, episode five or some shit? The guy who dueled Jaden in the abandoned dorm. You know, where, where we got that. revealed that uh, Alexis' brother was missing and whatnot. Jaden duels Titan. M remember, who, who, he ki who we thought he killed, right? He was, like, sent to the Shadow Realm or whatever. He gets rezzed as the sixth Shadow Rider. Thankfully, this time it is not Jaden who beats him. So, oh. Alexis goes and beats him. Wow. And, uh, that's pretty sick, you know. She kind of, like, has that sort of, like you know, redeeming female moment. Because the first time she, like, got <laughs> captured and was, like, you know, the damsel in distress or whatever. And, like, this time, she fights him directly and fucks him up. So that's sick. Now, there's just one Girl more. Girl power! Okay. Just one more Shadow Rider. And who could it be? The seventh Shadow Rider descends onto the island and fucks everyone remaining with keys which i believe oh. is alexis and chaz as crowler bastion zane already lost did these jaden... people know that they had these keys yeah um okay. jaden they they wear them they wear them it's running okay and then jaden has one 
And then Professor Banner has another one too, who is the professor of like the Red Dorm, you know. And you know, just like how Crowler is the professor, like the main professor of the Blue Dorm. Banner is a character we're more than familiar with. He's been in, in and out. He seemed a little mysterious though. He seemed a little quirky, like he had more going on. So, seventh Shadow Rider, right? He fucks up everyone. Jaden goes back to the abandoned dorm, but goes a different way into a lab where the same usual trope sort of happens. I don't remember if I brought this up earlier, but typically they learn about something in class and then it like <laughs> happens to them. So right. so the case with the the undefeated pharaoh, they were like learning about him in class and then they fought him. It's a little a little strange, right? This seventh Shadow Rider is called Amnail, who is like, clearly has some sort of, he, he's masked, he's robed, he has this really cool design if you look at pictures of him. Jaden duels him mm. and, you know, typical tropey stuff, you know, as the life points get lower, the mask cracks away. And who is it but <gasps> Professor Banner? Oh, it's no! Oh! Wait, so, fuck, I missed it. I missed it because of cat escapes. They were wondering this whole time where... Uh, Professor Banner went missing, right? They tried to find him and yeah, with Chaz and Jaden and crew. But then they got, like, split up. Chaz gets defeated by Amnail, and Alexis gets defeated by Amnail. They, there's a mark that appears, like that spirity, floaty mark that they follow to get to him. And uh, and Jaden's duel against Banner is pretty sick for a few reasons. Basically, it's that like, Banner says a line, it's, it's a really surprising edge case of the dub maybe being better than the sub. It's a really weird No thing. way, I don't believe it. I don't Where believe it. Skept sort of, high skepticism, high skepticism. I, I know, but there's sort of a, a an idea brought up that Mm. Banner was just controlling everything the whole time. He 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 rigged all of Jaden's duels, and he is actually a loser. Believe Real it or rigger not. over here. Whoa. So, and, and it's one of those things where it's like, it's kind of a mind fuck. Alchemy mind fuckery mm. on the mm. board because yeah. he uses alchemy based cards, and that's sort of what he was teaching as well. R Raise this point. Yes, so, Rita. What? So, what is the reality in the sub? What is the reality in the main like timeline? If it, in the dub it is him rigging the duels, like what's the? In the what's, sub, what's different there? It's very vague, and he's like, Jaden, I was helping you the whole time, like with all these, you know, I, I don't know, like I don't, because I I researched this specific section of the dialogue specifically because i wanted to know there, there is like a theme there's more of a theme of like he comments on how in the sub how alchemy is a lot like fusion you know you already sort of have a mastery over it um and in both versions i believe he asks Jaden to join him because banner so yeah what's up well so so is it so is it in the sub that it's meant to question whether he was good enough? And you're saying in the dub, it it's them saying, like explicitly stating that he wasn't good enough. Well, otherwise, or? it's he's mind fucking, like he's mind fucking. So him. so he's manipulating him intentionally. Yeah, and and okay, he's you know when he beats him, he's like, Jaden. I was lying back then. You really are a good, you know, a good duelist. And, and, uh, so. JK lol XD. <laughs> I mean, but, it, but he XD because online. of the case of the duel, like Banner is shitting on him at first, right? So, so it kind of does, you know, make you sort of think that that is like maybe the case. Like, yeah, Jaden's gotten pretty lucky. He seems to be winning like almost all of his duels. So that's one of those things where it's like, the dub maybe had like a better kind of line of questioning there. I don't know. I want Debatable, to. for sure. Debatable. Yeah, so Banner and Jaden, right? Like, they were the only ones left with keys, but Banner was actually evil. So it's basically just Jaden's key left, you know? But thankfully, he, he, he beats him. Funny moment after that. 
Chaz, they were, see, the students got trapped in Amnail's book. Because, remember, n no one really dies. They kind of just get sent somewhere else. Is kind of the big meme in yeah. the series, right? So, they're, like, trapped in his book, and Chaz realizes that he really likes Alexis. Oh. He steals all seven of the keys because they thought they oh. won, right? They killed all seven Shadow Riders. It should be over, right? He steals all seven keys and duels Alexis. Alexis beats him. So you might think to yourself, wait a minute. Someone with all seven keys just got beat. What could that mean? Mm. Um, what could that mean? Like, maybe the gates would, like, start opening or something? What a crazy oh, is that idea. what would happen? So, this is one of those, like, unfortunate things that kind of gets, like, ret sort of retconned. So, the Shadow Riders were not just seven. They were eight. They had a leader. Ugh. Who happened to be the superintendent of the school. Whoa! So, this guy, he, he fucking... The gates open. He flies over in a plane. He draw. He, there's a parachute, in like a, like a t giant test tube. Basically, kind of. He's it's a guy. It's an old man. He's in a big test tube. Yeah. Like a, like a like the fucking things yeah. they put in the robots in Ava. The plug. I haven't watched. Yeah. Okay. The plug. I'll get a better comparison <laughs> in a second though. So, what? Yeah, the, what? What? The. Uh, he comes down and says, the keys were all just a meme. The gates would oh. open when enough dual energy was gathered regardless. So it was okay. just a big, big fucking uh -huh. sla slap in the face to the whole, like, plot. Uh, but it's just like, oh, whatever. Uh, fucking, let's just kill you. Um... But yeah. Let's just kill wait, you. wait, wait, Paul, racist Paul. Yes, what please. episode is this? They changed the whole plot? Yes. It's like 40, <laughs> yeah. 47, 8, 9. And, um, oh, oh, by the way, seasons are roughly 52. Like, we're about to be done with season one, so. Okay. So, oh su my God. so superintendent <laughs> in a test tube, he actually sprouts uh, mech legs, and he's literally Porky from Mother, by the way. Oh, my God. That's literally, <laughs> like, his design. But it's, in, and it is a old man. Right. He duels Jaden because Jaden is, you know, technically he was the last one with a key, right? And he kind of has like a unique thing about him, you know, like he has like a lot of dual energy, you know, like spirit. energy. And it's a vague thing yeah. that, you know, kind of gets brought up um very like sparsely. The cards? Not precisely that, but in in season 1 it gets sparsely brought up. Hmm, maybe Jaden is a little special. There's something, you know, about him. You know, yeah, he, he's, special. Just, he's just so good. <laughs> like, he just wins. Stays winning. And so, like, that's why he duels, he duels Jaden. And there's more differences, like a lot more. I, I detail in my main doc of Dove versus Sub. But I'll just, like let whoever wants read the more detailed version but Jaden uh beats the guy for this reason though because banner although he like turned evil he wasn't like really a bad guy so he gives Jaden a card um in his book uh banner dropped a book when he died and that is sabatiel the philosopher's stone right what does that card do? What does that card do? It grants Jaden three wishes. <gasps> what? But what the what? fuck? That's like kind of what it's stated as, but it is a real card. What it actually does is, you need a winged Karibo in the graveyard, I believe. You can activate. You know, you can have three in your deck, right? When you activate it, you can add one, like fusion. And like a couple other thing, like card or whatever, to your hand, and you have to pay half your life points, so it has a cost. And most notably, Jaden, of course, uses it three times. He 
goes for fusion recovery, defusion, and miracle fusion. Mm. Which is sick. <laughs> uh, it's pretty Sabatiel, cool. after three uses, evolves, though, and becomes an equip card. Multiplies mm. your monster's attack points by the number of monsters on the other side of the field. Which, at the Ooh. time, happened to contain all the sacred beasts and two tokens. So it was literally... Mm. So Jaden Miracle fuses for Electrum, who is the combination of, like, four heroes, I believe. I'll look it up. Damn. It might be five. Fuck. I don't know. Um, uh, Elemental Hero Electrum. Yeah. It's Avion, Bersinatrix, Clay Man, and Bolt Man. The four main ones. Okay. I don't know why Sparkman is absent from that, but... Uh, yeah, neither do I. Yeah, hmm. so, uh... Jaden uses that crazy ability to just, like, win the duel, because he multiplies his attack points by five. So then he just... Yeah, which already, it already has a 2,900 base, yeah. Yeah, and he just fucks him up. And <laughs> the neat thing about the ending... Or, or this isn't the end, but it's, like, the end of, like, beating the bad guys, right? is there's sort of a there's still a tone of you know redemption and like lightheartedness right because what so kage maru that's the superintendent spider mech guy he wanted to use the power to like rule the world and it would grant him eternal like youth and when he oh. sucked up their power it changed him from an old man to like a super buff like guy Oh, yeah, I'm looking at him. He's, he's a hunk. And, uh, <laughs> you know, his sort of, like, greed, you know, was that, like, he wanted to be young again. And, like, he was so weak and whatnot. And after Jaden beats him, he, like, encourages him to get up on his own. Like, using his own power. And, uh, I think that's pretty neat. Yeah. You know? But season one doesn't end there. That's not the end of season one. The last episodes of season one are also one of my favorite, too. The graduation duel. It's Rise time. from your grave. Okay, let's wrap up season one. Does anyone have any questions about what's happened so yeah. far? Ooh, oh, ooh, besides oh, all the yes. So I, uh, when Chaz goes to the, the other academy, he like leaves the first academy, right? Uh, yes. So and and so he leaves the academy and. Uh, I, from what I know, he, like, so he finds that masked dude. Who was that masked dude, and how did the masked dude find him? Okay, so, the masked guy who gave him Ojama Yellow, we, we find out later. Do you guys remember the guy who Chaz helped to get into North Academy by giving him a card? Oh! Yeah, oh! yeah. It is the same guy. Mm. But that mm. guy is also the headmaster of the academy. Oh! <laughs> what? That makes, no makes, that, that makes no sense. That makes zero sense. That makes perfect sense. Um, but how did he have trouble getting into the academy on his own? It was, it was a, a meme. It was a meme. He was, it was a trick. Uh, it was literally it was a meme. To test well, Chaz, it was, it was you know? Yeah, it was, a, it was to That's test his, his, his element so, of generosity. Yes. You could say the... The leader of the the other cat, the or the 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 head of the other. Spit academy, it out. Is is perhaps is is he perhaps a gamer? <laughs> Would you say? Would you? Right. Is he, is he what? <laughs> is he a gamer? He plays video games. <laughs> All that for that shitty joke. Kill yourself, Rito. You fucking demerit. Give him a demerit right fucking now. Oh, Rito, you kind of you kinda made that worse than it needed. Rito, you're you're on thin ice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you were you were vaping in school. Now, so, okay, so, so I'm so, drinking. Well, I mean, if I've already got a demerit. Yeah, he already had one. Wait, so. spa. Yes, spa. Yes, yes. Look at him go. Uh, okay. Memes aside, why the fuck did he even give him the Ojamayalo to begin with? To fuck with him. Meme. When he had the he didn't, have the he didn't have the other two, right? It was just a card that he had, and Chaz was able to see it, so he, he knew that, like, there was a connection there, so he just gave him the card. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Anything else? Any other season one? Raises Ra paw. Raises paw? Kajoro. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, Kajoro. Oh, yeah, I have 
the most important question. Where's Blue Eyes Red White Dragon? <laughs> Blue Eyes Red White Dragon. Uh okay. Um <laughs> Blue Eyes, huh? We 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 see him. Uh I think episode 34, right? It was uh him battling Kaiba Man. So the oh, yeah. Blue Eyes comes up. Shout out my boy Seto. Uh raise his paw. Simon. Um so all of the seven like dark stalkers or whatever. Shadow um, riders, uh, yes. They're they're all like based <laughs> off of like <laughs> dark, no dark stalkers. Uh, aren't they all like all based off like cards? Like like they because there's the Amazonist lady. There's the Amazonist card string. There's the five scorpion guys. There's uh yeah. So no. he, yeah, he, here's the meme. Yeah. All of the shadow. Well, not all. Almost all of the shadow riders right. were card spirits brought to life and given oh. these things called shadow charms not millennium items um oh that's what that bitch's effects. necklace is that's what the bitch's necklace is yeah so um okay yeah the the necklace the glove the book the fucking what's the egyptian thing called the the, the cock ring the, cro the cross the onk. <laughs> it's an onk. onk yeah the onk. Yep. Yeah, the uh, fucking Abydos, I think, maybe had that. Okay. Any other season Raises one? Pa. Okay, no Yes, please is pop. Continuing with why didn't he just tear the cars? Quick question. <laughs> uh, why don't he just grab the keys, throw them into the ocean? No, 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 remember. They didn't even need the keys. Superintendent man came down and said, the keys were a meme. It'll oh my god! <laughs> Sean, are you saying that the whole Please plot of season anything. one is just a meme? Uh, I, <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it's a meme. Yeah, like, <laughs> he comes down, he's just like, the keys don't actually do anything. Fuck your keys, bitch. <laughs> okay, any other season one? I mean, I think I covered everything there, so is there any um, season one? If no one else has anything, raise his paw. Simon. Uh, chaz it up. Please continue. <laughs> yeah, chaz it up, bro. Uh, chaz it up. Just it up. Just, just it up. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. And remember, this is um, I give I give every season oh, cool. an alliterative kind of headline. Yeah. No, 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 no. Sean, what? Sean, Sean, Sean. What? No, Nibra. You forgot what the, the final fuck, three episodes. You didn't talk about them. Oh shit! You're right. <laughs> fuck. Okay. What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? fuck? <laughs> Let's no, hear it. no, no, three actually. Right, right, because that's where I stopped. Um. In between, like, the really important episodes, Chumley huh. duels Crowler he, uh, to be accepted into Industrial Illusions. Mm. Oh, the graduation, right. Yeah. And Chumley loses. But, uh. but Crowler lets him go anyway. Oh. So that's pretty cool. So Chumley awesome. goes to become a car designer. Wow. So. Good for him. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and then the last two episodes are, are what's called the graduation <laughs> duel scene, which is Zane versus Jaden 2. Mm. So that's Let's pretty go. sick. And this is a duel that's pretty awesome. And, you know, you can find it. I don't know if you guys remember, I did this thing where I made a video every day for a month. And in the oh, yeah, second we video, yeah, we <laughs> Okay, and in the second video, is uh, it's kind of like a little montage thing that includes the graduation duel. So, to uh, to to show Jaden's growth, right? Remember back in episode eight, Jaden got his shit rocked by Zayn, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. This time around, the duel happens, and it is a draw. And I think Whoa. that is good. Ooh. You know, it kind of it shows the growth and all that good stuff. And Zane graduates. He is growth. Bye, wow. Zane. He was a third year student. And okay. How do you how do you now, tie in Yu-Gi-Oh? That goes against everything I know about that game. Okay, this is like the last and thing before we move on. It. Well, yeah. No, no well, tra a trap gets played where both players take damage equal to thing. And, oh, and it's know. not one of them first or second. Yes. I see. Okay. Okay. That's a draw, Simon. Now yeah. we're done. Next with, we're done with season one, right? Okay. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, what? No, 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 no,
is this the duel where Jaden gets depressed and he plans for the battle against Zayn? Yes. I I mean, I wasn't really, like, gonna go into more detail, but uh, Jaden, like, shows a little bit of, like, character, like, development, right? Where he, you know, up until now, we've known him as this, like, sort of kind of go-with-the-flow kind of guy. But, but we notice he's, like, acting different in this duel, right? He's actually, like, planning for Zane's strategies and thinking ahead and just kind of, like, not being himself. And, uh... That that's kind of the, the, the bit is to like sort of get back, uh, you know, sort of what he kind of lost. Um, that's kind of a big <laughs> theme in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, <laughs> or all of, all of this series at least. But uh, yes, that is what happens. Okay, no need, bro. Are you done? Are you done, huh? Are you done? <laughs> you never. No need, bro. I okay. never, I never be done. What's hey, a Yu-Gi-Oh, Sean? Okay, I got my eyes. That's a five-year-old. No need, bro. That is a demerit. You what? did not raise paw. Come on, man. Okay, it raises emergency paw. Please forgive. You still have a demerit, but what? We're gonna kill you in real life, no need, Uh, In that specific duel, uh, remember, uh, it's Saki, not Hassas or whatever. In that duel, when he's like, you know, fighting fucking Zane, he's like, oh my god, I can't win. And everyone around him is like, uh, bro, cringe. You gotta, like, be chill. So oh. I don't, I think it's like, his best friend throws him a bottle of fucking alcohol. Uh, fucking Jaden just takes a pause from the duel. You mean no, hot sauce? No, no, no. Down. It... No. Okay, no need. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know what wacky version you're watching. Yeah, but, what kind um... of fucking fanfic you're reading? <laughs> yeah, I'm no, no, no Sean... he, he is true in an aspect, though. Um, yes, Eliezer. Sean raises dick. Can we kick no Nibra? Yes. So, or at the uh, very least, give him another demerit. So yeah, so Jaden, like, um, in the, in like this second episode, I believe, of the you know, a lot of these duels are like multi-part sometimes if they're like important. Yeah. Uh, this is an important one. So Jaden, like, you know, he's not acting himself. Blah blah blah. He's hungry, right? He's hungry. So he needs food, and uh -huh. he gets the cafeteria lady to make him food. In the middle of the duel, he takes a break. And that sort of, like, <laughs> reinvigorates him to, to, you know, be himself and, you know, do what he does and that kind of thing. Wow! So, character pretty... development! <laughs> that's yeah. more like a regression. I mean, I mean it, it, is a, it is a circle, you know, so... Mom! Make me some chocolate milk and put it in my Halo slushy cup this time. You don't want to have to clean up another mess. Huh? Yes, Rita. Uh huh. <laughs> Season two. Yes, Rita. God yes, it. yes. Spent way too long on that. Season two. Tagline: Courageous, cult crushing crusade. Oh. We're going on a oh. crusade, boys. Yeah. 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 Berserk. Killing brown people. <laughs> yes. Se season two is a little quirky. As you can see, circled here, I wrote. Fuck destiny, because fuck destiny, am I right? <laughs> fuck destiny. Yeah, fuck destiny. Anyways, see. Anyways. <laughs> no, no, no explanation, right, yeah. Let, let, let's get a move on here. S season two, there's like significantly <laughs> less content in reality because they, they, had a, they had a movie plot. Oh. That was ultimately scrapped and just made essentially into the second season. So let's just get going. Cyrus gets promoted to raw yellow after beating an obelisk. Wow. Very sick. He changes his uniform. Jaden duels a pro, who we don't know at the time is just holding back and he's using a deck that is made of cards that he just made that day. And wow. Jaden beats him, but the pro notes that he he doesn't feel anything special about Jaden. That person we get revealed is Aster Phoenix. Oh, this dude. And here's why Aster Phoenix is No Need Bruh's favorite character because he's literally Batman. <laughs> and I'm not even joking. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that later. But uh, yeah, Chaz gets another duel where 
you know, after his shenanigans, after leaving the island, after coming back, he's back in Slifer. So he gets in, you know, an option to be promoted back into Obelisk. And he wins, but he denies... He doesn't actually do it. Which is interesting, too. And that's, like, kind of, you know, another, like, kind of character development moment where it's, like, Chaz, who's been built up as, like, this pompous rich kid who, like, you know, loves the idea of status, like, doesn't want to go back to Obelisk. Like, oh, that's a little strange, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Zane. He graduated, but we're still following his story. His story has not ended. Zane went on a big winning streak in the pros, funnily enough. But then it huh. all comes crumbling down, let's just say. <gasps> no. When he duels none other than Aster Phoenix. Oh my god. Who is revealed to be using his true deck, air quotes, because it's just elemental heroes. That's a little strange. That's a little quirky. Who, who do huh. we know that uses elemental heroes? Hmm. I don't know. Batman. Yeah, it, it, I don't like, know anyone who'd ever use elemental heroes. I know, right? And uh, fucking Aster. Oh wait, is Jaden? It, it's yes? Jaden Yuki Ju Judai Moto. It's him. That's who he does. That he's copying him. No. <sighs> nah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It's just lol 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 lol. It's just because it's, it's so fucking like. <laughs> yes, Sean? So, it's literal, like, I wrote it up here. It's KH, like, light versus darkness meme. Uh, but, but they take a. They, they you do mean Star Wars? Spin it. They do spin it a little bit. Where the darkness like is actually the good. Like, the, the darkness <gasps> is good in, the, in this one. What? So the, the the villain has based capabilities here. We have so we have a based equipped villain. The villain. I'll I'll just get into it. Right, Aster has yes. a manager. Aster Phoenix has a manager who he answers to, named Sartorius. Now, if you're kind of oh. familiar, he's the tarot card guy, right? So he can literally predict the future. That's his meme, oh. right? He says. <laughs> The, the, the amount of times that he says destiny and light and darkness is literally so insane. Yeah. It's, it's nigh comparable to Kingdom Hearts, which is why I wrote the comparison up there. He's like, it's your destiny. You know, it was your destiny to lose. You know, destiny is on my side. I can see the future, blah, blah, blah. Oh, fuck That's kind yeah, of his this bit. Guy, he looks like a, he looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh villain. And he does also, like, use tarot cards in, like, an interesting way, because that is also his deck. It's the Arcana uh -huh. Force, the Arcana Force archetype. There's just one problem, though. So, after Aster defeated Zane, he comes to Duel Academy and challenges Jaden. This is where we see Jaden lose for his third and what essentially is final time wow. with the rest of the show. Wow. So, <laughs> like early season figure, two. <laughs> as you can figure, he goes sicko mode, like here yeah. down. Yeah. So, pretty based. So, Jaden loses to Aster, right? And something weird happens. Jaden can no longer see his cards, they appear blank. Oh. So, this is where Jaden. He goes through a new development again of kind of reworking his deck, you know, getting new cards, right? And because he felt he was dueling Bastion one day and he felt like his deck had more potential, you know, like his dueling skills are sharp, but his deck could be better. Yeah. It's like, it's like red eyes has, has potential. Jaden becomes lost at sea. After oh. he loses to Aster, he kind of like, He's just like, what's the point of being here? I can't see my cards. Bye. See you later. Oh, yeah. He's gonna hey, go hey, find get... the One Piece. St strap in. <laughs> strap in, okay? I hope you're all ready for this. He uh -huh. gets lost okay, at I'm sea. Listening. He gets hit by a meteor, transferred uh, to another planet to duel what? What? and acquire new cards, designs that he made when he was a kid that won a uh, Kaiba what? Corporation contest. 
What the fuck? Oh. Wait, what? Oh. It's a really confusing <laughs> series of events. Sh Sean, can you Where repeat that again, ball? please? Gets yeah, please lost do. at sea, gets hit by uh. like red meteor, transferred to another planet to duel, mm. and acquires new cards, designs he made when he was a kid that won a Kaiba Corporation contest. What space Where's alien does he duel? Raises pool. Yes, Sito. Neos? My dude, Neos? Question yes. mark? Ellen? So, mm -hmm. yes. Yay. So, Yay. as you can see here, I have Neos underlined with parentheses Spatians. Because the archetype yeah. is the Neo Spatians. They're kind of like his new kind of OP heroes. What's neat about them is they also match. The sort of idea that each hero like sort of matches an attribute. Where uh, Aqua Dolphin, that's one. He's water. Flare Scarab, that's fire. S similarly to the elemental heroes, right? It's in the name. Yeah. So, and, and remember, these are cards that he designed too, which is interesting. Jaden can see these cards. Uh, they start off as his, his kitty drawings. But then, like, some bubbly effects, some weird stuff happens, and then boom, it's like an actual card. Which he can see and use. He uses it to defeat this, like, robo-alien weird thing. And it's sort of a duel to sort of, like, get his confidence back. Because clearly, you know, he was so shaken after, like, that duel with Aster, he can't see his cards and whatnot. That was sort of the, the bit there. So, Zane, right? Remember, he lost to Aster, and everything went crumbling down here. He starts to do underground dueling. Ugh. After his pro career went down the drain after the Aster loss, donning a new look and attitude, then regaining his pro status in a very sinister manner. He, instead of the, the white obelisk kind of get up, he has this black getup now, and it's fucking sick. Okay. But he require he acquires a new kink along the way, which is he likes to get shocked while dueling uh, when he takes uh, life point damage. Uh, uh, oh yeah, electro <laughs> shock baby. So Jaden comes back with his new cards to rematch Aster and this time defeat him, which wow. is sick. He, Good job. He redeems himself, you know, from that loss, and at the same time, he's also protecting the de the destruction of the red dorm. So I forgot to mention this, but Shepard is missing, uh, and there's another new um, kind of head teacher, and like he wants to like destroy the red dorm. Right. That's his oh. kind of motif, really. Oh. So Jaden def defends the dorm. Uh, they, they want the school to be looked at in a better way because they have better students. I, I don't know. But yeah, but funnily enough. That, that's... Yes, Cecil? What's up? That's so dumb. That's still good students. They're just the worst No, they're the slackers. That's they're slackers. No, if you, slackers. if you kill the worst students, then your school just is good. Yeah, school school eugenics. Yeah, that, that's yeah. kind of... Uh, school based. eugenics. Makes sense. Makes that's sense. how it works. Yeah. School eugenics. Okay, I've got it. I understand. Yeah, they do that back in India. Funnily enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, same, bro, same. They call it holo Holocaust, I don't know why. <laughs> so, funnily enough, who it's other than Crowler actually defends the Red Dorm and duels the other new teacher, who, who by the way, is basically Napoleon. That's, like, oh. this guy. Um, okay. <laughs> Manlet. He is, like, <laughs> that big. Yeah, so, after that, Sartorius starts to make some moves behind the scenes. We know he's Aster's manager, but like clearly, like he's like a force, right, to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. He duels Chaz and beats him, <gasps> and this kind of spurs the creation of what we know as the Society of Light, mm. and that's sort of oh this... yeah, I know what they're about. <laughs> that's the uh, the cult part in here of the cult crushing crusade, and um. Yeah, basically, Society of Light is brainwashed to think, like, light is 
praise the light, you know, destiny, blah, blah, blah. White people in the superior race, yep. Yeah, yeah, all the stuff we all know. (laughs) Racially cult shit. And there's a a funky thing that goes on where society white members (laughs) can duel students... And if they, if the Society of Light member wins, they brainwash people. It's like a, it's like an infection, right? Like they just uh, keep brainwashing each other, and they become they literally take over the blue dorm. They paint the dorm white because they whoa. they like believe whoa. that like light slash white is like the ultimate color, I guess. Or <laughs> like, kind of kind of kind of, <laughs> kind of wacky. White kind of power wacky. is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, I was about that's to say. Them. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, sounds right. Sartorius, um, whenever we see him, there's always kind of like more going on with his tarot cards, and they kind of like relate to the theme and stuff. He draws strength, and he figures to go duel a new character introduced in season two, Hasselberry. Mm. Hasselberry is a new guy from you know from season two, and he's like this like you know tough military guy who uses dinosaurs. He's a dinosaur guy. Oh yeah, him! I love him! Raise his paw. Yes, no need bro. That is my actual favorite character. <laughs> he's got the dreads, he's got the bandana. Oh yeah. He's, uh... he's kinda OP. Yeah, so... <laughs> he's kinda... Of... Yes. <laughs> What's up? Uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna see. You're gonna get into it. Shall yeah. I? It's that. it's literally on the same bullet point. Don't even worry. Sartorius draws strength, right? And so he figures to go duel Hasselberry because he like represents kind of. He's really buff, right? He's a military guy. So I see. <laughs> he duels Sartorius and loses. So we think, oh, he's gonna get brainwashed, right? Like he's fucked. No. Hasselberry is not brainwashed because of Dino DNA. <laughs> No one can resist the power of the light. No one. I've had what they call Dino DNA. The doctor says it makes me stronger than your average Joe. He's got to be making this up. No, I saw it in a cartoon once. Jaden, this is real life here. Oh, oh yes! of course. Dino DNA. <laughs> because when he was uh, doing a, a dig, an excavation, he broke his leg and. When he got to, like, really bad, I guess, and then when he got to the hospital, they are like, holy shit, this is bad. We can't, we can't even fix this. Like, and then they're like, oh shit, let's just stick a dinosaur bone, like, he found in there. <laughs> and that, wow. like, he's good to go. He, and he's a dino man. Dino DNA, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. Wow. Yes! It's in there. Sean, that's not realistic. That's good. <laughs> Shut up, at least, huh? Wait, raise his paw up. Is yes, Dino be. DNA is Dino DNA the nano machines of the Yu-Gi-Oh theory? <laughs> sure, sure. No. Dino DNA. Sorry. Wait, wait, raise his yeah. paw. Quick tangent. Yes, Eliezer. If he, he has Dino DNA, no, right? Yes. If he fucks a dinosaur, will it be considered just sex or so feeling? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, another yes. question. Quick, quick. So so they they analyzed his DNA and it and it wasn't DNA. It wasn't US. <laughs> it wasn't US, but it was it was Dino DNA. It was Dino yeah. and Dino. Yeah, Dino DNA. It was D DNA kind of mixed with his. So so oh, it's oh. a it's a tangible change. You you see his his normal eyes become these like reptilian like. Yellow, like straight pupil, like straight line pupils. Yo, animals. Um, are you, are you sure? Sh- mm, are you sure he just wasn't like a reptile, like one of those those people uh, who mix in with the human beings? Are you sure? No. Yeah. Wasn't like a. Maybe he wasn't a Rita, he lizard. Isn't are you sure he wasn't what Alex Jones warned us about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he, be- he becomes one of them. We caught one of them on video once. Yes, we did. Yeah. Uh, any. Any questions no, up until now? Like, really quick. Is there anyone, yeah. any questions? Yes, Cito? I have an important question. What's his accent again? It's been so long. I know he has one. Hassle, Hasselberry is, like, the tough uh, kind of guy. Like, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we won. Um, 
Commissioner Gordon Commissioner is that Gordon, you? What did he mean by that? Good question. We'll, we'll see if we interview him or not. <laughs> uh, we'll find out. That's like the majority of like the first arc of season two. Right. Arc two is what I mentioned before, which is everyone goes on a field trip. Jaden duels someone to decide where to go, and they go to Domino City. A name very Yo, I know, I know that! I know that! And this is the bit that I was talking to you guys about, where it was, the, it was a movie plot uh, cut uh, that was scrapped, you know, and then put into this season specifically. Right, right. The main thing here is uh, Jaden and Aster wind up teaming up in a duel. Which is pretty interesting. Wow. They duel Sartorius's sister, of all people. Oh. They get wow. stuck in uh, Kaiba Land, in like the VR area, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where that goes down. Oh, fuck. Okay. Okay. We on track. Season <laughs> two, we're gonna fucking speed run this shit, because it's. The yes. Time. Field trip. You're fighting his sister. Yeah, they were fighting his sister. A field trip arc. There's there's kind yeah. of a lot of filler. They fight, like, dudes, like, minions of the sister, but they're cards again, and it's really oh. weird and, and stuff. But the point is, Jaden and Aster team up to fight the sister who clones herself. Because remember, they are in the VR scape of right. Kybalan. And uh, just because... They kidnapped Hassleberry and Cyrus, who they turned into a dinosaur and a car while in there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> just kind of kind of quirky, you know. Ju it's just a Yu-Gi-Oh things. You know? Hashtag yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh things. So there's kind of a debate going on in the middle of the duel where they're kind of wondering who the chosen one is, but it's not. It's it's the chosen one to defeat Sartorius, really, or or, but really it's to save Sartorius. But we'll we'll get to that kind of later. Mm. And uh, Jaden deals the final blow. A after this, they come back after all that bullshit, which is like to be fair, quite a lot of episodes that honestly are pretty skippable. But uh, yeah, so Bastion, remember Bastion? From he yeah. hasn't done like anything from like. And, and, he and changed his clothes. Yeah, kind of, kind of, but like, remember, he hasn't done anything since like the middle of season one or something. Hmm. And like, they they make self-referential jokes in the show. How like, oh, Bastion's here. Haven't haven't seen you in a while. Like, yeah. They they literally cuck him on screen. Wow. Constantly, he, he shows up. For, for kind of an important kind of mini arc where he's like wait a minute these society of light guys Chaz is in there Chaz even got Alexis to go in there they, they seem cool you know I want to be in the society of light and Bastion runs up and he's like let me in bro oh. he has to duel right if he wins he gets in if he loses he doesn't but he gets put into this pickle where... Rick? Yes, pickle <laughs> Rick. Where... I'm a pickle! Where if he, if he wins, he actually... It's like a mind trick where, like, if he wins, he actually won't get accepted. But if, but if he lose, But if he, like, willing... If he willingly gives up, he will get in. And because, you know, a loss, uh, you know, stimulates, like... I guess, like, the ability for them to be brainwashed or something. I don't know. It's really fucking confusing, but... He gets put into a pickle, and despite having the means <laughs> to win, decides not to. He wants to be with the cool club. He wants to be with the cool kids in the, in the society of life. So, like, for, for, like, one episode, he's, like, actually kind of a threat. It's like, whoa. Bastion's in there now? Like, he, he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, Jaden or whoever, you know? But some quirky stuff happens later with him. Past that, Chancellor Shepard. He's been missing this whole time. What, what the fuck? Your school is getting brainwashed, bro. What are you doing? You're, you're a horrible principal. 
Like, what the fuck? He comes back in an interesting way. He is revealed to be the old master of the cyber art. Now, what that oh. means is, you know, it's, it's that archetype. He was like a master of the archetype. And he defends a dojo from Zane, who has come back from the depths of hell with, with this new, you know, bravado and this new outfit and everything. Like, he has come to take what he knows is there, which is the dark version of his cyber deck. He has the light version. Zane beats Shepard to get the deck. It is a new, you know, a new cool deck with cyber dark dragons. It's pretty sick. Oh, I know that. I know that. Doing, uh, after these events occur, Shepard comes back and announces what is called the Gen X Tournament. Uh -huh. Kind of a callback, really, to what the name of the show really was. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty sick. So this is a tournament where everyone gets a medal. If you and you duel each other. If you win, you get the other person's medal. Last person with the medals wins. So basically just like duels king. Sure. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll trust your judgment on that. So in the, in this tournament, in this tournament someone steals a copy of the Winged Dragon of Ra. Ah. Jaden duels him and wins. And he kind of redeems the guy who stole it because he he was really so the guy who stole the stole copy of raw he was really jealous that chum lee this like new fucking kid on the block his designs yeah. were all getting picked for cards but uh, this guy's wasn't right so this dude steals a copy of raw so he can like have power i guess and he designed a card to to take control of the egyptian god you know which is interesting. Yeah. So Jaden duels him and wins, but but an interesting thing happens because he takes over the control of Ra without using the card that the guy, you know, designed to do so. And if I'm not mistaken, in, in, in DM, it's kind of a thing that, like, only certain people can, like, read its text or something and or control yes. it, right, yeah. Simon? Yeah. So, uh -huh. so it's kind of strange how Jaden can do that. Yeah, that's inter that that's yeah. And actually interesting to me. And after the duel concludes, Pegasus kind of consoles the guy and and, and kind of reflects on his own arc of like, you know, you shouldn't be so greedy, man. Like power like leads to corruption or whatever. And he like shows him the like his eye. So, that's pretty sick. Can I just say um yes. raise his paw. Yes. Uh, they're pussies for not killing off Pegasus at the end of Duel's Kingdom. They should have literally just had him been dead. Anyway, that's my that's my that's Maybe. my only. <laughs> no, uh, it, it, that's the yeah. that's the only bit of Yu-Gi-Oh complaint that I will do this entire time. I promise. Okay, that's all. Raise his paw. Yes, no. Libra. It's talking about like legendary cards and stuff. What happened to the sacred beast? Did they just like get put back in? Did they get nuked? Like, what did he do with them again? So, the Sacred Beasts... Okay, so, do you guys remember how I described that, that jewel thing that the keys were supposed to, like, go into and they glowed, but then that didn't matter? So, yeah. so... So... We don't see it until down here, a little ways, but... The box that the cards came in was just kind of chucked back in that room. And okay. just left there for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's strange. It's very it's very strange. It okay. takes a till yeah, season two is just such a left turn and like whatever. Um, not worried about it. But after that duel follows what is definitely considered one of the one of the better or one of the best duels in the series. Which is Jaden versus Society of Light possessed Chaz. Oh wow. Because what we see is this you know, Chaz being controlled yet again. You know, it's it's kind of an, uh, an unfortunate fate. And and he's wearing this white getup as opposed to his black getup that he always had uh, after yeah. the North Academy stuff. He always wore black. That was kind of his thing. Kind of like his hair. 
Chaz has been in this society for, you know, like 30 episodes almost. And, and the brainwashing finally starts to wear off a little. He's like, what am I even doing here? Hmm. And like, don't I like really like the color black? Like, why am I even white? <laughs> <laughs> and he literally sta- he states, once Jaden duels him, and, you know, uh, you know, what you think happens, he gets unbrainwashed. He's like, I am no longer one of the shining white people! And he fucking rips, fucking rips his fucking white blazer off. And it's sick. Wow. But, but, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but before that, Chaz seems to be using a new deck. It's not his Ojamas anymore. It was a deck given to him by Sartorius. The deal here is that, you know, he threw his Ojama cards away. Like, that's really strange. Jaden goes on a, you know, a little mini quest to retrieve the Ojamas, and he hears them um, in the well. Remember the well from season one oh, where everyone's, yeah. like, shitty cards went? Whoa. They just happened to go down there. So Jaden huh. scraps together Chaz's old deck and uses it to duel against Chaz in a fucking yes. match. Yes. And it's Kino. Yeah. The, the way that it ends and everything, too, it, it's just so cool. So, like, Chaz is, like, really frustrated. And, you know, he's clearly on tilt. The brainwashing is wearing off a little bit. And it's just, it's a, it's a great duel that kind of, kind of encapsulates, like, his arc up until now. And, like, you know, Jaden kind of, like, helping him out again, basically. And one of the reasons that he switches back, because he actually switches back in the middle of the duel, as opposed to at the end. He, he takes off the white blazer, puts his black back on, and <laughs> he just know, he comments, right? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Jaden brought it there. Jaden brought it there for him. If oh, he ever wanted amazing. to put it back on. <laughs> wow. So, so Chaz remembers something. With his spiffy white uniform, he he can't he can't rub the stains away anymore. They, they show up on, on his shirt, you know, on his new blazer, on his pure white blazer, you know. And he's just sick and tired of that. And and after his duel with Jaden, being frustrated, brainwashing, wearing off, all this other shit, he 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 finally you know, finally breaks and puts his black based black blazer back on. You know, he can finally. Rub away the soy sauce stains, and they won't, you know, leave an obvious uh, mark. The soy. And, and this is one of those, the cringiness is transcended into, like, actually being kind of based and funny. Yeah. And it's great. So, yeah, that's one of the cooler duels in the series, really. Um, I do remember uh, that you? duel. I, yes, I vividly remember the Society of Life. Uh, race yes, Shinny. Uh, Kajora's sleeping in class. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh. You idiot. I'm just very still. Look what you I'm, 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 just resting, I'm just resting my eyes. <laughs> You're like, oh. yeah, no, no, <laughs> hey, no, we, for we real. Like, I've it. never worn sunglasses this long. It kind of hurts. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to speed it up here. We're, we're almost, I, I don't know if you guys can see, but this, this is the rest of season two. I like how Kajora gets cold out, but I'm fine. I'm fine. I love how Shinny's the class snitch. <laughs> Literally, like... He, yeah, of course yeah, he is. Of course he fucking is. narc. He's snitch on Rido, yeah, snitch on Kajoro. All right. We're gonna give you a wedgie settle, after yeah, I'm not the one to demerit, okay, settle right. down. Settle down. To, to, to wrap this up... Yeah, fucking teacher's Chaz pet never does, gets demerit. <laughs> <laughs> what Chaz does in this duel is interesting, too. Because he literally suicides himself in order to destroy the monsters uh, in the new deck that Sartorius gave him, in order to wow. get his Ojama back, he literally suicides himself. So it's pretty sick. Damn. And give me back my goblin men. And yeah, I mean, he you know he, he suicide anyone else. Loud and proud to all the spectators that you know finally, like wearing black was so cool as it hid the yeah. stains. You know, like that was just so based. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a lazy asshole! And Honestly. Chaz really is the best character in GX. He he is he is one of the, one of the Chaz better one of the better boys, Pro- probably the best. Um, definitely relatable like a relatable arc. So, the the tournament continues with that duel not counting. Okay, 
Because Chaz is brainwashed. So Jaden gave him the benefit of the doubt and didn't take his medal. Right. So the next thing that happens is that Atticus, Alexis's brother, duels Zane, who showed up to the island for the tournament. Atticus, however, he puts the mask back on, so to speak, and, you know, dons the, uh, the Night Shroud moniker again, as it is a card that he, like, just has that, you know, it might take him over. You know, that was kind of yeah. the case in Season 1, when he was a, a, a Shadow Rider. Zane wins with his new Cyber Darks, who we see now is a much different Zane than before, who, like, respected his deck and, like, respected his opponent. But we see him, like, play a trap. It's called Power Wall. You, th- you ban it. I think, I think it's banish a number of cards to reduce damage. And he takes them out of his deck and literally throws them in the air to, like, create a wall to block damage. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting. So Zane wins that because he, you know, because he has like a new deck, so it's like it kind of gets like, you know, shown off and he wins. Next, uh, Crowler and Bonaparte, because of the, sh- but because of their shitty ass managing of the school, right, and letting this society of light pop up and these fucking white students, these society. white liberals, bro. Fucking white <laughs> people, man. Fucking white they, white are fired. The fuck? they are fired. They are fired for white supremacy. That's right. They're fired. And excellent. By who? The, pr- the principal. By cancel culture. Shepard. Um, <laughs> By cancel culture. <laughs> that too, that too. But yeah, they, they actually do a... What they, what they want is like a two-on-one versus Pegasus to get a job oh. at his company because they've been... Wow. So. Pegasus wins and denies them the job offer too, so he seems like mean... But but he then you know he puts in a good word for them to actually be able to like come back, oh. um, or 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 like Shepard was just like mad that day, so like he just said like oh you're fired or whatever, but like he didn't like really mean it I guess. So yeah, there, there he's are a like I guess you are my little even oh, even yes. if he's not evil anymore, Pegasus is still a manipulative cunt. Um, uh, as to what Rito said, like. It's not that there's multiple interpretations. It's that there there was a buildup of events. So like, Shepard okay. was mad that the society of light stuff was happening, and then like they came like both of them, Bonaparte and Crowler came in arguing, and like he was like, "What the fuck?" And he you know, just told him get to get out. Um, so they kind of thought that meant fired, but I guess you know they kind of just hash things out. Yeah. So the tournament continues, but. Jaden now duels Alexis, who, as we now know, is also in the Society of Light. She lost to Chaz earlier, who beat her. And as we know, when a Society of Light member wins, the opponent gets brainwashed, right? So now Jaden, who just saved Chaz, has to save Alexis now. Oh my god! also using a new deck. Instead of her... She has, like, dancing... Kind of rich, ritual ladies, um, yeah, ba- basically ballerinas, tutus, whatever. Uh, that's kind of her her thing, and, and ritual summoning, right? And yeah. strange. This is another case, just like Chaz. Strangely, she's not using her normal deck. She's using this deck of like ice, basically, ice cards and stuff, uh, ice dragon and an ice witch and all this stuff. So, Jaden. Remember, Jaden, he's got, like, a pretty busted deck, right? He's got the Neo Spatian. Yeah. He uses Flare Neos, you know, to uh, to beat her, because it's fire. Obviously, fire melts the icy heart. <laughs> it's it like Pokemon. The icy heart. It's like Pokemon logic. Yes, indeed. Yeah, like, attributes are, like, a big theme, you know, elemental heroes, etc., etc. Yeah. Et and uh, attributes get kind of abused later on with some funky bullshit, but we'll we'll get there when we get there. Bastion, we finally come back to Bastion, right? Who who we remember gave himself up to the society, but someone comes and kind of gets Bastion to go, 
to, to go out of the society. And because Bastion really is a science nerdy math guy at heart, what we see is a guy known as Dr. Eisenstein. Mm. Oh no! Oh my god! Oh, my god. <laughs> Duel against Jaden. And uh, Jaden does beat him. But Bastion is so inspired by like the guy's dedication to science that he like he 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 literally strips off his white uniform again, literally down to just his like briefs or whatever, in some some funny sequences, and he wants to like go commit to being a science guy again. He's like, "Fuck this society, bro. <sighs> we live in it." Yeah, yeah man, okay. we do live in it. <laughs> So, I mean, so this Dr. The... Eisenstein guy, yeah. he has a pretty cool mustache. Yeah, obviously he, he's based, you know, on on Einstein and whatnot. And he has a I, I don't unified brag, but... dual theory. It's pretty fun. What's up? Rito? Okay. Rito? Rito? Yeah. What? Rito! You were, you no. were saying yeah. something. No, no, I, I said, I, you said cool mustache, and I, don't, I said I don't want to brag. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah, so, settle down. Yeah, so we go through an interesting <laughs> last section of this season. Um, there, there's a see. This season is kind of more of like a building block, really, for like the other seasons to kind of explain other things. Jaden's backstory, his new cards, uh, you know, flesh out other characters, that kind of thing. Uh, it, it does a good job of foreshadowing. And. In, like, the last section of episodes, we see a really interesting story again, where the plot line is brought up that it's, like, Jaden or Aster, who will save Sartorius? So we kind of start to see two different storylines, and then they converge back onto each other. And we learn a little more about Aster's backstory. Aster, his father was a car designer. And he got murdered and robbed by an unknown perpetrator. Oh my god. And when his father died, th- this is why he's Batman, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Right, right. Uh, his, his father left him the Destiny Heroes, but I, I totally forgot. It to fo- so Aster used Elemental Heroes kind of as a troll against Zane. He started to use them on Jaden, but then he played his Destiny Heroes, which are his actual cards. Right. And and his father left behind the last D hero cards. So then we get so so we wonder, right? Aster's father died. How was it possible that he had like even like had the means to become a pro, right? Because Aster is a pro. And we get revealed that he has like a guardian, like like a stepfather. His name is literally the D. That is his name. What? <laughs> the D. Or D D, and he is like okay. a world champion, like duelist, and mm. so so that's how we know. Okay, okay, he taught Aster, so we can kind of connect the dots, right? But in a shocking, like twist, the D actually is the one who killed his father. So it's no! really strange, oh! Oh, no. you know. But the culprit why? was hiding in plain sight type of thing. Yeah. And uh, I believe it was somewhere around here. We we have the, the Kingdom Hearts light versus darkness thing comes up, where it's depicted that there's two like f- natural main forces in the universe. The light of destruction and the gentle darkness. The gentle darkness was said to, uh, to fill the universe... And from it, like, grew life, basically. And the light of destruction seeks, you know, seeks to obviously destroy everything. And that's kind of its bit. The light of destruction has hold uh, in cards and over people. The main okay. perpetrators are the D and, later we come to know, Sartorius, Aster's mm-hmm. manager. And the tarot no. card guy. So, Aster winds up dueling the D because, funnily enough, there's a card that is missing from Aster's deck. He does not have all the Destiny heroes. 
And this is another funny uh, sub versus dub meme. Dub is its Destiny Hero Plasma. Sub, mm -hmm. it's uh, Destiny Hero Blue D, like blood, right? Oh, I see. So that's pretty, pretty sick. Uh. Aster has to duel him. And it's a really interesting situation, right? Because it's like this guy that he knew his whole life raised him. Like he was the guy who killed his dad. And he also had the final... I don't even know if it was called the final D card at the time. But even if that's the case, they changed that later. So I'm not going to worry about it. But yeah, this is where we see the, like, the two separate storylines. Of Aster is like kind of dueling the D. And then like comes back to face Sartorius. So like this is where... That's where you know, him and Jaden then converge is on battling Sartorius again. So this is where we get the meme also of satellite blow up Earth, satellite brainwash Earth. There are two nice. keys to the satellite, which the prince of a small country controls. Sartori Sartorius duels him, and turn zero beats him, and puts him under his brainwashing control. But what do you mean turn zero? On the opponent's turn, he managed to win. Wow. On his first turn. Like, right. Um, yeah. Like, he didn't even get, draw a card, is what you're saying. Yes. So, satellite meme. There's two keys. Sartorius, normal self. Like, he, he kind of has, like, we notice he has kind of a split personality. Mm hmm the, His normal self gives the two keys to Jaden and Aster, and that's where everything kind of goes. Sartorius duels Aster... Oh, so Sorry. The timeline of events is the prince duels Jaden and loses. And that frees him from the brainwashing. Aster duels Sartorius and loses and gets captured. And then Jaden duels Sartorius, who, by the way, they had... He had scales, right? And it was a big statue of two keys and one Aster. In the sort of like typical kind of shonen-y move, it they he may Jaden makes the illogical choice of throwing the key up onto the statue to save Aster, right? He, he saved the individual instead of the population of the world, which is wow. a really interesting choice. Yeah. He decides to save his friend. One guy, by the way. But some circumstances play out to where it works out okay, and he ends up dueling Sartorius. Beats him. But not before a funny moment where Dino DNA comes back. <gasps> yeah, the Dino yes. DNA! <laughs> so, yes, yes. Oh my god, the, t the, the shit's insane. Jaden can, like, Neos is so OP that he can actually manifest in physical form. <clears throat> he, he shoots some cosmic energy at Hasselberry, knocks out his body, but then from him comes like the spirit of a dinosaur. So what? him and Neos of course. fly into space to go what? destroy the satellite. Awesome. <laughs> That's sick. It's interesting. How did they fly like Jesus? Like just They just have they just go space up? space powers. Uh, don't even worry about it. Yeah, so they they destroy the satellite that was gonna mess up there. And and that's kind of how season two sort of resolves. There's Jesus, one important yeah. thing to note. There's one important thing to note before we before we go here, and that's Jaden sees a vision of his future, and it is very interesting. And we'll get back to it what it really was later, but it is great foreshadowing for reasons I will explain later. Hmm. For now, that's that's it. That's season two. Okay, I forgot some things about season two that were pointed out to me. So, remember the SMH fam Gen X tournament, guys? Uh, that, that quirky thing that happened like in season two. Yes. The yeah. finals are occurring with Chaz versus a mysterious masked competitor. Chaz now kind of is like rallying against the whites, you know, the Society of Light, you know, he's rallying all the boys, all the blues, all the yeah. fucking 
all the lads, they're getting in, they're, they're, you know, they're chazzing it up, so to speak. Chaz it up. Chaz it up. So, you know, another stereotypical thing, after the duel starts, the mysterious person takes their mask off. And it is <gasps> someone who, is it? who we are actually familiar with. Who is it? Blair Flanagan. Oh. What? Blair Flanagan was a character who had a one-off episode, like, way back in season one, where she tried to sneak into Duel Academy as a boy, mm. but to get with Zayn? Oh. Oh, Ooh. yeah, she's the boy crazy one. She wants to fuck Jaden now, right? And And she is... A lolly. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. 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 The thing about Blair raise, raise, raise. is uh, she she tried to get into the school, but she's like two. She's like a fifth grader or something. Yes. That's a yes. Little, yes. That's a, little quirky. That's a little strange. <laughs> she manages to get to the Gen X finals, which is interesting. Versus Chaz, right? And uh, it's it's kind of a you know, back and forth duel, and and we cut away to resolve the sort of you know the plot of season two that I mentioned earlier. You know, Jaden versus Sartorius. We we kind of see that play out, and then we cut back and we see Chaz beat Blair. So Chaz is the winner of the Gen X tournament, which is pretty insane. And uh, obviously, to be fair, she is like twelve. Yes, uh, obviously, Chaz, um, someone's like, oh, didn't you lose to Jaden? He's like, uh, didn't count. Okay. Uh, <laughs> shut the fuck up. So, faking gay, faking gay. Yeah, Chaz wins the tournament. S see, Shepard said you could ask for any wish within reason. But if I'm not mistaken, like, Chaz, like, didn't wish for anything or something? Oh. Uh, which Cringe. Is a little strange, but uh, he goes on to like repaint what is now the white dorm back into the blue dorm. And Erasing uh, white history, right? Um, yeah, yes, um. tearing down the statues, you know, all all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> ugly statues, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's kind of it for season two, unless no need, bro. Raise his paw. Uh... Oh, oh, okay, two things. First of all, Zane. What's up with the dude and his black dragons? What's up with Zane? Um, so he got bored of the tournament and just left. Cause he's good. A good Chad. for him. He's, a <laughs> he's like, there is no suit. You know, after after he beat uh, Atticus, he was like, there's no suitable opponent. You know, for me here now, or whatever. And he, oh, oh no, sorry. I, Zane just gives his medal to Blair. Uh, that's what kind of oh, okay. set off the whole thing. Was gives his medal to Blair and just leaves. Cool. Um, uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, quick question. Yes. No, no. If it, if Blair' original motivation was to fuck Zane, what does she want now? Okay. I'm sorry. I forgot to explain. All the way back in that first kind of like side episode, Jaden beats her. So then she fawns over Jaden now. Okay. So, yeah, and then when... She wants to fuck Jaden now. When Chaz beats her, she fawns over Chaz. So, you know... Oh my uh, fucking she's, God. she's loose. Yeah. She likes a man who can show her place by beating her in a card game, because this is a children's <sighs> game. Relatable. And I think that is it for season two, unless there's any questions. Oh, wow. Yeah, that yeah was... you're right. Not a lot happened in season two. <laughs> I, is, this, I is this the gem season up detail. next? Is it like a gem boy coming this season? This next season? Yes. But, uh. Oh, yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah season. Th There's so much nitty gritty with season two that I, it's kind of the, the section that I, you know, desire to, like, go over the fastest. Because there's not really a ton of. to work with. Right. Um, but yes, season three, I suppose. We're gonna be the here for a The season in which it gets gay. Oh boy. Headline. Snakes, stakes, supreme sovereign. 
That's the one. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Season three, there, there, there is a clear tonal shift of the show. You know, up until now, Jaden kind of does everything, right? And, he, and he, he always saves the day. There isn't really any consequences for his actions, so to speak. Oh, no. Season three can be broken down into three major arcs, or really parts. Um, there's a lot of really messed up things that happen that we will get into later. So season three starts in a very interesting note of introducing kind of more characters that we do like grow with and learn to care about as well. And, it, and they, they kind of complement the main cast that was already there. So first of all, Professor Viper and Axel from West Academy. So, so this, is what, this is what I meant way back here in season one about how there is North Academy, but there's also North Academy, which is a branch of Dual Academy. So they oh. kind of have a weird naming thing here because obviously the North Academy that Chaz went to is not wherever Jesse was. So... So yeah, so oh, yeah. Jim Crocodile Cook from South Academy, Adrian from East Academy, and Jesse from North Academy. So these are all characters like essential to the story and plot lines of season three. This is gonna be like a really tough year. Uh, Shepard kind of comments on how that's gonna be the case. For Jaden, as he asked for these people to come. By the way, all of those characters are the champions of their respective branches of dual, excuse me, academy. So that is what makes them important. Yeah. So the first duel, everyone gets these things called bio bands, and they're used oh. to assess. You know, your dueling skill and abilities and passion. And they are nearly irremovable, by the way. Oh. Seems legal. The first duel is Jaden versus Jesse. Jesse uses the Crystal Beast. Oh, this kid, yeah. Yeah, he's, J- he's Jaden's future boyfriend. So, um. Spoilers. I'll just say the gays are all over this one. <laughs> yes, the gay agenda. <laughs> the only agenda I've ever cared about, the gay one. Yeah, so so Jaden and, and Jesse are kind of, you know, kindred spirits. They're both these, like, really passionate duelists who, like, highly value the connection, like, to their cards and stuff. And <laughs> the thing about Jesse... <laughs> Why was that funny, no, Ibra? <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought you were going to say deck. The connection to the deck. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so, the thing about Jesse's deck is that it is actually incomplete. Because the Crystal Beasts, their ace is the Rainbow Dragon card, which has not been found nor invented yet. Oh. So... Yeah, the tablet for it has, has been missing this whole time. So, because of this, Jesse just pulls a meme. He's like, I'm going to summon a rainbow dragon. And then he just doesn't. And then Jaden sacks him and wins. So, uh, yeah, Jaden beats Jesse. And we see their bio bands kind of go off. And Professor Viper, the new professor that uh, Shepard called to come to Duel Academy... In order to, like, you know, make everyone stronger, I guess. We noticed that, like, he wasn't spectating the duel. And he was off kind of doing some weird stuff. And uh, he visited the old abandoned laboratory on the island. Which, uh, which we knew existed because in season one, they held, like, animals captive there and stuff. And Jaden dueled a monkey. That's pretty sick. That was back in Oh, what? Oh, what? Yeah, I, funny I know. monkey. I kind of. There's monkey. a lot of one offs. Uh, season one and two right. are the most notorious for having kind of like filler well, like ep- side yeah, episodic bits. shit. So, yeah, we see him doing some like really sus stuff. 
he like sets down this lava lamp looking thing and then it like grows and like covers the lab and, and it's got like spikes coming out the top and, it's, and it becomes like this test tube of or, like lava lamp of orange goo stuff and that's really strange yes obviously so axel who is from the west academy same as viper is actually working for him we don't really know what their deal is, but we figured out that the bio bands suck out your dual energy. You went, you know, after you duel. They're dual so, juice. Axel kidnaps Cyrus because Cyrus like ran up on him and was like having some kind of confidence issues because Cyrus was actually promoted off screen to Obelisk for some reason. Hmm. But then uh, he decided to go back to Raw because he feel like he felt like he didn't deserve it, which was pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, Jaden duels Axel and wins. But what's no and to rescue Cyrus? What's notable here? Axel could have won, but chose not to in order to draw out more of like Jaden's like dual energy. So despite Jaden's three losses. You can kind of consider the fact that, you know, if he played that, uh, you know, a card, he would have won, and he just chose not to. Later on, Axel, because he's working for Viper, he kind of questions what he's really doing. Because he doesn't know. Like, he, he's kind of, he's in on the, like, the plan, but he's not in on the plan. So, uh, he, he winds up betraying Viper later. But, uh, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. He, he ends up getting, uh, Axel... Ends up getting trapped. Raise his paw. Yes, no need, bro. Uh, why is Shepard inviting all these evil motherfuckers to his school? Like, why does he keep just, like, leaving them do whatever they want? For the lols. Uh... It's just a prank, bro. <laughs> but, like, he did it with this society. Now he's doing it with this guy. Well... And there was, like, a lab with an immortal old man. Okay, well, the lab thing, the guy was off, he was off somewhere, he, he came from a plane, you know, Kage Mario came from a plane, so we don't, we don't, society, like, he was gone for all of that, remember, he was gone until the Gen X tournament started. And, uh... And then he comes back and he learns that they let all these white supremacists into his school, and he's like, you fucked up. Yes, that is true. Raise your paws, though, goddammit. So, we then... We kind of we we get duels right for for each of these new people to sort of get to know them. Right? So we've seen Jesse duel. We've seen Axel duel. Next we have Adrian versus Chaz, I believe. In which we see two guys who kind of have really similar sort of like archetypes of like they're kind of like a spoiled rich kid, right? So Adrian is from the Gecko family who are, like, even bigger than, like, Chaz's family. They're even richer. He's like, Adrian is a billionaire, I believe, is, is uh, what what it is. So we want to <laughs> eat billionaires up in this. So, so fuck That's true. Adrian. Adrian is a cuck. Chad Chaz, he, he fucking lays a trap for him. Where, like, he puts... He has a helicopter with a glass thing, like, in front of a door. Adrian what? walks out of the door, so then the helicopter lifts Adrian up, and then there's one for Chaz as well, and they duel, hovering each other over a lake. What? <laughs> That's Why? some rich kid shit right there. That's some Looney Tunes right there. However, just before that, we get the information that Adrian is also trying to, like, thwart or understand whatever Viper is doing. Adrian... He has this suitcase where he can communicate to a submarine, like, way out in the ocean. And, uh, Adrian noticed, he, he scanned, he, I don't know how, what bullshit happened, but the bi he gets his bioman off and scans it, or, or maybe he just grabbed another one, I, I don't really fucking know. But he scans it to notice that it can suck your dual energy, right? And it, like, sucks, it's basically just your energy. It's whatever, right? And, uh, oh, after Axel and Jaden dueled, they both collapsed, and that's when they kind of put the pieces together. 
Adrian, this is another one of those weird ones where, like, sub is based. Uh, he notices that the power suction can be set to unlimited, apparently. Wow. S whatever that means. Um, okay. That's pretty weird. Pretty quirky. Yeah. The infirmary starts getting over-fucking-loaded. Adrian held a small duel tournament to call Viper's bluff, because Viper was going to turn the dual absorption up when Adrian dueled. Huh. So, he didn't want to, you know, he, Adrian, he is literally, he literally gets the, the smart anime eyeglass, uh, flash meme. Yes, the, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because he, he's calling his bluff by putting the, the lives of the student body at risk to call mm. this bluff in a very interesting move, let's just Very say. chat move, honestly. For sure. And, um, you know, because of all this, all, all this craziness. Viper's gone missing, right? No one knows where he is. So they go on a hunt. So so Jim, Jim Crocodile Cook, right? He he has like an electromagnetic wave reader thing. And the waves go to the abandoned laboratory. Uh, just before that, I believe he duels Hassleberry and beats him. But, but it's like a very irrelevant uh, duel. But I mean, it is neat that we see Jim finally duel. Because he uses fossils. As opposed to dinosaurs, which is what Hasselberry used. So oh, yeah, I also remember this guy. Yes, so Jim Crocodile Cook is like a great character. He's Australian. He got the Australian like accent, and he has a pet alligator. In the dub, it is Shirley. In the sub, it is Karen, which is pretty funny. <laughs> Karen. I so, can't yeah. believe they didn't name it Sheila. Yeah, Shame. I mean, surely, pretty pretty close, close enough. That's a bit Shirley. too American. That's not that's not that's not Sheila. I don't know a single Shirley, but everyone can be Sheila. The whole kind of the gang and plus the new gang really go after Viper, right? And uh, Viper sets some traps for them along the way because the underground lab is revealed to actually be this like animal sanctuary thing underground with this big like dome and shit and it's crazy so Jaden and the squad go after him Jaden duels a teacher who you know a lot of people have forgotten and no one like attends his classes it's just some other random bumfuck teacher because all we care about is like you know like Banner previously and Crowler and Bonaparte, and like we rarely see any other like teacher. So, but there's, there's this other guy, and uh, he has a hard time believing that Jaden's like sort of actions and demeanor as a hero is like a good thing because Jaden is lazy, like all throughout like this series. Is it's like a recurring bit is that he skips class, he's sleeping through class, he's talking during class. You know, he's not paying attention. That's kind of the meme. Hmm. But he can duel the best. So it's like an interesting comparison there. And the teacher basically thinks that Jaden, like, he rubs off on other students. So it's like making everyone worse, which is pretty interesting. It's another, so on the board here, I wrote down actions have consequences. And that's, that's one thing that is like really learned and reinforced in this season is, you know, up until now, Jaden always finds a way to, like, make a miracle happen. And there's no, like, consequences. You know, consequences, really. So, this is where, like, that sort of stuff starts creeping in just a little bit in the back of our minds. And, uh, Jaden, by the way, kills that guy. Because the, the bio bands drain a bunch of his energy. And he just falls into, like, a bottomless pit. Duel <laughs> <laughs> like across a little bridge he falls into a pit and kills him so J Jaden's kill counter is like what like two at least he's definitely it's getting there so yeah that guy that guy by the way was Mr. Stein I believe hmm then uh Jesse good old Jesse duels an old foe who is like 
a like a like a hunter guy, like a card hunter, like trapper guy. It's a guy who we get revealed is familiar to Jesse. Because he stole like a kid's card back in the day, and like Jesse wants to you know, wanted to like help him out, basically. The guy blackmails Jesse to where Jesse can't win. He threatens to rip a card um, so Jesse will just forfeit. But uh, thankfully, Jaden does like he, they're in a room with like oh, like a you know old electrical stuff. Jaden does like a swinging like Tarzan insane kick to kick <laughs> the card out of his hand, and uh, he snags it so Jesse can attack and finish him. And then, in a really messed up scene, I know for sure in the sub, I'm not sure in the dub, but like the spirits of the cards that the guy like, killed, come back to drag what? him into hell. And that's what? really weird. <laughs> yes! But it's interesting. That's just We love some comic retribution! So after this, like, gauntlet, we finally get a Jaden versus Viper. It's, it's a three-parter, which is, like, pretty crazy. Jaden, he suffers a lot with the duel because of, of, of poison, right? Like, Viper... Snakes. Oh, oh. He has snake deck. Ha 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 ha. He also has like a suit, which also has like really na really good foreshadowing, by the way, of um two two differently colored eyes on his like snake suit thing. That's pretty sick. So So disc. So this guy. Jaden manages to near narrowly beat him. Viper here, it turns out he's being kind of manipulated by something. Right, and uh, it's sort it's sort of the orange goop fucking giving dual energy this orange goop to something that the we dual think goop. is like a card, maybe like or it's like a card spirit or something, uh, and we don't really know what's popping, but um, that thing has now gathered enough dual energy to take a like semi corporeal form, where uh, they actually take the form of Viper's dead son. Which is pretty much what? Oh. So, yeah, so this thing tempted Viper. It would be like, I'll, 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 I'll resurrect your son and, and he'll be with you forever. Um, and, you know, just get me dual energy. Just get me dual energy. Give me the dual goop. And this is another sub V dub uh, thing. So the thing takes the corporeal form. It has like a really weird, cool alien looking arm, but the rest of the form is the kid, right? The kid brainwash Dojin mind breaks the guy into thinking that he saved his son from the accident where he died to where then, in reality, this whole time. So the lab, so Jaden dueling Viper, the lab opened up, a helipad came up. So they were dueling on a very tall place. The thing con controls Viper and just makes him walk off the edge, like to his death. No. Oh it's my god. Crazy. Wait, this is like that Rick and Morty bit where the ships need to protect Summer, so she creates a son for the <laughs> chief of the military yeah, yeah. and then kills it's, the son. It's like that Rick and Morty bit, like way before fucking Rick and Morty did it. God. Raises paw. Yes, Raises paw. So that was the sub. What was the difference in the dub, though? You mentioned there's a difference. I, I believe I it's just the meme of we don't see him die. Like we don't <laughs> see him walk off the edge and come <laughs> 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 リック。ごめん、危ない。さあ、共に行こう。新しい世界に。お、お、お、<笑> Viper, you've earned your reward. It's me, your son! Too bad you failed me! 
So, see, America looked at Japan's suicide rate, and they're like, mm, maybe not. Yes, no, no need for though. <laughs> uh, I did, I know I'm bringing this up a lot, but like, do that? Do this sacred beast ever matter again? Hold on to that thought. <laughs> so, yeah. So then, this weird spirit thing with alien hand just has gathered enough dual energy to transport the entire school into another dimension. So that's okay. pretty sick. Um, <laughs> Love that. Yeah, it's great. Um, you know, we're we're just jumping all over the place, you know. The no school, we. because <laughs> it, it's in like a deserty area, like dimension-y area, right? The school is running out of shit, running out of food, you know. They have to ration their food. That's pretty insane. And what's revealed is is that when the when the dimension thing happened, it's revealed that Adrian, who was earlier fighting Viper, actually took the side of the dual spirit like as we know it, rescues the alien arm, like the actual thing in the tube, uh, rescues wow. the arm and brings it to the library. The thing keeps commenting on how it's like notices the darkness of the heart and whatnot in Duelist. Hmm. Hmm. That's how it, excuse me, gets its power, essentially. Through manipulation. Yeah, the thing was revealed to be saved by Adrian because we know, we now know that his backstory is kind of messed up. So, similar to Chaz in a way, like, we, we see him introduced as kind of a rich, pompous kid. But in actuality, he really was an orphan who was starving in Egypt and was about to die. And okay. just for f no reason, the richest, like, family, apparently, or something, like, just picks him up and uh, adopts him, I guess. And he gets together with uh, basically a kind of female, like, peer slash servant named Echo. Echo's pretty important. But I fucking hate her. Okay. Game on. Get game your on. Game get your game on. Game on. Come on. Get your game 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 on. Get where where is Alexi? Where is Big Mommy Hunker? Does she ever do anything in this show? Yeah. That's uh, I, I mean yeah that's She true. did that's, a thing, Anipra. That's one of the criticisms is like like characters like Alexis really get cucked in like every season past the first. I mean kinda like it is what it is. Like I mean she gets duels and they do matter and they are important, but it's just a low quantity of those. Listen, Pro as long as there's rule through the four, I'm okay with it. Professor yes. Sean. Yes, Simon. Where's Yugimoto? He's vibing. Uh he's he's vibing. Don't worry. <laughs> Good. Good for him. He deserves he'll, it. He'll come back way down there. So. Oh my god, he actually comes back. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think we were free of Mr. Yugi Moto yet, do I you, love my Yugi boy. I love my Yugi boy. Uh, Yugi Mr. boy. Sean. Yes, no need, brother. What's the level of fan service in this show exactly? Subwise? Fan service? Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a huge difference of, uh, actually, thanks for pointing that out, of sub versus dub. Sub shows way more cleavage, is way more revealing. Like, just just look Yo. at uh, Verstinatrix's design. Yo. It's a great example of that. Oh, yeah. Yo. Or in the dub, they just cover all that shit up. It's so annoying in the dub. With, like, uh, me. Okay. You're kind of nuts. <laughs> so, I will say that... Uh, Oh. I do want to touch on, on some things before I continue, which is like kind of 
what, like, what is, like, everyone's purpose? Or, like, what is, what is going on, really? Is So, Duel Academy, right? So, built by Kaiba Corporation, it kind of has a lot of recognition, right? A lot of notoriety. You know, uh, graduating from that school, you might uh, go into the pro leagues. You know, you might, like, make a career, a successful living, etc. That kind of thing. You know, out of dueling. Because this is the world where dueling is everything. You know, that's kind of the purpose of why everyone's there. Why they, you know, go through all the dorms and, and you know, years of school, literal dual schooling and whatnot. But also, the, the reasoning for these other characters showing up is to, um, you know, this new sort of secondary cast of, uh, you know, Viper, Adrian, Axel, Jim, and Jesse is, is we kind of get, like, we get new characters who are immediately, like, important and relevant to the story. Because in theory, you could just reuse Chaz, or reuse Lexus, or reuse whoever. But, you know, but it is more interesting to kind of, like, flesh out the world with, like, more characters and whatnot, and having more different narratives uh, weaving in and out of each other. So, Season 3 does a great job with that stuff. Very little filler in Season 3. Um, and, and almost none in Season 4, really. So it does a much better job than the first two seasons. You know, that's why season three is my favorite, uh, by the way. So, first things first, let's get back to where we left off. So, Adrian's backstory, it, it's, it's kind of tragic. It's a lot like Chaz, but like I said, he, he, he got adopted into a very rich family. Who did not have kids. That was the important thing, they did not have kids yet. So, the problem was, of course, of course it was going to happen, once they decided to have a kid, that kid was, you know, the true blood, the, the heir to the throne. That kid was going to get the special treatment, you know, mm. right. rather than, you know, the adopted guy, Adrian, even though, you know, Adrian was like a, you know, like a representation of nurture, you know, how like he used his own like power and strength, you know, to kind of like be good like he was a really buff he's like a really good boxer uh when he fights viper earlier we see him like rip his shirt off and he's he's super shredded um <laughs> it's it's funny <laughs> it, it, by the way i, I want to go back to that actually because Yu-Gi-Oh, right uh card game anime we see two really hmm. buff guys like duking it out in a well not really duking it out i guess but you know fighting with their fists instead of cards. So that, that, that was pretty interesting. Uh, not too long ago in the story. But why is Adrian's backstory, like, tragic, really? O other than what I said. It's because Adrian wanted to kill the child. The, oh. you know, who would be his little brother. You know, the, that's his... Um, you know, darkness of the heart or whatever, so so to speak, is like, you know, he wanted to kill that baby because he, like, that baby was, like, going to take, you know, everything from him, really. Like, he was going to have the spotlight, you know, that kind of thing. So, but, but, but we noticed something. So Echo, his, like, childhood peer friend servant girl, like, believes that, like, he's a good person on the inside, and he decides not to do it in like a really dark scene that I don't remember if it's like the same in the dub. It probably is less, um, you know, bad, really. In the yeah, dub. less severe. So, you know, Adrian kind of grows up. He, he's still this beast. He starts boxing harder than ever and just knocking people the fuck out. And it's pretty funny. Yeah, he, he grows up in... I don't remember if it's here or later, but, like, he revealed, like, it's revealed, like, yeah, he is, like, a good older brother, like, he tries to help his younger brother, like, play tennis and shit, and that kind of thing. And, uh, he even, like, got on his hands and knees and begged for some medicine to cure, um, cure the kid when uh, he was ill. So, he, you know, he did shit for him, but something interesting happens. The dual spirit acknowledges this and acknowledges that Adrian, like, is powerful, like, darkness, you know, is, like, is within him and it's pretty powerful. But the thing notices someone in the school with an even larger darkness. 
Oh no. And the thing is, is that this is a character we've only seen like a sparse couple times, but it started in season three, known as Marcel. Mm. Marcel. And there's there's kind of some interesting context clues. It's pretty clear, though, if you like have a brain. Oh, this dude's a baby kid. Is Bonaparte's kid? If you remember, the other head hmm. teacher is his kid. And um, mm. there's more to that than meets the eye that we'll uh, we'll get to. The alien arm thingy attaches to Marcel. Pretty sick. However, he's yep. um, we see Blair with Marcel, and he scratches her. This nasty, like, glowing, yellowy orange, like, gash. It looks so alien and, like, weird. It's pretty sick. It's pretty cool. Only special medicine will help her. And remember, Dual Academy was transferred into another dimension. Deserty dimension. Oh, we're still on that? Okay. Dual spirits are real. You take real damage. And, um... Right. Dual spirits just kind of roam around and fuck with you. Just cause. Uh, harpy ladies attack shit like that oh oh my god so they go on a mission so so i don't remember how but they they figure oh there's a submarine uh out there somewhere which we actually know of earlier as mm -hmm. that was the submarine that adrian was contacting so adrian and the lads uh kind of newer lads like adrian jesse Jim, Axel, Jaden. So it's like m all the new guys, pretty much, in Jaden, go to get this medicine for Blair because she got scratched. Adrian contacted that sub, right? It's like from his conglomerate or whatever, and uh, they're like a special, they're like a spec ops, like military unit, like a Navy SEAL shit that uh, help him out. And who other than? Echo is their, like, captain, essentially. His childhood peer kind of girlfriend, really, but it's it's complicated, let's just say. <laughs> it always is. So, this... This was all kind of a diversion, right? When they're gone, Marcel starts to create what we know as the dual ghouls. Because the students are getting uh, <laughs> desperate for food, right? They're getting so desperate. And, like, when Marcel just walks up with, like, a bag of bread in his hand, he's just like, yo, you want this? Uh, let me, like, take control over you with, like, little darkness powers. It's pretty sick. Where's this paw? Yes, Jelly. Uh, before we get too far away from it, how did the submarine get to the desert dimension? When the school... I guess I, I, I should have clarified this. When the school got transported, specific things, like in an, an area, got transported, it, it wasn't the whole island. It was just the section where the school is, where the lab was, and I guess the submarine for some reason. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty what convenient. Yes, no need, bro. Uh, basically, like... The submarine was just like around the school, so like basically big beam light came up and just covered the entire section, and just stuff got transported to the other dimension. That's how the submarine got there. Yeah, there, there isn't any like logical explanation, but yeah. So, uh, that shit was a diversion. Marcel creates dual ghouls. They are literal. That's what it is in the dub. In the sub, it's dual zombies. You know they. They're so exhausted from dueling, but uh, the dark, like darkness energy powers, like just force them to keep dueling. And remember, because they still have the bio bands on, all their shit is getting sucked. Uh, you know, all their dual energy is getting sucked out of them, uh, back into the lab. Because we noticed, we noticed something. Adrian, when he took the alien hand had the option to turn off the generator for the dual energy, but decided not to. And it really fucked things up for everyone else. Students start dropping like flies. Chaz becomes a dual ghoul. Cyrus becomes a dual ghoul. Oh my god. And like the rest of the, you know, 
majority of the student body. So now they have to like barricade shit. They have to barricade doors and entrances and that kind of thing. And they have to like... Also, Chaz was guarding the food storage, by the way. And he got brainwashed. So that was like really bad. Damn. So the result of like all this shit basically is that um, Marcel kind of like tries to divert them again and distract them again with uh, fusing some students with dual spirits and then making them duel. So Marcel, no, no need, bruh. This is for you. The, Marcel then goes while everyone's distracted to get the sacred beast cards, which also <gasps> were transported to Yo. the dimension. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, what is just chilling? Okay, okay. If if we remember, you summoned them and they suck all the dual energy. You know the apocalypse is about to happen, bros. And they're yes. just in a box in the middle, like of a cave. I guess that yeah. So see, we we can tell it's the same room as well that uh, that the keys went in in the jewel, and um, yeah, I guess like a lot of the underground also got transported. Mar Marcel does this like cool thing where like it, it it the terrain looks all like desert, but like he just walks up to this random area, takes the alien and punches the ground, and like it just rips open a fissure. For like him to just go into the underground, I guess where the where the fucking cards are. Okay. On the way there, uh, Jaden winds up chasing him, and this is where we actually get the reveal of like Bonaparte uh, tries to defend Marcel because Marcel is his son. And uh, I don't remember if this is exactly where we get the backstory, but the backstory is basically that Bonaparte like left his wife and kid to, like, go get a better job, and, like, or, or, like, they had a nasty divorce, he went to, like, go get a better job at, at Dual Academy, and, uh, so, like, he didn't really interact with his son that much, so, like, his son hated him, right, because, uh, you know, he left and, and whatnot. Daddy issues, basically. Mm. You know what? Daddy issues! Huh? There, there's kind of an issue, right? They still didn't get Blair the medicine, um, which they end up doing, they, they have to do this whole rescue operation, the nurse gets dual gold, and they have to, like, rescue Blair, and give oh, her the God. shit. And, and then all this stuff happens that I've talked about with, like, diversions and whatnot, and uh, they noted that, like, the power lines slash station also got, like, transported, and uh, <laughs> this is how they communicate. So, so oh my God. It is not explained, yes. but we see Bastion just strolling on up to Duel Academy. What's up, guys? I'm back. It's Bastion. Don't you remember me from like uh, like season two? I was I was there for like two episodes. Remember you science? Mean, you mean last season? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, okay. so we get we get ex we get an explanation though. So Bastion was doing science stuff. Where, you know, they discovered that there's 12 dimensions. And uh, there was Four. a freak accident where he got sent to the dimension they were in, basically, is the explanation. Bastion uses the power lines and fucks with them, digs out the sand to, in order to communicate with the, uh, the real world. Where uh, Dr. Eisenstein, Eisenstein is uh, located. And uh, uh. they're all trying to rescue him. Uh, Aster is there, Zane is there, and Shepard, I think, is there too? Because he did not, he was like away or something, so he didn't get oh, transported. Oh, conveniently away. Yeah, yeah, sounds familiar. It During is a convenient. major tragedy. It is yeah. convenient, because he was trying to go get the help of Pegasus, actually. They um, they take out a big insurance claim on the school before it <laughs> disappeared too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is 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 Shepherd pretty? You know, or uh... pause. <laughs> raises, raises all the fucking pause. Yes. Sir. The dude just <laughs> brings. In, the dude brings in villains, then leaves, then just come back. Oh shit! The villain did the villain thing, and just like repeats for three Kinda seasons. True. 
kind of true. Well, <laughs> uh, fuck him. No. yeah. So uh, ba- Bastion shows up, uses the power station to you know communicate, and they are told finally after like thirty episodes or something. <laughs> The Rainbow Dragon card is the key Ugh. to getting home. Oh my god. And what do we know about the Rainbow Dragon card? It doesn't exist. It Jesse doesn't, doesn't exist. have it. So how the fuck are they gonna get there? So, so get this shit. Pegasus finds the tablet, actually. He <gasps> ends up finding it just on time. However, someone comes to intercept the creation of the card. Oh my god. None other than... Echo, if you remember, is Adrian's girl. What? Echo mm. comes to blow up the tablet. She rigged it with, like, explosives. Oh, she's a rigger. She's a rigger. <laughs> so she, she wants to destroy the tablet. And at first, it seems the reasoning to be very confusing. Why? You want Adrian to come back, right? You love him, don't you? Not quite. She believes that Adrian cannot rule this world, so he is probably having a better time in the other dimension. Oh. So she oh, threatens okay. to blow women. up the tablet. Yeah, w- w- women moment right there. W- 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's yes, a woman sorry. moment. Isn't she in the submarine? How the fuck did she come back? It doesn't make sense. Um... <laughs> Actually, <laughs> it kind of does, actually. Okay, so so the whole bit was, like, when they were fighting Viper, uh, Adrian set off, like, a little beacon to signal them to come onto the island. And then I guess the submarine behind them got transported, and they just didn't. So. They just didn't, even though they were on the island. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they came to the island, so... This is where we also get another big reveal. Because Echo says that Axel was working for Industrial Illusions the entire time. He was faking oh. working under Viper um, previously. You know? That, that's pretty, pretty sick. So, you know, there's a lot of, like... I know this is in Season 1, but, like, homage to DM. You know, constant, like, references and, and that kind of thing to... Uh, I I and Kaiba Corp and whatnot. Yeah. Rainbow Dragon. How are they gonna get home? They need Rainbow Dragon. They need to make it. Echo's threatening to blow it up. Pegasus is like security guards just ice her. They just fucking <coughs> like they run up and like gr- pull her wrist and then she like drops the detonator or whatever. So. Uh, is <laughs> Razor's paw is is yes, croquet? Uh, Pegasus's head bodyguard there. Does he make a cameo? I don't think so. He has a really big hair spike, like like massive. Raises paws. Yes, no need, bro. I, I uh, yes, I think they're the same fucking bodyguards he always had. Awesome, Croquet is a great fucking character. <laughs> okay, so Who, um does found... yes? Peg Pegasus every night? By the way, that's a uh, that's that's canon to me. Okay, oh my so God. Pegasus then creates the Rainbow Dragon card, which they send a copy to uh, at Duel Academy, where they've sort of set up a home base, really. Um, there's kind of like a sort of like storm gathering kind of over Duel Academy because of like the dimensional like barrier is like weakened or whatever, right? It's kind of like it, um, excuse me, said before. So, the dimensional um, juice. The hole is not big enough, lads. So they gotta send a <laughs> rocket. Am I right? <laughs> We've gotta, all been there. <laughs> they gotta send a rocket through with the Rainbow Dragon card, and it sends it to the other dimension. So Jesse uh, goes out and gets that, and uh, Rainbow Dragon helps him out, and uh, helps him uh, escape from some other miscellaneous like dual spirits. And uh, while that's happening. Jaden goes after Marcel, who is gunning it for the Sacred Beasts, remember? And uh, in the way, he has to go through Chaz, you know, dual ghoul Chaz. And Marcel gets to the Sacred Beasts. We think, oh, well, fuck. Like, they're fucked, right? Who walks in on Marcel but Adrian? 
who demands that the thing possessing Marcel, they, they had a deal. You know, they had a fucking deal. You know, he, he, uh, duel, Adrian and Marcel duel for, like, the right to the cards, really. Yeah. And, uh, what's interesting to know is that Marcel is using an Exodia deck. No? Huh? What? What? The Forbidden One! Yes. And, uh, but I thought uh, Yugi had those cards. By the there's, way, there's, there. It's a children's trading card game. They make multiple copies. Um. <laughs> no. Adrian, by the way, uses clouds. Cloudians. That's his archetype. Oh, he's the he's the cloud. I was wondering when that, the guy who. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I, I probably should have explained this earlier. Um. So Adrian is clouds. Jesse is crystal beasts. Uh. Jim is fossils. Axel is like the cards that Shinny used. The um. You know, fight like pyro, basically pyro monsters. Um, and yeah, Viper was snakes. Makes sense. So yeah, Marcel versus Adrian. So it's Clouds versus Exodia, and uh, it, it seems as if Marcel would have won that duel, but the Sacred Beasts interrupt the duel because they try to like break out of the box thing that they were in, right? So. M Marcel, it, it, like, or, I mean, it's not really Marcel, but you know what I mean. Marcel is, like, really powerful because of all this dual energy that they've sucked up. They <laughs> they actually quell the sacred beasts and, like, like, fucking intimidate them back into the little box. And they, uh... On the way out, Marcel drop like, the ditches the Exodia deck... And leaves it for Adrian for some reason, don't know why, and takes the, but takes the sacred beast deck instead, right? I mean, it, it kind of makes sense, but it kind of doesn't. Yeah. So after that, uh, you know, Jaden shows up. Oh fuck! Well, they're gone. So then Jaden has to go back to the school. Marcel challenges him to a duel, but Jaden has to get there in a certain amount of time. Oh. In the sub, if he doesn't get there in time, he's fucking snaps his fingers and kills all the students like all the dual Damn. dual students because he's possessing them right jaden in the dub i actually don't remember at the moment but i obviously it's another one of those cases where i doubt it's that severe you know they drink a lot of hot sauce yes <laughs> so they're gonna get Amen. sent to the shadow zone jaden <laughs> starts to duel marcel uh on a like sent new to field spell that they came up it was like a like castle, kind of like a flat pyramid thing. Right? And uh, so Jaden starts dueling them. You know, shit goes down. The sacred beasts have like gotten some new support and shit, so like they can get them out easier and whatnot. So like the duel kind of goes ah, uh, but then Jesse shows up with Rainbow Dragon. They're ticked <gasps> to getting out of there. Right? Oh, oh, yes. What? Jesse shows up. And offers Marcel to gain four thousand life points so he can enter, and Marcel accepts. Surprisingly enough, hmm. the duel continues as it is finally revealed what has been manipulating everything the entire time. But you, Bell, ladies oh. and gentlemen. Oh yeah. So uh, pause, pause. Yes, pause. no need, bro. What's up, Marcel? Okay, she's controlling Marcel, yes. but isn't she like also controlling the, like Adrian? No, um, Adrian is like acting of his own accord. It's just like he is working with her, essentially. Okay. So. Okay. So yeah, so gotcha. uh, you you Bell. This is this is finally the first appearance of uh, you Bell. Probably my favorite character in the show. Yeah. TBH. For She's quality. Obvious reasons. But uh, yeah. The, the sex reason. Jean Sensei, who is La Belle or You Belle? Great question that will be answered right now. So, in their duel, uh, you know, You Belle finally takes like her real form, as in the card as I just showed. We get a little taste of the backstory. We don't get the full meal. We get a little taste. Nipple. You Belle. She was in Jaden's deck when he was young. Mm -hmm. And she basically protected him, so to speak. And she had power. She had really special powers, though. She's regarded as 
the strongest dual spirit, which is pretty insane. Yubel knocks people out and puts them into a coma if, like, Jaden, like, loses to them. So that was, like, really fucked up. She, she would knock an opponent out into a coma. Jaden would go to visit them at the hospital with a vase of flowers. But when he walked up, they would, like, writhe in pain just at the presence of the Yubel card that he kept on him. Wow. Which is, like, really fucked up, right? And yeah, so, like, Yubel tried to, like, protect, protect him in this really strange way, basically. She's just a yandere, mm. my dude. She's just a yandere you sensei. Need some hard kind of kind of sounds like uh kind of sounds like uh, our boy Judai here hurt a lot of people. Uh mm. Yeah. No, uh, okay. So actually racist Paul, it was Sean. Bell that hurt those people, not Judai. He's a Well, I mean, he had Will, hearts, though. It is what it is. We'll we'll get there. So the, the last thing to add is you guys remember Way back in season two, beginning of season two, when remember the Neo Spatians are Jaden's design. You guys remember that, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He made them. They, yeah. They got sent into space. Uh -huh. At the same time, Jaden sends up Yubel in the hopes of her, you know, being fixed. Basically, you know, not knocking people out into comas uh, you know, after doing them. And uh, and by the way, I, I don't. I don't remember, there might be a difference in the sub versus dub, I don't remember the dub, but in the sub, uh, she she got really mad when her summon was negated, and that's when she knocked out the uh, guy Jaden was dueling. And, and keep in mind too, this was Jaden's favorite card, like back when he was young. So uh, it's pretty messed up, um, you know, what's kind I of I forgot occurred. about her. We'll get back to that, Simon. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but remember, let's snap back to the present. We have Jaden and Jesse versus what is now Yubel. You know, it, it's really <gasps> Yubel this time. So you know, she's she's revealed herself. And, and, yes, no need, bro. Does he remember her? Jaden remembers her name, but then I think she she makes him see a vision of what happened. Um, but but we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. That is an important note, so um, don't worry about that. So, Jaden and Jesse versus Yubel. Jesse sacrifices himself. And the reason for this was because they had to create a big spike of dual energy with the Rainbow Dragon card in order to send everyone home. So Jesse sacrifices himself and... And, you know, the Rainbow Dragon, really. The reasoning for that really is, like, you know, Jesse kind of feels that, like, he will be the bridge for, like, everyone returning home, basically. And, you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, an interesting kind of take on it, that he kind of sacks himself so everyone else can, can go home and, you know, return to normal conditions. As, as these students have been through fucking hell hell and back you know by dual zombies starvation uh you know alien scratches and shit and you know so much stuff so so these guys are fucking traumatized right but you know finally they can go back home jesse plays like a spell to where it sh it changes the target of yubel so yubel attacks jaden jesse switches the target Increases Rainbow Dragon's attack points to 10,000 and then makes so so you bell does a thing We haven't seen before she fuses the sacred beasts into what we know as the uh, Chaos phantasm armatile I believe or armatile the chaos phantasm Which is a fusion of all three and can only be summoned with like a specific spell And it's really sick. It's called dimension fusion destruction. I believe it's pretty neat so that thing gains 10,000 attack on your turn. And uh, yeah, so that and Rainbow Dragon attack into each other. But the spell Jesse played makes both monsters damage, like pierce each other. So then they both take 10,000 damage and lose. So 
and then Jaden wins. You know, he technically wins the duel because he survived. So that's pretty neat. Now, once everything is returned, because there, basically there's a big, like, rainbow explosion, and we... We literally see you, Bell and Jesse, like fade away into like rainbow fucking sparkles, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. So a vast majority of the students are celebrating, right? Holy shit, everyone's back. We're home. Let's fucking go. However, there's there's one small problem. Jaden is very unhappy with what just occurred. Because, you know, like, it's Jesse... like his best friend just died or something. Yes, because Jesse, like, al although fairly new, he, he really was, like, Jaden's, like, kindred spirit, you know? He, like, <coughs> Jaden is clearly a different character from Cyrus, let's say, or Chaz, where, where Jesse was more, you know, similar to him. He is, like, depressed because Jaden feels guilty, right? That, like, you know, he could have done something in that duel to save Jesse. You know, he, like, Jesse's gone. Jesse's, like, dead. You know, presumably, really. And, uh, he feels guilty and wants to go rescue him because he feels like he's still alive. You know, he, he doesn't feel like Jesse died for some reason and wants to try and go rescue him. And he wants to go back into the alternate dimensions. Which is, like, crazy, right? Because they just got back from, like, hell, practically. Then we get a we get a little more explanation. We get a, another little taste of the backstory. So, Jaden, it's a little tragic because, like Jaden, so when he was young, his parents were always out on business trips. So mm. in the meantime, he duels neighborhood kids, right? You know, for fun. You know, and, and he uses the Ubel card, right? Because it's his favorite card. Jaden, you know, because of the things that occur after he duels someone, you know, they they succumb, you know, to like a coma essentially, and Jaden like knows it's because of you, Bell, I think, and uh, it's it's a little strange, but the thing here is that after like this happens, uh, like more than once, I believe, is that. The neighborhood kids obviously don't want to duel him anymore. So he's like a oh. very lonely, like sad kid. And and it's a really like stark contrast and kind of reminds us of like, oh shit. Episode one is kind of like sad when you think about it. Like Jaden is like so excited to duel because he like kind of hasn't like dueled anyone in a while. Because of all the neighborhood kids being like, nah, fuck you, I don't want to get into a coma dueling. Even though he sent <laughs> you Bell into space. Justifiably. Uh, yeah. Raise his paw. Yes, Jelly. So after Jaden and Jesse defeat you Bell, what happened to you Bell? We saw. We saw her You'll find like, out. fade away. In like some rainbow sparklies with with Jesse, so it's kind of like I don't know anything could have happened really, but mm. we we will find out. So so yeah, like a young Jaden, when he won that contest, asked the Kaiba Corporation to also send up Ubel with Neos and the Neospatians in the hopes that the breath of space would like help her out basically, make her you know not bad. Oh, sure, you know, um, the breath of space, yeah. You know, he knows this as a 10-year-old. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, raise his paw. Yes, Kudru. Uh, the breath of space, you say? Yeah, it's kind of one of those things where they use a lot of, like, the same terminology for, for what essentially is the same thing. Cause they, they use shit like powers of darkness... Darkness of justice and like breath of me like neo space is like a concept and and an energy and everything it's it's really strange they, they like to reuse the same fucking words I don't know how they would have understood this at the time but the hope was that the powers that neos got 
would like also go to Yubel and like help her out and like make her not so overprotective and whatnot. I guess that was Where the plan. Spot? Yes, no, no, Uh, I think if I'm not like misremembering, just to like be clear, small Jaden. Uh, after like he sent you belt to space, he either like kills an snaps it with my so if they are get skills. We'll get there, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, okay. Because uh, that's that's later. Um Reese Reese's paw. Yes. So this this would be a question I should have asked like, you know, ages ago. But uh <laughs> un, un, under so so the creation of cards, like under under what context is that allowed to like take place? Like what what governs the um, uh, general creation and the, like what powers cards? I mean, I know there's some so, Egyptian fuckery to be. But. We, we get the actual fun, funny thing, right? In season four, we actually get the answer to like what a Yu-Gi-Oh card actually is in like a really funny way that we'll find out later. But okay. um, I guess that I, I don't know, S Simon, can Kaiba Corp create cards, or was it, is it just like... Yeah, yeah, after Pegasus uh, went into a coma, after he lost to Yugi, and it, um, Kaiba Corp was sort of in charge, I think, of that. Okay. Or maybe, or maybe industrial... Yeah, like, I, I is the company, but it's, but maybe they, like helped or something yeah. i don't know really... yeah i kyber corp because kyber corp developed the uh, the hollow technology that allows like the the big stages to like project the monsters yes the okay. i think i know the name of it Ariz... it's, it's uh, leaving me what's up what's yeah up? The, just the big duelry basically uh, fucking uh, industrial uh, the backstory of the Yu-Gi-Oh, at least in the original was like I think Pegasus went to the desert and discovered yeah. the like tablets originally uh -huh. that yes. had the cards. Yeah, he was like, "Oh, the the ancient Egyptians played this game. I'm going to recreate this." Somehow, and in doing that, of uh, also found the Millennium Eye and like yeah, yeah, and all that. Yeah, all that other re imbued stuff the power of this game into these cards. Yeah, but somehow he like just inferred all of this and created cardboard like replicas. But like some sometimes those cardboard replicas like have like actual like super world ending powers and sometimes yeah. they don't yeah that's uh that's pretty interesting that's, that's just how it works because pegasus you know like had the millennium eye these these creatures were but, like i mean the rainbow dragon for example yeah they, they kind of fuck with stuff later um yeah. it was like when hasberg made ouija a thing you know yeah. yes so c continuing on like after these events after this explanation so a majority of the the crew now, new and old, you know, Axel, um, fucking Jim, you know, people like Cyrus, um, you know, Bastion, etc. They all do want to help Jaden, uh, go rescue Jesse. They, they do kind of risk it and go back to the other dimensions to try and find and rescue Jesse. And the reason that they were able to do this was, you know, du Dual Academy Island is like a very special place. And there happened to be another small anomaly occurring there. But obviously the portal was not big enough, like, for a human to, like, walk through. So what they all had to do was they all had to summon their, like, best or ace monsters to, like, attack at the portal. Because okay. the portal... Like, the area around the portal made it so their summons were real. The monsters were real. And they had to, like, power the fucking portal so they could all go through. And... Mrs. Pa? Yes, Nonipa. Where are his cosmic powers? Who? who? Jaden. Didn't he use the cosmic powers to power up dino DNA, blow up like a satellite? Like, where well, are that... his powers again? Well, that's Neos. That's, like, a different... It... It's not Jaden. That's like his card. Like he has Neo still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J Jaden uses Neos, I believe, in the uh, in that section. Okay, okay. It's just um, okay. he gets a lot of backup from a, a fuck ton of people. I, I don't. I, I I only named a couple, but there was way more there. Yeah, like Alexis and Chaz and everybody. Neos can't do everything, no need, bro. Neos traveled back through space. So another one of those quirky dimension travel 
explosions happen. Where where we see our main gang get, you know, transported. We also notice, interestingly, Zane and Aster are there, they get transported. Echo and Crowler are there and get transported, which is an odd pairing. But we'll get back to that much later. Yeah, they just they go to try and rescue Jesse. But the thing is, is that they arrive in a dimension not familiar to them at all. Uh, it's a very dark world, so to speak. There, you know, the color palette is very dark, very purpley, uh, that kind of thing. Here's the big deal. Dueling in this dimension is real and oh, results okay. in the loser dying. Right. So. If you die in the game, you die for real. Jaden feels Indeed. really uneasy about this, but he feels like a kind of responsibility to kind of bear like the the brunt of that responsibility to not put any pressure on his friends. You know, he doesn't want to see his friends die. So, you know, right. he tries to kind of fight all the duels really. And yeah, what we see is kind of like a much different and kind of strange Jaden. Who has this sort of like reckless, like recklessly charge ahead, like never stop, you know, destroy, like destroy your opponent, find Jesse, like though, that's his goal, find Jesse, find Jesse. He almost pursues it in like a selfish manner, basically. Mm. And he feels that that is what is all important to him right now because of the guilt he feels, you know, from Jesse, like disappearing essentially right so uh yeah and, and also kind of like a shitty thing happens is, is like Jaden is leaving people behind in the process you know in the, in this process of like recklessly charging at any little information uh, uh you know about jesse's whereabouts he just kind of abandons his you know his comrades it's pretty shitty okay so it's revealed that there there's kind of a weird thing going on with dimensions right now uh, people from you don't say yeah pe uh, pe <laughs> i mean it, it's displayed as people but it's really like dual monster spirits technically are kind of like going in and out of each other's world it's like bakugan right when like the dimensions get all fucky and like the elements like oh, yeah. combine it's kind of like that so like uh the dimensions are kind of like fucking around after Jaden, so so there's a dark army in the world that they are in and mm -hmm. the other dual spirits there were like, ah, these things were just myths to us, you know? And now they're real. They're terrorizing our villages. They're, they're, they're literally killing us. They're literally dueling us into submission and killing us. Let's just say that's where card-based homicides are kind of like a thing. That, that, that's kind of a big theme <laughs> of this season is that people oh. are getting fucked. People are dying. Right. And, uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, don't be serious in mm, You could say that. Yeah. So don't worry about it. After Jaden defeats a knight, uh, a certain knight of the Dark Army, that knight happens to drop five orbs that all relate to negative emotions. The five are, uh, and they get a they get applied to his friends. Sadness to Alexis, doubt to Cyrus, anguish to Atticus, anger to Chaz, hatred to Hasselberry. So, it takes a while to explain what goes on there, let's just say. Jaden assaults the fortress of Bronn, Mad King of Dark World. And the reason he does this is because he believes Jesse is there. Jesse is at the crux of all that, like, Jaden is worrying about right now, so right. that's kind of the, the bit there. Trying to get his borrow back. So, got to get J his boyfriend back. Jaden assaults the fortress, but leaves everyone behind. Chaz, Castleberry, Atticus, Cyrus, Alexis. He literally leaves all of them in the dust. And, uh, but Axel and Jim are with him. And Axel and Jim specifically tell him to wait. Do not assault the fortress yet. Jaden defies their wishes and does it anyway, because that's kind of, you know, how he's acting right now, how his character sort of is right now. He's recklessly, he has like, you know, 
I believe reckless abandonment, like he's like just doesn't give a fuck. Braun's thing is that we duel him. He has captured Alexis, Atticus, Chaz, and Hasselberry. If you'll notice, that is only four of the five of the orbs that were dropped. Braun plays a card that requires specific spells, which are the negative emotions of his friends. These all get put into a book in order to make the ultimate card. Super polymerization, which is a big deal. However, he needs the five sacrifices, and Cyrus is the one who was not captured and managed to escape due to the help of Axel and Jim, who went to go get him and told Jaden to wait. And this is where there's a significant character change and some really fucked up stuff happens, by the way. This is one of those children's card game anime moments. Yeah. <laughs> Jaden literally gets put with, like, the trolley problem, essentially. Where, oh, my God. <laughs> where, the option, where the option is he has to kill himself via losing a duel, or he kills his four friends. That is literally uh -huh. his options. Ow. And it, it's really messed up. <sighs> Jaden decides, if, if you understand his character this season and up until now, he chooses to kill his friends. Just so messed up. Right? <laughs> he chooses to win the duel. Yes, he kills. Thank you, Jelly. So he kills. So at first he kills just one, but then Braun plays a trap that makes him attack. Uh, that makes Jaden rather attack three times, and that's what causes his friends to like get killed, uh, as they are tributes for super polymerization. Mm. Jaden kills one, and then instantly kills three because his monsters attack. So, so what we notice is Jaden is finally put into a bit of a pickle, right? Up until right. now, he always pulls off the miracle. He, pull, he always pulls off the insane comeback when he saves everyone, redeems everyone, and whatnot. This is where we finally see actions having consequences. He, he has a true pickle. He does ultimately win that duel and kills his four friends. He, right. this, this is devastating, though. He, he literally... We, we also see, like, a tangible change in Jaden. Jaden is so angry after his friend's deaths that we see his eyes change color from the brown we know to yellow. Okay? Mm. And that is important. Yeah. The thing is, is that... He, he shits on Braun, and he wins the duel, and then Cyrus' voice... Cyrus's voice snaps him back to reality, and I, and I believe his eyes return to normal color. Raise his paw? Yes, Snowy bro. Is he half Xenoheart? <laughs> Wait, Xenoheart? What am I... Oh, yeah, is he Xanort? Xanort. Xanort. From... Yeah. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Kill me. Delete that. No. Xenoheart. <laughs> Yeah, so, so Cyrus' voice is what snaps him back to reality, and uh, Jaden's eyes go back to normal. But, and Jaden is, like, very thankful to, like, hear his voice, right? Because, like, he's one of his friends who survived, you know? But despite this, because Cyrus still has the doubt emotion, he, he actually verbally berates Jaden and, like, tells him, like, how shitty of a person he is and, like, why would you ever do that? And... You know, you left us behind, and blah, blah, blah. Jaden is just stunned, and then Cyrus walks away. And then in a really badass line, uh, so Axel and Jim start to follow Cyrus. Axel turns around and is just like, I thought I told you to wait. And, and fucking walks away, and Jaden is just Damn. Like, fucked. Oh. He's mind break dojin. You know, J Jaden's broken. He, he is sitting there. He doesn't know what to do. What happens but a little card drifting through the wind lands right in front of him. And a little, sh in a shadowy, so we, we kind of zoom in on Jaden and we, we kind of see what, like, like the darkness inside Jaden. You know, he's done something pretty fucked up. But, but we see a shadowy figure behind him who's like, come on, Jaden. 
you can com you can now complete the super polymerization card. All you need to do is oh. just like absorb like dual energy from people. You know, send in the dub it's like send them to the stars, but it's really kill them. You know. So yeah, so I get the uh, of juice. Atticus, Chaz, Alexis, Hasselberry dead. They're all dead. So Wow. <laughs> after this though, with we're in this weird kind of dark, unfamiliar situation. The, sh the story sh shifts away from Jaden momentarily. We go back to Axel and Jim and Cyrus, right? So who are the other three surviving members who, uh, you know, kind of ran away after, you know, kind of realizing what Jaden had done? So... Raise his paw. Yes, Tony, bro. Is si does Cyrus still have, like, the doubt thing? Or did he, like... He still has it. He still has it. Okay, okay. It's kind of a weird thing though, where it kind of it appears like kind of when he gets kind of heated, you know, starts thinking about Jade, and he kind of gets that uh, emotion. Remember, Jim, Cyrus, and Axel; those are the surviving three. But remember also that Aster and Zane were caught up in the anomaly. So where are they? What are they doing? So, throughout the time, you know, we're in this dimension. We hear little inklings, right? So. Jaden kills Braun, Mad King of Dark World, but apparently that isn't the final boss. The final boss is someone we know as having the title of the Supreme King, who we do not know who it is. Despite this, uh, you know, the Supreme King is the leader of the Dark Forces. You know, he's over somewhere else. We have no idea who he is, where he is, we haven't seen him, but we just know that he is the leader of all these Dark Forces. Uh. Let's continue. We come to see who this Supreme King fellow really is. And uh, we see him after he goes and destroys a village and kills everyone in it. So Axel and Jim decide to go and try and beat the Supreme King. While Cyrus makes an interesting decision to kind of be there as a bystander. Um, to in order to find Jaden, most importantly, and watch over him. That is what Cyrus wants to do now. That is his like goal slash motivation. He even like threw away his dual disc, but then like got it back later from Zane. So Cyrus met up with Zane and kind of you know had a little like emotional talk about you know Jaden and like. There's kind of a recurring bit in the sub, so Cyrus calls Jaden Aniki, who we know, you know, it's like big bro. Aniki. And, um... Aniki. Yeah, I watched Gurren Lagan. So the the meme, you know, is like, Cyrus considers Jaden more of a brother than Zane ever was, right? Because, you know, Zane was Cyrus's older brother. And he, yeah, but he's, he's just like of, an aloof asshole. Yeah, and, uh... You know, Cyrus always lived in his shadow and whatnot. Where's his pa? Yes, no need, bro. Is, isn't Zane, like, evil now or something? Zane is not evil. He's what, what he's What he's done is, like, he's inherited a dark deck, right? Like, the dark uh, cyber deck. And, he, and he's dueling in a way where... It's flu It's kind of fucked up in the dub, but it, it makes more sense in the sub. He does not respect his opponents, nor his deck anymore. Mm. All he cares about is winning. That's kind of his oh, new he's like, idea. Raises Paul. Yes, he he's like he's like season one Seto Kaiba. He yeah. didn't give about anything. He fucking tore apart the yes. little toy dragon. What a dick. The, the word for it really is kind of like anti-hero, I guess. He's kind of like anti-hero. Like him and Aster, right? They kind of... Oh, like... Antifa. Yeah, yeah he's, got, he's got the getup. He's got the getup for sure. But oh, he's like definitely black. Antifa, for sure. But is he yeah. wearing his mask? Very important. Uh, they Zane, didn't need to... Zane they didn't, they didn't need those back... They didn't need those back in 2003 or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh. And this was all after one loss. He lost one fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he, well, he's, he went Batman no, beat it was a shit spiral. once and he's like, I am the knight. It was a spiral. He, he went on a losing streak. He, he didn't just lose once. Um, okay, okay. Way, okay. way back there. Axel and Jim, right? So, Jim, the Australian guy. Axel, 
the the II agent of originally from West Academy, you know, the champion, right? So Axel and Jim are like essentially the last two besides Aster and Zane, who we, you know, see later. So they decide to go challenge the Supreme King, like I said, after he destroyed village and killed people. Jim calls out to the Supreme King from like a from like a high point, challenging him to a duel. And what we know about Jim, right? You can tell his character design is so awesome. It's great. So he has bandages around his right eye. So we don't know what's going on there. But what we do see revealed here is that it was like an injury, essentially. And what got put in place of that eye was an eye of Orichalcos. Oh my god! What? Which, in, you know, what? the Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh! verse mythos, you know, Orichalcum is like a, like a special, like, material. That's like season one shit! Or not season one, but series one. Wait, yes. wait, raise his paw. Yes, Kudro. Uh, or, it's, or, is it Ori Halcom? It's like, it's like the anime version of Adamantium. They have it in Black Cat. Uh, Google Rizpa. the pronunciation of the word. It is Ori Halcom. But, yeah. Really? Ah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. And, um, but, uh, in the dub, it's Ori Kalkos. In the sub, it's Ori Halcom. Raises okay, okay, so it is the same thing. Raises yes, Jelly. Pa. First. Uh, Oreo Cal Hum. That is all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good bit. Pause. No oh, need yeah, he's got the fucking cowboy hat. Okay. Uh, is this, if it is the same thing, it's basically like there's some ancient spirit from Atlantis who like also wanted to like destroy the world at some point. Yeah. And like it's also an alien somehow. I don't remember why or how. Mm-hmm. And that's like, Didn't you watch the Spirit Science Lecture? <laughs> um yeah with this Scorpion. magic eye by the way guys magic eye yeah so so one of the things when they came to like the newest dimension they were in was that there is a blazing blue meteor just in the sky oh. and the thing is is that jim will know when the time to use his eye is is when the meteor is coming at him he sees the meteor coming at him in red in red, specifically. So, Jaden, or, sorry, Jim, reveals that information about him to Axel. And they go to challenge the Supreme King to, you know, to, to free that dimension, you know, like, from the dark forces. But here's the deal. Jim yells out and challenges him. And the Supreme King is chilling outside of his castle. The Supreme King looks up and lifts up his visor and who is it but Jaden, of all people, is oh, the Supreme fuck. King? What? Fuck. Oh, fuck. So, yeah. that is a big bag to unpack, let's just say. so. That's a big bag. Jim duels the Supreme King in order to get the real Jaden back. You know, using his special eye, he can see into Jaden's heart. Basically, you know that that's the cool thing about his design is like that's what was hidden behind there the whole time and stuff. So, Jim tries his best. He he uses his fossil slash earth deck like to its just maximum potential, but unfortunately he narrowly loses the duel. <gasps> the the reasoning for this being that. Oh. Jaden has new heroes. He has evil heroes. That's his thing. Oh, shit. And evil he heroes. fuses them with dark fusion, which has, like, an added benefit of, like... I don't remember exactly what the effect is, but I think it, like, protects them from destruction on that turn or something. Uh, Simon, look that up. Uh, thanks. Wait, what am I looking at? Sorry, dark say that again. Fu- dark fusion. So, uh... Raise his paw. Yes, no need, bro. Where is the doubt element? Uh, Cyrus is still chilling with it. He, you know, he's become like a bystander now. He's just, he's no, off. No, 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 like. What? 
like don't they need it to create a dark fusion card this is another one of those memes where they just bait you oh well they didn't need all four i'll explain it here oh five in this do you want me to read the text of five yeah so do you want me to read the text of this card go go ahead yeah go ahead send from your hand or side of the field to the graveyard, fusion material monsters that are listed on a fiend type fusion monster card, and special summon that card. Uh, and, and yeah, that that fusion monster from your fusion deck. The special summon is treated as a fusion summon. Uh, the special summon monster cannot be targeted by the effects of other monsters, spells, or traps this turn. Cannot be targeted by effects this turn. That's pretty sick. So yeah. Oh, raises paw. Yes, could you? Yes. Uh, real quick uh, callbacks since we're looking shit up. Uh, Ori how. Oi Halcom is not made up anime uh, metal. It's a real precious metal that Plato said was used to build Atlantis. Yeah. There you go. I don't know. It's also in Kingdom Hearts and stuff. So. It's a kind of a common Japanese thing. No, Niba? It, 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 it's yeah. just super magic stuff. Yes. So... Jim narrowly loses that duel against Jaden and his new deck. The reasoning being, Jaden uses super polymerization, so <gasps> which happened to be completed because of all the innocent like people he killed. Like the, their energy like finished the card. He didn't even need the fifth orb apparently, for mm. whatever reason. But yeah, like super poly is nasty. Yes, you go. The people he killed here, or is this like the 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 people who he accidentally put into a coma because his card girlfriend right was like overprotective. <laughs> Remember, Jaden is Tanic, He is the supreme king. So right. oh. this is what this is what this is. So underlined right here is war crimes equal good because that's what he <laughs> just did. Yeah, <laughs> he literally yes. raised a village and killed a man, many yep. people. It's because good, of this. Uh... good, great. Based, and, good oh, nothing it wrong. Like... Nothing wrong with a little war crimes. Just a yeah. treat. See, see, what's so great here though is to to paint the picture right of how season one contrasts so much to season three. Uh, you know, yeah. Here we have this heroic, you know, saving the school and whatnot. In season three, we have war crimes, the trolley problem, um, you know, <laughs> at, all this uh, card homicides, uh, and, yeah. and all that stuff. Je- Jelly, Fuck. what are you, what yeah. are you doing? Okay. I'm a little confused. Is this future Jaden? How did he suddenly become the king? Okay, remember, like, like thirty minutes ago, I I probably explained so how Jaden was like so shocked and and like after he killed his friends and stuff. Right. Remember, the shadowy figure that told him to complete the super polymerization card is what we know as the Supreme King. It's 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 the same silhouette, you know. Once you you see the silhouette, and then you okay. see the actual Supreme King later. Yeah. So that's how we know. Yeah. So Jim loses that duel. Because Jaden plays super polymerization on the final turn, fusing one of Jim's best monsters uh, with one of his own to create a monster that was just insane and just fucked Jim instantly. Because, as you guys know, may or may not know, super polymerization, you can fuse with components on either side of the field. So he literally uses Jim's monster for a fusion and just kills him instantly. Jim is dead. Face. No. Fuck Jim. <laughs> Dude, he, he was sick though. Australian. He had a pet crocodile. All the good stuff. Uh, the Australian representation is going to be on the right. Yes, Yes, Sunibra. What's up with the meteor? The, the the meteor was supposed to signify when Jim was supposed to like reveal the eye, and it was said, or it was like prophesized by some guy that he would like. His actions would save the world, quote unquote. And 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 when the meteor was coming towards him, that's when he would know that like the time was like approaching. So yeah. So he didn't use it. No, no, he did. He di- He he unbandages the eye for the duel. And what he believes that 
the difference in their life points uh, represented the the hold that the Supreme King had on Jaden. Oh, see. The duel is pretty even, actually. I mean, it looks like, you know, Jim's kind of at a big disadvantage, but life point-wise, it, it stayed... They're both very low at the end, if I recall correctly. Um, okay, so, so he was trying to, like, save Jaden. Yes, he, he was trying to, you know, release Jaden from what essentially is the, the Supreme King's clutches. And there, there's more on that later. So let's just keep keep a move on here. So Jim loses to the final play of Jaden using Super Poly. The result of this duel, Jim losing, scares the shit out of Axel, who until now was this like mercenary, brave, like super buff guy, kind of like who we thought is like really stoic up until now. And like nothing gets to him and like, you know, he's built up as this badass. He, like, gets the shit scared out of him by the Supreme King. And he, he mm. runs away, like, sc like screaming. Uh, he manages to grab the eye. Because when Jim dies, the eye didn't go. Because oh the eye is like an... The eye is a material, right? Like, it's not a person, you know? Yeah. So it just becomes a little orb, essentially. And he grabs it, and then he dips then we go back to zane and aster who we now know you know are here are here in the same dimension because they're they're searching to they're using trickery and you know they're kind of they're kind of anti-hero personalities to kind of weaken the supreme king's forces and to go take them down zane finds axel i believe and confirms the truth in that the supreme king is jaden how okay so they there's like one like remaining stronghold of like the people there and shit and and axel is kind of shown to have uh some development of like trying to become a leader really and he tries to like lead those people and he finds out that the dual monster spirits that were like kind of their you know the village's leaders at the time were actually fake and were working for the supreme king so uh, he deposes them in front of everyone, and uh, he tries to set up real battle plans to actually go against the Supreme King and his army. That being said, Axel does get help from, I believe, Cyrus, Zane, and Aster, right? Like, the only remaining people, pretty much, to finally go and assault the Supreme King's castle. Uh they are able to do this. Because they disguise themselves as, like, you know, darkness boys. They have, like, black arm. They get this, like, black armor and stuff. And I see. In a cool moment, they ride Zane's cyber dark dragon in. Because it's kind of, like, fitting with the theme. <laughs> okay. yeah. And they're able to get in. So it's pretty sick. Thanks. Then we get a really cool series of events. Where it's this epic, like, like shonen-like... Because that's kind of what GX, like, really is. It's kind of, like... It's very similar to, like, a shonen. So, Axel wants to go against the Supreme King, actually. He, he's kind of uh, got his confidence back after helping out that, uh, that last village. They try, like, the three of them try to get to the Supreme King, but uh, they get kind of caught up. And Zane sticks behind, and he's like, Oh, you guys, go on ahead. Keep going. You know, I'll hold this guy off. And then... They they reach like another dude like this this dark magician like not dark magician but like a darkness like bad magician guy. Uh, Aster is like I'll hold him off. You go ahead, Axel. And uh, and Axel gets to duel the Supreme King. Finally, the uh, the result of that is very interesting. Because if if you would have uh, remembered what I said previously, Jaden loses three times in the series. And remember that he doesn't lose past this point so what happens is they have a very heated duel and it comes to a draw it comes to a draw where it's interesting because axel uses the eye to finally save Jaden and break past like the darkness that was like surrounding his heart or some shit and the eye ends up breaking but we save Jaden. we do save him but interestingly, because...
because of the result of this duel, for some reason, Axel just fades away, um, as if he dies, which is really strange because I guess I guess we were never told what the result of a draw would mean for uh, yeah. um, people people's lives. So um, it's a really good duel, and some of the better music uh, in the series plays, which uh, I have set as my uh, Edo background duel music, which is sad <laughs> duel, sad duel, sad. What a name. And and that being said, like, everything is back to normal, right? But not really, because, like, everyone's dead, you know? Yeah, every, yeah. Half, like, like two-thirds of the cast is just dead. So, Jaden and the surviving few. Cyrus, Aster, Zane. Uh, they're all kind of chilling, kind of helping Jaden, like, recover and like recuperate his strength because he was like you know kind of resting afterwards and uh yeah he committed a lot of murders that must have been yes. really hard for him we yeah. then see if you guys remember echo and crowler finally show up oh my ah. fucking god after like a long ass time yeah so they meet up to to chill that night, fog surrounds everyone, and they are transported into a cave where Adrian is there. Adrian, who, who's been literally missing since the end of uh, the, the second part of uh, being in another dimension. Wow. Adrian has yeah. literally been missing uh, since the Rainbow Dragon send everyone home. He's literally been missing since then, which is the right. span of like... Ah, uh, gee, I don't know. A decent amount of episodes, but... Yeah, yeah, we finally see what Adrian is up to. And remember, all the way back then, Marcel left behind some cards. And what were they? The pieces for Exodia. So Ooh. Adrian took <laughs> the Exodia deck. And he plans to release uh, and, and control Exodia in this realm. Because remember, dual monster spirits are real. Exodia! Yes. Yeah. This is a really fucked up moment, though. Because Adrian wants to sacrifice Echo in order to achieve that power, in order to get the wow. powers of Exodia. We, we see beforehand, uh, Aster commented on how Echo had a locket with a picture of Adrian in it. So, so Aster, who, who established a connection to Echo because of that locket before, is m really mad and confused as to why Adrian would do this. Like, like, he's like, Adrian, Echo loves you. Like, why would you do this? You know? Like, that's, you're gonna fucking kill someone just for power? You know, that's kind of fucked up. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> Adrian is using an Exodia deck but with the new twist of Exodius, the ultimate forbidden lord. Whoa. Now, this this uh, is very funny. I'll try to throw an image on screen in post, but Exodius, the ultimate forbidden lord, is literally the Coomer meme. When <laughs> Adrian sends Exodia parts to the grave, which is like part of his effect, only his right arm gets bigger? It's really strange. Huh? <laughs> so, Coomer Man, before the Coomer Man meme. Keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, Race is upon. Yes, Rito. Uh, I figured you'd have something to say. Well, not about the Coomer stuff, but so so we've established <laughs> that, like, uh, dual monster spirits are real, right? Yes. And so, like, people like, uh, Chaz and Judai are, are, can see the dual monster spirits, right? Like, yes. What? What is 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 that coming, or is it, what? What is established that like allows them to see, uh, these these spirits? Because not not ever not everybody can see them, right? Yeah, yeah. Not everyone can. It, it's only like those with like a strong connection to their cards or whatever, you know. But but because yeah. remember. 
we're in the alternate dimension. They are real, and we can see them. And that they are enemies, actually. That's what the whole dark world, dark army thing was. Was um, you know, they are they are they have their own archetype. They are cards. Yeah. Maybe right. But not not exclusively, right? Like uh uh. What, it's kind what, of a weird hybrid. It? Like they are uh, characters, but in a rea in a like, in reality they are cards too. Well, well, like the the Ojamas were visible before they were like enemies, right? Or yeah, yeah, Chas could see them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, race is poor. So, so, yes. so to see the the dual spirits, you have to have say the heart of the cards. Is mm. that they bringing that back? Are they bringing that back? Mm. They did it. Mm. Okay, who who some someone else raised Pa? Right? Me, me. No need for Pa. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, like this is the you know alternate dimension number two. So back in alternate dimension number one, weren't the cards also real? Any alternate dimension that wasn't Earth, they were real. Okay, they were <laughs> real. So they could just like. So what makes Exodus so special? Because the other dude did summon him. Well, he's just, uh, he's just OP. Like, it's Exodia. Well, okay. Yeah, you just win. You just fucking win. I mean, when Exodia, you, you summon Exodia is like the devil kind of, like, it's kind of related to, like, the devil, quote unquote. Uh, yeah. I'm not mistaken. The tarot so, card? Okay. Or, like, the devil who, like... No, no like, he, he is the devil. forbidden one. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so... And, like, he required a human sacrifice for some reason? Like, is that how? I don't know. But, yeah, he... So, Adrian wants to sacrifice Echo. His his childhood, like, peer, servant, girlfriend, lover... Like, he just yeah. wants to... He just wants to <laughs> they throw wanna fuck. her to the side. They wanna fuck. Let's just be clear. They wanna fuck. Yeah. Yes, and that's why it's so messed up. Because he wants... He, he just wants to sacrifice her for the powers of Exodia. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, wow. That's interesting. Base. Base. <sighs> Epic. Chad, Big Tao. Adrian and Aster fight. Like I said, and Exodius is in play. Yeah. And Adrian beats Aster, and Aster dies. Cyanide. Wow. Aster. Rip Aster. We see Aster dies, and Adrian starts roaming the dimension, riding on Exodia's shoulder. Cool. It's pretty neat. Yeah, that's sick. So the remaining crew, you guys remember the whole the whole point of this, the whole bit of this was to find Jesse, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah we yeah, forgot I about that like forty episodes ago, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so they want to go find Jesse because apparently, despite Chaz dying early, despite. Yes, despite uh, making up 13% of uh, dual cards, <laughs> the Ojamas commit 51%. Uh, oh my god, that's a lot of Ojama cards. <laughs> the Ojama Yellow is still alive for some reason, and, and he was tagging with Cyrus um, for the majority of this time. I, I kind of forgot to bring that up. It's kind of a minute detail. But uh, Ojama Yellow, he sees three little like fairy spirits, and he like wants to impress them, right? He's like... I'll do anything for you, you know? And then uh, the spirits ask him, Hey, have you seen Jesse? And he's like, yeah, of course, in like a joking manner. Like, yeah, I've totally seen Jesse, man. I totally saw him. Yeah. That was, uh, was pre-Supreme King Assault. So that was like right before that. But the weird thing is that he was actually right. Because Ojama Yellow saw this cloaked figure behind them when they entered the last village. And that was actually Jesse. It's just, uh, it was kind of silhouetted, and we kind of could, couldn't see who it was. But when we come back to him remembering that, uh, we, we zoom back in, and we do see that it is Jesse. But something is a little off. Jesse normally has, like, these, like, light green eyes. This Jesse has orange eyes. That oh, is no. very confusing. He got Norded. Yes. Got Nord VPN. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So Adrian so so Adrian really quickly, so he has the powers of Exodia and whatnot, and 
he's kind of searching for Yubel, right? Because he kind of he kind of wants revenge, you know, like in a, in a way he he wants to be the ruler of the world, uh, and Yubel is kind of like that last obstacle for him, as it is like a similarly very strong spirit of you know equal strength to Exodia, which is like pretty insane. Or, or more. Yeah, so Yubel is probably like an equal or greater question mark uh, spirit compared to Exodia, right? Raising my palm. Yes, Jelly first. So, if it, it, what about the, the god cards? Aren't they the strongest card? Yes, but remember they disappeared. Simon, they disappeared at the end of the first series? Yes, because that's how the Pharaoh was able to, like, be freed, is that they, yeah, the god cards were, like, in the... Yeah, it was the whole thing. Okay. God cards basically don't exist. In Raise his paw. No need, bro. Uh, and I was just gonna comment also on that. Like, I, I watched a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh, including these two. Like, to be clear... At different points in the show, some random ass card just shows up and it is as strong or stronger than the, you know, strongest cards ever. Yeah. So, like, you know, yes. it, it's a team. Yes, there, but, there, but there is reasoning, like, there. Like, it, they, they, they don't just pull it out of their ass. It, it's because, so, so with Neos, right, he has the powers of, like, the gentle darkness, essentially. The Gentiles. Which is, like... <laughs> like, you know, a, a power, like a natural power of the universe that, like, represents, like, you know, 50% of it or, or whatever. And, mm, um. 50%, huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah, so. Bro, have, have you heard of the Mayas, bro? Because we later learn about the Mayas, and apparently those, like, had, like, world bending destiny and then, like, super triple cards too you know it's so cool yeah it's it's very strange very strange you, you, <laughs> re saying. remember guys this... way back here gx was supposed to be the last series guys yep, yep. <laughs> like i'm just yeah. saying it's so kooky and quirky how like you know like every like i don't know a couple of years some random three four cards just show up that are like you know world ending strong yeah yeah yeah, so so continuing where we left off though, so so Ojama Yellow does the meme of like, oh, I totally saw Jesse, but he actually did, he actually did. Here's the funny bit. Then we cut to like Jaden, Zane, Cyrus, Crowler. They're like the only ones left. Uh, you know, they're setting out, you know, kind of through a desert, not the same desert from before, but just a desert, and they they kind of get caught up in a sandstorm. Where it's literally some Kingdom Hearts tier bullshit of a door <laughs> appears in front of them. Right. And, and it's just like, oh man. But uh, yeah, so this door appears. Jaden wants to go through the door. Uh, he feels that like, you know, the final battle is like waiting or whatever. But remember, Jaden. <laughs> yeah, what's up? He read the script. <laughs> Is that the script over yeah. there? <laughs> Fuck you, Simon. Fuck you, Simon. War crimes. He was—he literally committed war crimes. And uh, so, so you know, he's like, he kind of has his self doubt, right? Like, uh, <coughs> he doesn't think that he can you know, duel <laughs> up to an appropriate level, or you know, he's kind of lost his confidence, really. And, and it's just such a stark contrast. The optimistic like tone of season one, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so Jaden duels Zane uh, before they enter the door in order to, to sure. test if Jaden was ready. In which Jaden was not, because he decided <gasps> not to use cards that would have won him the duel. Oh my god! Face palm. Jaden sets, goes back. He goes backwards where they came from, to, to to where he he scouts out. All the places he fucked up, right? All the villages and, and all that kind of thing. So, Cyrus tags along because he's still doing the I'm observing him thing. Jaden, you know, he, he observes the consequences of his actions, right? And, you know, what he did 
as the Supreme King. He fucking murked people. He fucking killed them. So, <laughs> Jaden gets into a duel with his last remaining, uh, like, darkness commander. Uh, we saw Zane and Aster kill two of them. And then the, the other ones probably died off screen. So, there was one more remaining who challenges yeah, you know, Jaden yeah. to a duel. Jaden has kind of an identity crisis of, like, look what fusion look what i did to the world with fusions you know i, I don't want a fusion summon anymore what if it <laughs> happens again you know that kind of thing Jaden duels his last darkness commander but he beats him without using fusions which is interesting he he does this by playing a spell card that like represents how he was feeling at the time which is revoke fusion which is literally a card where he, he winds up doing a nasty combo to actually beat the guy. And after that duel, finally, Bastion catches back up to where they were. Because Bastion got left behind earlier on when they first came back to the uh, other dimensions. Best, uh, Bastion got left behind with, with Tanya again. They met up back there. It wasn't really relevant at the time, but... Bastion catches up. He believes this. That Jaden and the Supreme King are two sides of the same coin. And that he should learn to control that power instead of being afraid of it, you know, consuming him. Consume. Yes, consume. And, and Bastion states, you know, that, that that's a pat, that's a part of him that he should uh, learn to master. Let's just say. Jaden, because of the weirdness of the situation, he wins the duel without fusing. But that, like, that, it's just like, why? Like, he's st so, like, he's clearly still not confident in, like, doing it, right? Because right. he, he did it with, you know, he beats the Darkness Commander without fusing. So... Then we cut back to the door. Who comes door. walking out of the door but Jesse? Oh, but oh. Oh. it's you fell oh possessed Jesse. Yo. Which oh my is God. why, which is why Jesse had orange eyes. Keep that in mind. That explains everything, wow. Sean. Yes. <laughs> And, uh, and, yeah, I mean, sure, sure. We, uh... uh, uh <laughs> this is, like, one of the best duels in the series, though. So... Wait, is this... Put this? your yes. fucking no, paw no. down! Goddamn. Oh, was... What is it? What is it? Is, is Jesse trans now? Yes. Everyone yes. is trans. I, sh I should have wrote that down. Everyone is trans. Cards Trans rights. Days. I'm gonna die! Okay, so... Zane, see, see, Zane up until now has been has been looking for the ultimate duel, so to speak, and he figures that Ubel is his fight is is that duel, basically. Zane duels them, and it is just an insane duel back and forth. You know, both decks kind of rely on bringing out big beater dragons. You know, with four thousand oh, or more yeah. attack points. It kind of like encapsulates Zane's arc because all the underground dueling catches back up to him. All the duels with the shock collars finally catch back up to him. And we saw this before when he dueled, when Zane dueled Jaden because the duel got stopped because his heart stopped, um, which was crazy. So he duels Yubel as a last ditch attempt to fight that ultimate duel despite the condition his body is in. Zane, he, it, it's such a Kino ending because he literally just whips his dick out on the table and just fucks <laughs> him with it. Because yeah. Zane <laughs> goes out on his own terms. Wow. And the way that this happens in the duel is that Zane power bonds for cyber end dragon right yo uh, which yeah. we know is a very risky play as you only Wait, have four thousand life points so we if you take know. power uh, power bonds damage you just fucking lose so so Jaden attacks rainbow dragon 
with a power-bonded Cyber End Dragon. Yubel Possess Jesse uses the ability of Rainbow Dragon to increase its attack points to 10,000. But then Zane plays a spell that removes Cyber End Dragon from play and then brings it back with double attack points. Oh, Thus, oh. He, like, that's what I mean when he just whips his dick out. He shows, I have the bigger yeah. dragon. That's literally what yeah. that is referring to. In that Cyber End Dragon then doubles and then doubles again, so it's 16,000 attack points. But unfortunately, of course, Zane's turn ends and then Power Bond just kills him. Yeah. So, so that shit's pretty rad. Sick. It is, it is Kino. It is Kino. So, Yubel go, is, is, like, gets kind of tired by this duel, goes back through the door. <laughs> I'm and, tired, guys. I'm going to head out. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I am going to head out. <laughs> So, the uh, the final kind of, like, area is, like, this kind of, like, converging, like, middle of all dimensions, I guess. It's kind of like the in-between space, where there just is a big floating throne. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And Yubel comes back, you know, Yubel possessed Jesse, whatever, uh, comes back thinking, you know, ah, gonna go back and sit on my throne. Who is there but... Adrian, one of the last surviving people, <clears throat> and he is there to challenge Yubel with, you know, his Exodia powers, right? So, Yubel duels Adrian with the Sacred Beast deck, and right. in a twist of events, what Yubel manages to do in this duel is... You know, obviously she's using the Sacred Beast deck, but then, in the final play, Yubel summons Yubel to win oh. this duel. Oh. And, uh, that's pretty sick. <laughs> is it so, just like there's two Yubels hanging out? Like, is that it? Well, no, because remember, it's still, it's still Jesse, right? So, oh, right. Um, oh, right, 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 right. So, we see the, we finally see Yubel summoned here um and if you guys don't know yubel's quirky ability is that she does not she has zero attack points does not take damage and reflects it um uh, can't be destroyed by battle and reflects all damage like back to your opponents right so she so she plays a card that summons like a big monster to adrian's field but gives her two tokens which she then sacrifices to summon herself, attack the big monster, the damage reflects, and then she just wins. This also kills the spirit of Echo, which, you know, <gasps> like, fueled, the, like, you know, was like the source of power for, like, the Exodia, right? Or, like, Exodius, really. Yubel makes the Exodia plan fail, and then he goes back to using, like, clouds and fog, and then yeah. he goes back to using Exodia again. And he loses. And in a typical fashion, it's the, it's the, you know, oh, one more turn and I would have won. You know, like I would have, you know, used the ability to gotten the final piece of Exodia or whatever. One more come. Come on. One more coom. One more coomer man. One more use of his ability, he would have won. I actually don't know if that's the case, but that being said... Yubel wins, like I said, via the summoning of herself. She also, like, she kills him, right? And she, like, sucks his energy. And then, she, you know, Yubel is, like, restored, basically. She's not tired anymore. Yubel, Typical like, woman. finally, they get path. the final battle. Yeah, well, what's up, Nanny Bird? As for our boy Adrian, who just killed his, like, wife, girlfriend. Yes. And then just died. It's really messed up. Remember. Remember, lads. Children's card game anime. I heard yeah, the you know. first word. <laughs> huh? Yeah. So. <laughs> wait, 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 what did what did Kappa mean again? Sarcasm, like it. Sarcasm. That's what, okay. You know, like it's like there's all this like crazy, weird, like insane, <laughs> like death shit, but it's like children's card game anime, right, oh, guys? Fuck. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Yubel waits for Jaden. Finally, the final battle is about to commence. Oh my god. Jaden <laughs> duels to get Jesse back. What's what's up, Nunny, bro? 
No, I didn't say anything. Go, go, go. Let's fucking do this. <laughs> was that, that was fucking jelly? jelly. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was jelly. Like, oh, oh, oh. Finally, the final battle, right? <laughs> Jaden duels the Yubel possessing Jesse. Yeah. Jaden, this is a good duel to where it shows that Jaden finally like gets his confidence back. He actually fuses, which is good. His E heroes come out as spirits, which like doesn't happen very often, and they like kind of give him a pep talk before the duel. So that's pretty sick. Well, give him a little, you know, hand job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Jaden duels her to get Jesse back, which, as we remember, is the original goal of this whole mission. Mm-hmm. So they duel in you know very you know roughly, and uh, you know a lot of big summons, crazy comebacks, and eventually we come to this. Jaden draws super polymerization. Which, as we know, <laughs> as a card that, you know, kind of was, like, fucking everything up. You know, yeah. when he was a Supreme King, though. Should he had a he dark history it? with that card. But what but what we see is is Jaden with the glowing eyes, but he is controlling it. He's not letting it overtake him. Yeah, so uh, this is the fucking last paper, boys. Let's see. Holy oh, shit. Oh. Holy shit. Holy shit. So, yeah, Jaden... Jaden draws so he he super polys neos and a dark rainbow dragon because you can use a uh, normal or the dark version to make rainbow neos pretty crazy mm. that spells the end for the duel essentially until yubel plays a trap where she gets to steal a spell card and she play i think it's an, another trap that deals them both damage to where the duel results in a draw. Oh. However, most importantly, her hold on Jesse uh, is no more. She takes her real full form and uh, and like f- fucking zooms on up. Fucking zoomer. Yep. Yubel is for the Chads out there. Chad zoomers. Jaden follows her, and there's kind of an emotional scene with Cyrus. Where, where, you know, Jaden kind of tells him he's going on a journey to grow up. That's kind of what he's going to do. And what we finally see after all this time is the uh, the doubt orb pops out of Cyrus and explodes. So that's pretty sick. So you, you were asking about that, Noni, bro. That's what happened. That, <laughs> that is uh, when that gets resolved. Wow. Jaden tails you, Bell, and they duel for the final time in another big three-parter. Up until now, we've had the pieces of the backstory, but finally it's all kind of explained to us at this point. Lord, 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 Lord. Yes, so I saw I saw a funny comment that was like, you, Bell, wants to unite the 12 dimensions to, to be with Jaden. Uh, way more yandere than uh, Yunogasai. I thought that was a very funny yeah. comment that I saw. Yeah, that is very funny. Got the whole squad laughing. Um, yeah. <laughs> they have a, like, you know, they kind of have a back and forth duel that kind of, you know, explains all their backstories a little more. How Yubel kind of feels like betrayed by Jaden and that this is like a really weird sense of him giving her his love in a strange like way via him sending Yubel up into space. And we finally get explained what happened up there. So Neos got hit with gentle darkness. Yubel got hit with light of destruction rays and that's why she's mm-hmm. like acting so evil and fucked up. She's killed like she's killed or been involved in the killing of you know Jaden's friends up until now and possessing and it's kind of crazy. She wants so she steals Super Polly right, and she's gonna use it to fuse the twelve dimensions into one. <gasps> That's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. The duel concludes like this. Yubel wants to play Super Polly. She first plays a trap that lets her select monsters levels one through twelve in order to, prefer, to, to perform a fusion summon, which it's just a representation of fusing the 12 dimensions. Right. Jaden, remember, you cannot counter Super Poly. Uh, it, it is a card that, like, 
when it's played, like you, your opponent cannot activate cards like in response. Yeah, they can't react. Jade plays a trap that counters the first trap that Yubel played to let her select the twelve components, right? So Jade encounters that trap, which then I believe lets him use super polymerization instead. Oh. Jaden gets the card back and uses it in an interesting way. What, despite everything, despite everything that's happened in just this season, uh -huh. one of the themes is forgiveness, right? We forgave Kage Maru and tried to help him. We, we beat Sartorius and we realized that like, he was being like puffed and stuff. The same case goes here, which is very interesting. Jaden plays Super Polymerization and fuses their souls together. And what I like about this is that hot. It's, it, it's hot and it's just an <laughs> unprecedented move where, you know, Jaden, you know, up until now, he's been put in so many pickles, right? Of where, like, yeah. both <laughs> choices are. <laughs> are bad. I don't know why that's so funny. But Jaden finally finds some sort of, like, best of both worlds, uh, you know, make the most people happy type of solution. To where Yubel could be with him and, and, and be his guardian forever. As it is revealed that Jaden is a reincarnation of a past, like, like the Supreme King. He is a reincarnation of the Supreme King, who was originally oh. a long-ass time ago, like, a you know an heir to like a country and an heir to the powers of darkness you know said which were said to uh, counter the light of destruction is it perhaps an egyptian king no funnily enough so <laughs> oh that's oh, okay. un unfortunate Wait, uh, yes no nebra no it is not it, it's it's medieval kind of oh yes. okay yeah. kind yeah yeah kind of um <laughs> This is where, like, the important shit is. Mm -hmm. We see what Yubel really is. Because Yubel was the Supreme King's, like, friend. And it's, it's really... I didn't take gender studies, so I don't know how to, like, interpret, like... I just call Yubel she. Like, that's what I'm used to. Um, yeah. That's how the dub did it. Realistically, they're more... Gender fluid, I think, is the term that uh, we're looking for because uh, Yubel swaps, uh, like between uh, masculine and feminine voices, and and depending on who they're talking to and that kind of thing. I see. Yubel was the Supreme King's friend, who decided to become a dragon in order to protect the young at the time Supreme King, until he could control the powers of darkness. That is the whole basis for all of this rigmarole, all these fucking years later. As Jaden is the reincarnation. So, oh. emergency pop. Yubel, one second. Yubel, like, literally does a transition, essentially, into this, you know, what you see her as. And, and what's, what's interesting about Yubel's, Yubel's design is uh, half female, like, half male, literally. Like, you know, you can tell. So, yeah. you know, very muscly leg. And then, like, smooth leg, and then, like, tit, and then, like, peck, you know? Mm hmm And whatnot. Jaden? Okay, when he sent Yubel into space, Yubel cried out for him and tried to reach out to him. And this caused Jaden nightmares to where he could not sleep. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Nightmare, yes. nightmare, nightmare. <laughs> Jaden then, his parents make him get electroshock therapy to what forget you, Bell. To forget Whoa. everything about no. it. What the fuck? You're yeah, requiem for a dream. That's the key. That's the key tying like everything together, and and, and it makes sense now. You know that that Jaden. He was in episode one. He was so excited to you know finally duel and you know get accepted into this you know duel academy where we could duel people and whatnot. So yeah, I uh, think that's uh, about it. On the sea of questions. Okay, no need, bro. And not even that, because, like, if we go by that context, it means that he was shunned from, like, you know, playing with the other kids and stuff, and he doesn't even remember why. Yes. 
It's yeah. really, really messed up, actually. So, so remember here, children's card game anime. Children's card <laughs> game anime. Children's card Deep game anime. Deep things and messed up things? Uh, no, children's card game anime. No, children's no, no. card game anime. Okay, let's blow through this motherfucker. Skibby bump. Season four. God, remember when four. I said that tagline like like two fucking hours ago or something? God, I do. Here's it. Here it is for season four. Here it is for season. Four. Flagrantly forgotten, fantastic finale. That's oh, it. yeah. <laughs> Love okay, it. So, here's the autismo stuff. Here's the here's the big lore here. So, there is a guy who just comes up out of nowhere. Uh, oh, oh fuck! I totally forgot. Okay, no, no. So dub stops. Right. Everything past here is right. sub. Right. Here's the problem. If you were watching the dub, it ends on episode one fifty five. Where, oh. if you were just a dub watcher, you would think Jaden <laughs> is missing or dead. Um, mm-hmm. Zane is still missing. Like, everyone who kind of, like, died, like, besides, um, I forgot. Cyrus. I, Cyrus. But I forgot to mention, it does the standard meme of, hey, remember everyone who died? They got sent to hell dimension, uh, where yeah. they were getting their power sucked. Uh, they're not actually dead. Get they're dual so. juice. Yeah, so they <laughs> managed. They managed to bring everyone back, but you don't yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't see a, a Jaden or Zane or Adrian come back. I think is all who, who doesn't come mm-hmm. back. So, wait, wait a yes. second. What's Isn't... up? Uh, excuse me, raise this plot. Uh, yes, yes. fucking... The dude with the tiger girl, is did, doesn't he, like, also die at some point? We assume that he's just still back in the dimension with her, I guess. He just doesn't okay. come back to the real world? Right. Okay, so he just doesn't come back, okay. Okay, season, season four. Season four is great. It's, it's all about kind of, like... I know it's a big meme because of some people... But but it is about like dealing with depression, kinda. Cause you know, Jaden literally did bad shit. He killed his friends. He committed war crimes. He fucking did all that bad shit. You know, kill people. So this is like dealing with those problems, basically. So Jaden kind of likes to take everything on alone in this season. The first kind of bit of autismo lore is. With one Fujiwara Yusuke. He is a character who went missing. He was one of the missing students, as well as Alexis' brother, you know, uh, all, all the way back then. You know, uh, he went missing with Atticus. And he also went. See, this, this is where it gets complicated. There, there is this, like, there's the force, darkness. But there's also the entity darkness with a capital okay. D, so okay. it's really fucky. But what what we see now is a changed Jaden. He, he not only does his design change to what I think is actually better than season one through three, but uh, he 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 does like change in a sense that he now has a Bell inside of him. So that's kind of a weird. Yeah. A weird thing to deal with for for multiple reasons. Raise his um, paw. Yes, no, you Is Jaden trans now? Jaden is not trans. He houses a soul within him that is kind of trans. How about that? That good? Hmm. Okay, so, I mean, because you better. I'm glad we. I, kinda, you know. I'm glad we have some classic, like, Yu Gi Oh! dual monsters. There's a guy inside another guy's brain. Now. I love that. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. Yeah, so so Jaden is inside, or Jaden. Oh my God, Ubel is inside Jaden. It's kind of the weird thing, right? He doesn't want to tell his friends because they would kind of be weirded out by that. Uh, oh, why are you you're with Ubel? What does that mean exactly? Like you know, like she was involved with killing us, right? Yeah, so like that's a pretty like weird thing that Jaden kind of has to like say. It takes a while to get there. It all gets explained through. 
one good old Fujiwara. Because Fu what we see is Fujiwara shows up. This character who we've never met before, never seen before, acting like he just knows everyone. Oh, what's up, Chaz? You know, it's your, me it's your boy Fujiwara. We've been together here for, you know, three years and, and whatnot. And uh, it's really strange, but Fujiwara clearly has some sort of, you know, mystic or special powers. Uh, he's able to brainwash people and, you know, trick them into thinking that they know him. So clearly something's up. Yeah. Jaden investigates. Fujiwara is not who he seems. <gasps> Fujiwara is actually the dual spirit Honest, right? Oh we my all, god. We all remember him. We all remember Honest from uh, our dual tournament. Yeah. Where Honest was Fujiwara's card. And uh, Fujiwara, like, locked him away when he went to go acquire the powers of darkness. Um, similar to Atticus. If you guys remember Alexis, Alexis's brother Atticus, uh, it's the same case, basically. But Fujiwara took it a step further in that later we see revealed Fujiwara, he, he literally did a blood sacrifice to like give himself dark powers, essentially. Because he was so scared and so anxious of people forgetting him. That was his thing. So, so it, it kind of sounds, it's a little strange. The Fujiwara we see, like I said, is actually honest, disguised as Fujiwara. It is not actually Fujiwara. Because Fujiwara is, you know, someone who we actually haven't seen yet. But we we find him later, and he is possessed by darkness with like a very similar mask to how Atticus or yeah to how Atticus had it. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. What's up? Okay, brain like just fried. What's up? Did you just uh -huh. say this is like honest disguised as Fujiwara? Yes. The first Fujiwara we meet is actually honest disguised as Fujiwara. Okay. Later we meet gotcha. the real one. Who, okay. like I said, has the mask. The big like theme is like everyone's futures. Uh, we kind of see what everyone's plans are, because they are they will be graduating. This is their third year after all, so they will be graduating. We see what everyone kind of wants to do. Alexis, so they have a a, a couples like dual tournament, where Jaden is just kind of an asshole. His partner is Alexis, but he's just kind of an asshole and like wow, uh wins the duel himself without checking her cards at all. Without checking her set cards, you know. Despite it being, you know, two on, you know, two on twos. So, uh, Jaden, he understands this later when he's in the finals facing Hasselberry and Blair. Blair plays a trap to switch partners, which Alexis agrees to because Jaden is just being an asshole. Oh my god. But then... In a turn of events, uh, Jaden remembers how fun, uh, you know, dueling Alexis is. So Alexis then MSTs the, uh, the continuous trap that made them switch partners, and she switches back. Where, oh. Jaden set three cards for her to set up a winning combo to win the duel. Pretty sick. That's fun. We get trolled so hard after this duel, because we see Alexis waiting outside the red dorm like um for Jaden by some pipes and uh we think oh is she gonna do it is she gonna do it is she gonna confess and she, she's like Jaden you you help you really help me out with like a decision I had to make today uh but she doesn't tell him and he's like oh don't no need to thank me well just uh no he, need bro he starts to walk away hmm. prior to this she was kind of worried that, uh, you know, she hadn't seen Jaden smile in a while oh. because of, you know, everything that's happened. So Yeah, the, sh the shit stuff. As Jaden's walking away, he gives her the signature, you know, gotcha, uh, and, and smile. That is uh, his signature thing. But, of course, that's, you know, the sub because no dub. I don't know. I don't know what he would say in the dub, but it is what it is. <laughs> So yeah. Where's this paw? What's up, Nunibra? 
I knew I would have, like, you know, I should have just assumed that the girl in the show is in love with the main character. But, like, yes. did, did this, uh, th- does this go somewhere? So, Alexis, like, it seems like she, like, she's, like, gonna confess. Right. But then, like, she doesn't, and she just looks down and, like, wipes a tear from her eye. And it's like, uh... My boy gay. My boy is Jayden, gay. Jaden be like, I'm MGTOW. Uh, that's <laughs> no, I'm gay. I, I saw that on the board. It said more MGTOW than oh. usual. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what that relates to. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then uh, Alexis cucks, basically. Oh. Because uh, you bell just cucked her. Literally. Like, mm. based, though. So, yeah. Yeah. where is Jesse? Oh, after the events of season three, everyone goes back to their respective, like, school or branch, but Yeah, just Axel, go back to school, you know. Remember, Axel was actually an agent of Industrial Illusions, so, illusions, so he actually goes back to Domino. But, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah there, there's a really funny fucking line I'm going to show probably on screen in the video, which is, like, uh, it, it's when they're, like, doing shit with like honest and stuff and they're and alexis is just like you bells inside of Jaden," and it's just like a it's it's just a get cucked moment and it's really funny so in this season we we kind of get so what is like the villain right it's like it's darkness you know it's literally darkness so Ah, ah, you darkness you black midnight evil motherfucker black magic darkness you brawl darkness Darknesses! Darknesses! Cards get stained black because of the negative emotions fused into them. Oh. And and this is like This is like a natural like force, right? And it gets explained way later. Uh you know, we get some kind of miniature like I said with like everyone's futures thing, we kinda get like miniature character development and we get to see what everyone wants to do. You know, for example, Cyrus uh, inherits Zane's deck and mixes it with his deck, which is pretty interesting. Because, uh, you know, the deck, like, fucked up Zane. You know, that... So it wasn't the shock collars and underground dueling. It was actually the deck. Every draw of the Cyber Dark deck shocked Zane. So Alexis wants to be a teacher. She had the option wow. of staying at Duel Academy as a research student or going to a... Uh, North American College, which Headmaster uh, Shepard like recommended her for. Then uh, Cyrus, uh, after the you know deck mixing and stuff, he wants to create a pro dual league with Zane and Chaz. Chaz obviously wants to be like a pro, and we Chaz it up. Yeah, exactly. Chaz it up. It seems like things are going in the right direction, but clearly they have some doubts. Doubts in their you know, in their hearts, really. They, anxiety, fear. Uh, fear about the future. You know, the unknown, really. And uh, that's kind of an interesting theme because it means that those characters uh, later on get dragged into what we know as the world of darkness. Mm. Which, if you'll notice, mm. on this part of the board, says Ava slash TTGL type shit. Oh. Because the entity darkness wants to pull everyone into the world of darkness so everyone gets unified into one consciousness. Haven't you heard that yeah. one before, <laughs> huh? So um, Of course. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. That's pretty funny. It's pretty quirky. Pretty quirky. So yeah, that's kind of the goal there. And uh, funny you know, Mr. T, it, who also known as Truman is the messenger of darkness. Uh, Mr. Oh, T... Oh, wait. <laughs> it's not the black guy. In, it's it's a very <laughs> tall, lanky guy who's made of the dark cards, of the darkness. Oh, this card. guy is <laughs> sick. I'm looking at this guy. He is awesome. It's crazy. So, yeah, so that guy... So, Mr. T can, like, multiply infinitely? Or, as, or something drags people into the world of darkness, right? And, uh... Mr. T impedes Jaden along the way in various aspects. 
Um, for, for example, uh, Jaden goes against Sartorius again. Because Sartorius was kind of put into a, situa a situation where he had to duel Jaden or Serena would die, his sister. Sartorius checks Jaden's deck beforehand and puts a darkness card in there to uh, fuck him up, basically, and to cheat. So he can put him in a nasty combo. Uh, Jaden manages to get out of it and, and beat him and stuff. Interesting note, right? Mr. T, who's dragging everyone into the world of darkness, we see there... So what, what's special, right, is people who are dragged are gone and forgotten. The memories of other people who are dragged into the world of darkness, like, of others, are forgotten. Which wow. is very interesting. And another cool thing is we see citizens' registry lists, like, disappearing. We see citizens and they're disappearing. Another interesting thing. So, so... Jaden dueled Sartorius atop of the Kaiba Corp building, actually. And cool. he was in Domino because Axel was there. He went to, like, go save Axel, essentially. So he's in Domino City. He goes to the Kaiba Corp building with Sartorius uh, to fly away on a helicopter. But that was, like, Sartorius just baiting him. Jaden gets his card infected, like I said. It spreads to one of his other cards. So then, when Jaden goes back to the pier to go back to uh, Duel Academy, Jaden sees a Mr. T. But, like, they're being a little strange. Mr. T's like, yo, are you okay, dude? Well, what's up? It's actually Jesse. Uh, after they duel, uh, Jaden finally regains his, like, senses. Uh, and, you know, it changes from Mr. T to Jesse. Because only one person can control the Crystal Beast, if you'll remember. So. Mm hmm. Then they realize, oh shit, Jaden got baited. The real target was Duel Academy. They go back to Duel Academy. Then we get Jaden. Sorry, right before that, Atticus duels the real Fujiwara. Darkness Fujiwara. Who uses monsters without attributes. Clear monsters. It's pretty interesting. Hmm. And Fujiwara here, he does this quirky thing. The duel plays out. And it ends in a draw, actually, surprisingly. But then, out of nowhere, time rewinds through, like, everything we just saw back to a certain point in the duel. And Fujiwara is like, no, I actually won the duel here because I used the effect of my monster to negate its destruction and, uh, and win the duel. And that's where Fujiwara discovered <clears throat> the... The darkness in Atticus, uh, Atticus's heart, which was Atticus felt bad that he couldn't save Fujiwara and that he was missing for all that time. So Atticus ends up getting wrecked because time rewinds. And then it is a battle royale duel between Jaden, uh -huh. Jesse, and Fujiwara. We see. Wait, is pop? Yes, no need, bro. Is this the finale? We're we're like on the precipice. We're on like so 180 episodes. We're in we're in like the 160s, I think, at this point. Maybe even 170s. So yeah, so Fujiwara versus Jaden versus Jesse. Uh, they made it a battle royale because Fujiwara wanted to tr try to convince Jesse to attack Jaden. Which Jesse fakes like he's falling for it by like attacking Jaden and shit. But then he Jesse plays a trap that like reflects damage back to Fujiwara. And interestingly, Jesse sacrifices himself in this duel so Jaden can have a chance to beat Fujiwara. So what happens is he summons Rainbow Dragon, which has the ability to return all cards on the field uh, back to their owner's decks, I believe. And uh, Jaden, he, he brings out Neos, he uses a trap to revive Rainbow Dragon, and fuses them for Rainbow Neos. Also, Jaden, uh, I believe, already happened to have Honest on the field, because it's very interesting. Jaden uses Honest, Fujiwara's own card, against him mm. to beat him. So he uses Honest's ability on Rainbow Neos, to beat Fujiwara, who is then, like, saved, essentially. 
It does not just stop there, though, because we still have the final boss, which is Darkness, with a capital D. That's why, why, oh, that's why this bad boy I, is here. Darkness versus when Darkness. you walk away. Yes. <laughs> you don't hear me say. Okay, so, Darkness, the entity... I'll just be honest with you guys. It's Zack Death. It's literally Zack Death. I'm not even. <laughs> it's a skelly. It's a Ooh. quirky he skelly it. guy. He made it. So he made it to the lecture. Darkness here. He speaks Shakespearean in the subtitles, which is very. Oh. Interesting. Wow. And, and darkness is the is the the natural. Even though he is an entity, he he is like the. The culmination of the natural force of like everyone's like negative emotions and anxieties and whatnot, and, <laughs> and that's why. And he wants to like unify fucking consciousness and shit because like he believes that'll lead to you know better outcomes for some mm. you know, reason. Uh, so, yes. Yeah. It's, it's definitely insane. Zach. That. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. So Jaden duels darkness. That's like the final main duel. So. What's interesting is we finally see Yubel from Jaden's deck. Like, up until then, we, we haven't seen her. Like, she hasn't been anywhere. You know, she's been with her. Uh, uh, he, you know, she's been with him. And uh, Jaden often dons the eyes of Yubel to fight against, like, the mystical powers that, like, the Mr. T's and everyone else in, in fake Fujiwara were using. He uses the Yubel yeah. eyes as, like, you know, a way to, like, deflect that or whatever the fuck. Unfortunately, though, Darkness summons Yubel to his side of the field. Huh? It's like, oh shit, is Yubel gonna kill Jaden? Uh, Jaden plays a trap that makes the attack direct. And remember, Yubel has zero attack points. Right. Then, in a sick maneuver, Jaden pulls out... Uh, he has ne I think he has Neos on the field already. <laughs> But Jaden, okay, the other guy has Yubel, but he has a Neos. So he plays super polymerization, lads, and fuses them together. For a Neos Wiseman, who's pretty fucking OP, he deals big damage, then darkness counters. And then Jaden has to make a decision. When Yubel, or sorry, when Neos Wiseman dies, Jaden has the option to banish Yubel to revive Neos, which he does. And then, very fittingly, the final card that Jaden draws in this duel is none other than Polymerization. You know, the card that's gotten him through all of this stuff. And, you know, it's very fitting for, for a final draw, really, uh, against mm. the villain. And Jaden plays a trap. It's called Future Vision. He sends Polymerization and the, you know, the fusion components to the grave to summon god neos or divine no. so and that's pretty sick because it's like the fusion of every element you know all, all the neospatians because they also represent elements too and uh yeah god neos literally smites darkness it's pretty base however uh r right before that Jaden makes a really good speech i don't have it on me i don't e i don't have it memorized or anything but you know, he just kind of talks about, like, you know, cards, you know, the battles we fight, the cards we use, they're, they're infused, like, with our memories and our bonds, and, and that's, like, the true value and importance that just one card holds, you know, that, uh, you know, it's everything that you've built, you know, and, and a card that reminds me of that sort of thing, for me at least, uh, obviously is power bond just cause oh fuck mm -hmm. just cause of uh just cause of what I did to you guys which I do yeah, feel yeah, bad no. about yeah fuck you Sean <sighs> so yeah Jaden uh, he makes an epic speech which like causes everyone to like retake their individuality in the darkness world and like causes them to come back and then Jaden smites darkness uh, with God news yay so you might think that that's it right everything's over you know we're done here. We're almost done here. So you might think, okay, what are the final two episodes? Now, the final two episodes, if you guys remember, all the way at the beginning of the lecture on like page like one or two, 
I stated this. Jaden's final duel is one that is not against a rival or a partner. Right, not a right. rival, not a partner. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Jaden's final duel what does it mean? is against none other than Yugi Moto, ladies and gentlemen. <gasps> Yo! Oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Here's the deal. My boy. Jaden, so, so the Yugi deck is uh, the replica, right? It was yeah. a, it was a prize for a tournament that was being held in that season. Doesn't matter. Cyrus, Alexis, and Chaz like equally won that, but they decided not to take the deck. Jaden goes to check the deck because Wing Karibo said to, and yeah. none other than Yugi was waiting for him there, uh, where that deck was to, you know, explain to him, Jaden, uh, you know you. You're done great. You've grown to like a fine young man. Mm -hmm. However, along the way, you've lost something. And Yugi wants to send him to fight the ultimate duelist to retain what Jaden has lost. So you might be wondering what exactly that is. Jaden holds up the winged Karibo card to the replica of Yugi's deck. This mm -hmm. sends Jaden back in time to oh, what? just after, uh, I believe, Battle City. It's when Yugi still has the three Egyptian god cards in his deck. That would be, that would be a Battle City, yeah. Yeah, so right after, Battle, after City. Battle City. So Jaden goes back in time to duel Yugi in his prime, which is wow. fucking Kino. And, and, wow. and this is one of those things, right? Like, I, I really... It almost makes you think, like, the series kind of should have end, like, ended there, right? Because it's like this, like, new stuff and old stuff, like, colliding and crashing into a final duel. Mm -hmm. Holy fuck, we're almost done, boys. Okay. Jaden fights Yugi. It is an awesome duel. And they shuffle each other's decks. Which is interesting because... Jaden can literally, like, feel the overpowering aura of the god cards, like, emanating from his deck, which is pretty sick. I'm actually personally really frustrated with this duel. Mm hmm Because it's one of those, it's one of those weird cases. The result is inconclusive or whatever. Um, oh. And, uh, I like it and I don't like it. Because it, cause I like it in the vein that it's, it's up. It's open to your interpretation uh, as to who do you think uh, won. But like in my opinion, right? Jaden should have won that bitch. Cause like, just the way that the actual duel played out. First of all, because it's the anime, Yugi cheats like crazy, dude. Card oh, of yeah. uh, cards of sanctity. By the way, that's what that's bullshit as fuck in the anime. Uh, draw until <laughs> you have six. In, in real yeah. life, it's banish everything you control, draw two, which is, like, ah, okay. But Jaden, see, what's confusing, right, is Jaden plays multiple cards that he's never used before in this duel. And oh. they all backfire on him, which is, like, the most retarded thing ever. And I just hate that. And Yugi cheats to summon an Egyptian god, which is really frustrating. How so? Yugi plays a trap called Dark Renewal. Right. This is what I meant all that time ago about attributes being kind of important later. So the thing about Dark Renewal is that it's supposed to... Uh, so, so you tribute a monster from your field, tribute a monster from the opponent's field to then summon a dark spellcaster type monster. Right. Yugi captured a spell of Jaden's, which is called Code Chain. Code change allows you to change the type of monster that a, uh, you know, card effect targets. Yeah. So here's the thing. Type of monster. Not attribute and type of monster. Because Dark Renewal, you're supposed to summon a dark spellcaster. Yugi right. states that he changes the text to target Divine Beast. Like, but not the attribute. What happened right. in the attribute? It doesn't make any sense. So That's true. And also, just because of the themes, right, the, the build-up, what Jaden has gone through 
you know, his, his personal development and whatnot. It's it's all just reasons I think he should have won that duel, uh, right. opposed to you. And that is essentially the end of GX because they they fade out on what seems to be Neos attacking into Slifer, which is wow. fucking Kino because obviously that's what Jaden's dorm is named the fucking mm-hmm. Slifer Red dorm. So that is it. Uh, GX's final lines are like, don't remember exactly, I think it's, I'll keep on moving forward, gotcha, and that's like his signature, you know, instead of, um, you know, Jaden's get your game on, that's game, Judai does, uh, does gotcha, so that's his thing, and, uh, you know, he goes on, the. Uh, it's like specified in like the previous episode or something, Jaden, uh, goes to, on a journey to like, find other people, uh, I think, like him, he can, like, bridge the gap between human and s- humans and spirits, and he wants to, like, just help people, I guess. Kind of roam what? around. And this is why... Like... It... I'm not saying it, but I am. There's a lot of comparisons to Gurren and Logan and how, like, you know, <laughs> personal responsibility <laughs> and, and all this shit, and, like, you know, that kind of thing. But, yeah. uh... But yeah, you know, Jaden, who's like a literal god at this point, right? Like, he has sure. his two souls inside of him, you know, making him this thing. Not even human. It's abomination. And, uh, and yeah. Obamani. That's kind of how GX wraps up. <laughs> Raises There's a tad paw. more. We, yes, Simon, so we're, we're, abi- we're a Biden nation here. No, 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 <laughs> just finish, just finish. This is like, heresy. you know, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Just... No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Is, is it to do with that? If it's like no, it's afterward. It's afterward. Yeah, so uh, that's how I think the duel should have gone. Uh, was was Jaden winning? I just felt like that made more sense. And, and this is another one of those examples of, you know, Konami and Co has like such a nostalgia boner for like, oh, the old guys can't lose. You know, they're 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 fucking gripping their dicks until they turn fucking purple because they just want Me. the fucking, <laughs> you know, oldies to win. Shit. It's, it's kind of frustrating and, and i know it is like open to interpretation but it's like the thing was was if Jaden just ended his turn slifer literally kills itself because it was special summon and then uh-huh. yugi had a spell card karibo and three high level monsters in his hand Whereas Jaden still had like shit on the field he had like a neat he had like a fuck what was it like a flare shining flare wingman and a neos like, he would have just fucked them up. So, that was kind of frustrating. Post end of GX, we get something very neat. A Yu-Gi-Oh! movie featuring the three main protagonists here. Yeah. Bonds Beyond Time. I'll try to sum- I'll summarize Bonds Beyond Time super quick. It's very, it's very short. It's not even like a movie. Uh, a lot of the focus is on Yusei. You know, 5D's protag, because he's based, and there's a lot going on there. Time travel is a big thing there. So, this guy named Paradox. Time travels to stop the, like, creation and, like, popularization of dual monsters by killing Pegasus. (laughs) Because he believes that that is the best future, apparently, upon examining uh, various timelines. And yeah. he steals dragons to do so, like Cyber End and stuff like that. Uh, he's he's Malefics. Malefics, that's his thing. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, it is kind of a kind of a based idea, how he's like this time uh, paradox is like this time traveling guy who is trying to search for like the best future, like for everyone. But you know, obviously our protagonists kind of have a problem with that. One thing that's annoying about Bonds Beyond Time, is a. Uh, it gets the Yubel eyes extremely wrong, let's just say. Oh. It does, I believe, green and red, when it's supposed yeah. to be, like, orange and, like, a green blue. Which is yeah, I was red. actually, while I was looking online at some images, I was like, why is this, why does he have, like, red and green eyes? He's supposed to be, like, different. Yes, I don't understand the idea behind that change. Paradox, get ready to get your game on! 
get ready to get your game on! The three pro tags uh, defeat Paradox because obviously they're like, uh, believe in human potential, uh, fuck you. Now, like, the final thing that contains any sort of GX uh, that I'll go over extremely briefly is the later, uh, later Yu-Gi-Oh! series, Arc B, or sometimes called Arc 5. Mm -hmm. So, the big meme with this is alternate dimensions, right? There's alternate dimensions for each summoning method. Fusion still has a thing called The Academy, which is extremely similar to Dual Academy. Where yeah. Alexis just is there. And that's kind oh. of a common thing in Arc V is that uh, previous side characters specifically re-show up. Um, <coughs> fuck. That's pretty much it, lads. Well, Damn. I don't know what else to say. She's got big titties. There you go. Well. She do. <laughs> she do. She do a BM <laughs> big honker. Yeah, Dang, fuck, what a gauntlet, Sean. Great job. Fucking hell. Oh. Damn, Sean. Thank you. You know, okay. Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. There it is. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Cool. Sean, absolute what monster. is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any any post post question? Like... We're still yeah. going. You got any questions? What is what is a Yu-Gi-Oh card? I've been hyping up for like the last. Uh, I didn't answer that. I didn't oh answer that. yeah! Okay. I that's fucking know kind of the season one for day me. again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so in season four, it's explained Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, fu funny meme. Yu-Gi-Oh card. A, a Yu-Gi-Oh card was the Big Bang. Like it just was a card, right? And that's what started. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's pretty funny. Um, but what a basic Yu-Gi-Oh card really is, is it is a gateway to the alternate dimensions uh, where people can summon stuff. You know, like, it, it's, okay. it's a gateway. It's not, like, actually the card or actually, you know, the thing. It is just oh. a gateway, uh, which is an interesting... Clarification retcon question mark? I, I don't know how it works in DM, so do you have any uh, in knowledge? Dual monsters, it was like fucking the cards were just like imbued with magic because they were based off of like the dark Egyptian magic from three thousand years ago or whatever. Okay. So like it kind like, you know it, it's it's sort of a retcon, but it's not it's not like it's not like undoing shit, it's just like adding shit on. Which is like, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what's up? Raises bar. Yeah. As as far as that stuff is considered, like every season, it's just like, dude, it's just magic. Like, uh, you see the Yu Gi Oh cards were like always Egyptian gods, then the next season, they were always aliens, then the next season, oh, they're the Mayans, bro. Yep. So it, it keeps shuffling, but it's just <laughs> generally spirit magic. Uh, any, any, any other final questions? Anything I. Didn't cover, or you guys wanted answers to, or anything on the board. I think I got like almost everything. There was there was one thing I f t totally glossed over, which was Sartorius, the main villain of season two. His voice actor is the same one that does Dio, so that's pretty sick. Oh, and and by the way, Tarot Card Twenty One, the world. He does in fact. Zawardo in G. Zawardo! So, <laughs> pretty funny. Is that it, lads? Wow. Are we done here? Done. Mm. Fucking job, my dude. This oh, was. Oh, yeah. Let's this go. was way better than I expected. Okay, everyone. I think we're done here. But let's go out on a little song, my friends. Let's hit enter. Let's go. Chilling out with the crew in the schoolyard Finding trouble, never looking too hard Back in class, they never taught us this Things we gotta learn to Tough times, hard We'll take them all together Right now, let's go Generation X Get your game on You better play your cards right Game on We'll make the great and win the spice fight. Yeah, you game on. Come on, you better play your cards right. game on.
everyone. You made it. Congrats. Uh, it's done. We're all here. Finally. You know, finally the lecture's out. After so long, I'm really sorry that it's taken this long, honestly, but... As long as you kept up with the decompression on cast, you should know what was poppin'. But that being said, Ray, why did I drop this on you guys so surprisingly and just so out of nowhere, right? I know a lot of you probably won't even make it to the end of the video. I mean, hell, this is an almost six hour video after all. You know, I did say I was gonna make a video or two before this, leading up to the lecture, but in all reality, that just didn't work for the timetable I had set. And again, you might be wondering, why drop the lecture at this kind of semi-random point, right? I would say that there is some method to the madness. August 31st is also known as Jaden Yuki's birthday. Happy birthday, Jaden! You know, over the last, I'd say, two years or so, something's been, you know, missing, I would say, from Sean-based content, in my opinion. And I guess I'll just say, I have a little reward for you, who have made it to the end. 